Taking the loose, knocking boots, my body rocking. Yeah. Never the two, I'm the one, so nigga stop it. Yeah, karma finna pay me stacks. I know your new trick, watch it, so relay this back. Finna have it, don't lock like a choke code. I don't got no time for a bro Ready for another show-stopping night in web reality. This is a deeper love to take pride in. Because when you have a bunch of eyes on you, honey, you have to be the T. Presented by Oliver Twist, this is the second installment of Chasing the Beat, a virtual showcase celebrating queer art and creativity. Catch the brightest stars take to the internet stage by storm, plus extra special performances from some fresh faces ready to make some noise. Watch this musical showcase only on the Chasing Reality YouTube channel. Yes, God, honey. What's up, everyone? It is Darius asking you to check out my newest children's book, DJ Stands on Business. 
Follow along as five friends who are entrepreneurs by the name of Pixel, Raven, a dynamic duo we can learn, and a children's book author named DJ use their entrepreneurial spirit to save money to go on a trip to Mexico. So follow along as children can learn about terms that teach them about entrepreneurship and give them the opportunity to open up the world in the adventures of friendship, and entrepreneurship. You can check out my children's book, DJ Stands on Business, as well as DJ's favorite day and Twinkle Little Star at www.kingdariusbooks.com. Chasing the Beat is back, baby, and you do not want to miss this. So gather around your screens as some of your faves come together to showcase their artistic gifts and creations. Created by Oliver Twigs, this celebration of queer creativity is one for the book. So tune in to see show-stopping performances from artists like T.S. Lil' Kendra, Lyric London, Tremaine Terrell, Conca Garcon and J.J. Jones, Fly King I and Andre, T.C. and Astro, Ilwin, Rico Casadine, Oliver Twix, and so many more. Plus, a whole lot of extra special guests stopping by. Chasing the Beat is back, baby, and you do not want to miss this. Only on the Chasing Reality YouTube channel. See you there. Oliver Twix here, your nerd boy cutie, reporter for duty to do the Lord's work once again. I'm here with the Florida daughter. Yeah, okay. the Florida daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch. What's the thing? Touch, touch my tag. Tag did it. Uh -huh. Boom. Boom, B. The big dog. <laughs> the big dog. <laughs> All in one, bitch. Troy right. is Troy. here. What's going on? Oh, my on? God. All of a twist. What's the deal? Baby, we finna get into another twist exclusive mm -mm. on Chasing Atlanta mm -mm. through you. Mm -mm. You ready to open up to me? Bitch, I'm ready to open up. What's this? You remember that time you opened up to me on the cabin? Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? What, the cab what cabin? When we all went to the cabins. Yes, when we was, yes. At Willow's Cabaret. Yes. So I was up, I, I was upstairs working, trying to be a good boy, right? We had already filmed. I had already played with the people. Uh, we already had to. We had that dinner scene, right? The little table scene. Yeah. Where Willa was like, "You always start stuff." I was like, <laughs> "Wait, what? What's going on? What's yeah, happening?" It was a lot. It was, it was a, a lot. lot. But so I had came downstairs and I had went to the kitchen, and Troy and Dominique was like, "Come here, cause we want to feel that ass." <laughs> We wanna we wanna know that ass is real. And I was like, y'all, can we not? But I went over there. Maybe I went over there. I had on I had on my robe. I had on my Versace robe. And I think maybe I, I just you did have on your robe. Maybe I just had on drawers underneath. Like Bitch, I, I don't girl. think I, I don't think I had on no shirt. Bitch girl, we Baby Troy put his head underneath up underneath my robe and said, Ooh. <laughs> ooh. And then Dominique put his other hand up there and was like, ooh. Ooh, and then I remember we had played a game, and I drank a shot off your stomach, yeah, and you girl. was like, and you girl, was like, time, and bro. you was like, I don't think I was supposed to like that. <laughs> <laughs> I was, he was like, I don't think I was supposed to like that. Yeah, it was a time at the Willis Cabaret, honey. We had a lot. Of Willis Cabaret, it was a lot of fun, and then it the, was uh, <laughs> the uh, the moonshine, the strawberry shortcake moonshine. Oh yes. Oh girl, they had us towed up. I think, you know, when people ask me, now when people ask me, what is my favorite member from Chase in Atlanta? Now mm -hmm. I know what to say. The Cabins was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was a lot of it fun. It was a lot of fun. It was, I feel like that was one time that we were able to deal with whatever we were dealing with, like talk it out, get through it, and then move past. It was like we were in a different space than versus being in Atlanta. Because mm -hmm. it was like as soon as we got back to Atlanta, shit just... Right back up it blew flames. up. It, it went, went, it went back, back up in flames. flames. Mm -hmm. I think because we were basically living together for like, how long were we up there? Five days? 
Four days? Four. Mm-hmm. We lived there four days. So we basically was living together. So it was like, bitch, if we get in an argument, it's not like we can we go can't home. Go nowhere, bitch, we are home. Yeah, we are home. Yeah. yeah who would leave in the motherfucking cabins without each other? Can't worry about it. It was a lot of fun. We're going to talk about the cabins because mm-hmm. I'm going to tell it all today. Mm-hmm. You know, because we always talked about the cabins. But I'm going to tell it all. You know, I'm going to say what I was doing. I'm going to say what everybody was doing. I don't give a fuck. If you got a problem with it, call me. You know what I'm saying? I'll pick up the phone. Mm-hmm. Tay the head got the number. Tay the head got the number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tay the boy. Troy. <laughs> Chasing Reality Vet, mm-hmm. The Big Dog. Mm-hmm. How many seasons of Chasing Atlanta? Four. 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 What? The only other people who have four are myself and Lauren. We're the only other ones that have four seasons yeah. as main cast members. Because Kendra, yeah. I would consider Kendra, but she wasn't. Excuse me, a main cast member this, this last season. season. Mm-hmm. She was a friend of. Yeah. Who would ever thought Kendra would be a friend of the final season? Bitch, I don't. That was uh, a gag. Yeah, that was a gag. Because bitch, when I didn't see Kendra in the um, opening, because I literally had text Kendra. I think like maybe I'm gonna say a couple of weeks before, or DM her on Instagram, and I was like, you know, did you do your, you know, your photos and stuff? She was like, no, I never did it. She was like, she wasn't, you know, doing it or whatever. And I was like, oh my god, because that's crazy. Because Kendra is that girl. Yeah, but Adario didn't give a fuck this last season. He, he did. He was like, <laughs> bitch, Adario was like, bitch, let's get it done and get me out of here, basically. Yeah, bitch. basically. I don't blame him. I don't blame him. Let's get the fuck out of here. Um, Four season, four season vet. Mm-hmm. You're currently one of the star personalities on the, the group, group chat, chat yes. on Chasing Reality. Chasing reality you know? On Chasing Reality. I'm just so glad that I was able to keep a good name with the brand. Mm-hmm. You know? Because I have been begging Adario for a while. I was like, Adario, we need to bring Chase and Chat. We need to bring Chase and Chat. I'll be a host, da, 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 whatever, whatever. And he was like, you know, I got you. I promise you, we're just trying to figure out some things, whatever case may have you. I was not expecting, like, the people that are on there now. I was thought, I thought he was going to get, like, uh, like, poor people from the brand. Mm-hmm. But I really mesh with them so well. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, I feel like everyone has their own personality. Everyone is... Very just like I don't know, like I we just mesh so good. Like no matter where we're at, what we're doing, like we just always have a good time. So talking to them and being on that show, I really love it. And I'm glad and Dario gave me the opportunity to be back on the platform in that way to just showcase mm-hmm. like what I like to do. Cause that's what you love doing. You I love do. talking, you love hosting, you love giving personality. Like that's your thing. That's Real my thing. News reporter fish. Yeah, news reporter fish girl. Welcome to Channel 4 News. <laughs> <laughs> Channel 4 News used to be the news station in South yes. Florida. Mm-hmm. That used to be our news station in like North Florida, but it did Jacksonville and like surrounding areas. What what was the name what was the name of y'all channel? Um It was just Channel 4 WJXT. WJ I think ours was I don't know the t- ours is because Fort Fort Lauderdale and Miami had the same channel, Jacksonville and surrounding. Well, Jacksonville, Lake City, and surrounding areas had like one channel, and then you can watch Channel Three, which had Gainesville, Lake City, and surrounding areas because Lake City didn't have we didn't have our own news station. We had a newspaper, mm-hmm. but not, it was a, not a news station. Mm-hmm. I'm lying. It wasn't Channel Seven. It was. I mean, it wasn't Channel Four. It was Channel Seven. Mm-hmm. That was the channel, bitch. Lucky number. That was the channel, bitch. Oh, okay, with motherfucking, what's her name? With, um, with, um, Belle Keys Naray. Uh-uh. Belle Keys Naray, who been on Channel 7 for years since my mama was little. Belle Keys Naray, um, bitch, when hurricanes used to come through, bitch. I used to, <laughs> <laughs> bitch, I used to keep my eyes glued to the news station. I used to love watching the news when hurricanes and stuff was going on. No, bitch, I was scared. I, I, to this day, like, I'm traumatized by the news. I just feel like everything was scary to me. Really? Yes. I, I feel like it was educational at some point, but I feel like everything used to always just be scary. Like, you get up, you look, your mama would look at the news at 6 in the morning, mm-hmm. she would look at the news when she get off of work around mm-hmm. 6 o'clock, mm-hmm. and then she'll come back to the mm-hmm. 8 o'clock news, 7 mm-hmm. o'clock news, whichever one. And bitch, all this killing happened in Jacksonville, or this person was murdered in Miami, or this, that, and I used to just be so scared because I always, I used to hate sleeping by myself. Mm-hmm. Fun fact, y'all, I slept with my mama until I was like 15, 13. For real. Yes. I used to be scared to sleep by myself because every time we would watch the news at night or they talk about somebody was on the loose or especially if it was like thunderstorms and it was supposed to be like maybe a tornado or like bad weather, like I would sleep with my mom because I would just be so scared. I hated sleeping by myself. I'm pretty sure my mom was laughing right now because <laughs> I slept with my mama until I can't remember, but I slept with her not necessarily like every night, but when it would when it would be thundering and lightning. I don't know what it was about thunder mm-hmm. and lightning as a youngin that used to scare the bejeebus out of me. Like I would be so scared, and my mama always knew if she heard thunder and lightning, just to scoot on over because I was coming around the corner because I'm running around the corner. 
she was like, she was like, she was like, <laughs> it take her to do, but she was like, she was just here, doing, which is me getting out of bed and running. <laughs> and running. Yeah. Everybody, she just hit these little feet, turning the corner, coming over. Mm-hmm. I used to be so scared. And I used to be in that bed, and then I would have to get up. My daddy always had a loud truck, so when you could hear him coming into, because we lived in the country, so you know mm-hmm. it's quiet. He could, you could hear him coming down the road in his truck and pulling into the yard. My mom would wake me up and tell me to go get in my bed. And so mm-hmm. I would go get in my bed, and then my daddy would go in. But when my daddy got home, I don't know if it was because it's my daddy, but I used to feel okay mm-hmm. like so i didn't mind going in my room then but mm-hmm. when my mama was there there's no mama girl i'm right here next to you what's I'm that that's right what's mm-hmm. going on what's going on so talk to us about troy before we met you season three of chasing atlanta Ooh. florida boy lake city right lake city okay yeah catch us up so i grew up in lake city uh all my life uh, i left lake city at 17 because i went to college no one knew i was going to college um in high school i felt going well when i got in sixth grade up until high school ended People, that's when people started speculating that I was gay or saying that I was feminine or I hung around girls all the time, blah, 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 blah. And I was just like, you know, I had endured that so so much in so many years and trying to, like, keep my namesake in, you know, Lake City, mm-hmm. trying to be the Trey DL, whatever case may have you in. You was DL at some point in time? I was DL in. Oh, you wait till you just watch the group chat tomorrow. You'll see my pictures. I was a, I was a boy. Let me see. Let me see a picture. One thing about it. I was a boy. I was a boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How was it growing up? So when did you realize you were gay? That you liked men? Um, oh, when I was like five. I knew I knew I was gay when I was like five years old. Because I used to always like especially once I became being able to be out and around people, like I would say like my first time like touching or feeling like another guy was like at the kindergarten center when I was in kindergarten. Mm-hmm. And when everybody was playing mommy and daddy, da da da, or we doing something on the playground, we would be in the little tunnel thing. And we would sit in the little tunnel thing. If nobody was coming, we would like kiss and do like stuff like that. Not like, you know, sexual thing, but we would just kiss. Cause mm-hmm. you, know, you, know, you know what kissing is when you're five. Mm-hmm. And so we would, I, then we would just get out and go on the thing. But then when I got in like sixth grade, was my first time like really like. I wouldn't say having any, having an experience, but yeah, like I would go to the bathroom with the boy, and, <laughs> you know. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's I feel like I'm talking to myself. Keep going. <laughs> yes, I would go to the bathroom with the boy, and then like we, I was telling it's so funny because I was telling Darius the other day when we, before I was backstage in the group chat, and I was like, you know, my little universal sign, you know, if they just to be like. Mm-hmm, <laughs> like mm-hmm, they used to be our thing like when I was saying we would walk by each other and if we see each other we'd just put our hand through our finger and that made me meet each other in the bathroom so we can kiss and feel on each other da, 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 da. and I think my first sexual you were sucking dick short back then it's okay to say <laughs> yes that. that's my first my first time doing that <laughs> my first time sucking dick was probably like in 8th grade 8th mm. mm-hmm. grade and then after that it was just like all the time though because I had like my regular little thing, mm-hmm. fling at the time. And then he moved when I went to ninth grade and I was so depressed. But he ended up moving back when I was in 11th grade. So I was able to, mm-hmm. they ain't had no man, I ain't had no girlfriend. I was very much asexual. So, mm-hmm. you know. But anyway, yeah, when, they, when I got in high school, I would say ninth grade. No, he, cause he was, no, before the ninth grade, going into ninth grade, my summer year, my, the summer before he left, me and him ended up having sex. And mm-hmm. then we just started, you know, having sex all the time until he left. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, then he came back my 11th grade year. We used, to, we used to go to basketball games together, football games together, but we was always like the bros, the homies, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah. No, I didn't do all that. I was mm-hmm. out. I was out in high school. So, like, mm-hmm. by the time, by the time I got to the, maybe I would say the 11th, no, maybe the 12th grade. I think it was the 12th grade. Um, is when I started bringing boys over to the house, <laughs> and like my Mama Twix would take them out. Mm-hmm. My mama used to date this lady at the time by the name of Miss Justice. Um, and Miss Justice, Miss Justice couldn't come. Miss Justice was like my other mama, mm-hmm. my other parent. I love Miss Justice, mm-hmm. but she would give my mama money to take all of us out so my mama could interview the boy to see what was going on. Mm-hmm. But it was it was one boy and there was another one. Um, 
But like, bitch, at the time, but by, by that time, bitch, like I was out. My boyfriend right. was coming me to the games. Oh. I was SJ president, so like I would sit down. Like all the games, I already had like a seat, like down on the court. But I used mm-hmm. to sit next to my to my man. Period. Like you know, I girl, wish. doing all the things. I wish I had that life, but no. I was they used to pull to... up to the house, pick me up from from Miss Nana's house. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Bitch, oh, that's mm-hmm. bitch, that was lit because my I didn't have. My first, like, solid boyfriend until my freshman year of college. Mm. And I lost my virginity to a girl the summer going into my... Fr- well, my freshman year of college, because I started in the summer, I had my first sexual experience with a girl that summer. And then How after that, it? I was just like... Look for on your face. Thank you. Uh, but after that, yeah. But How was it? Mm-hmm. It was... Um, it was good, but it wasn't for me because afterwards, the bed, <laughs> clearly, the bed was like super, super. Just it was just too much. The bed was wet. I had to eat her stuff. How it, was that? That was. I've never know, done it. That was horrible. Why? Wow. Like, just seeing it in your face like that. Mm. Mm-mm. I wouldn't do it again. I, I would have it. Uh. Uh-uh, uh. I can't even sit on a drunk night. I just. I wouldn't do it again. I'm sorry. I've never done it. Mm-mm. I've never been down there. Mm-mm. I like. I used to have. I used to have girlfriends in middle school and elementary school. Like, I always had a girlfriend every year. And it would always be, usually be the prettiest one. And they used to be kissing me. I've kissed girls. Um, but you never had no cool No, but I would, like, rub it through their panties and stuff like that. Because they would I want me to. Yeah, Ooh. but, like, Why I mean, that grown? wasn't. I mean, that's not too bad. It's not. It's not. The girls was grown, boo. Oh, yeah, them girls was grown. Yeah, them girls Them girls used to corner me and be had their hands all in my pants mm-hmm. and grabbing on my butt yeah. and stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, I used to let them because, you know, in my brain, I was like, okay, if, if I'm letting a girl do this, then mm-hmm. I must be straight. I'm right. going to heaven. You know, I, I ain't going to die. No, bitch, I ain't going to heaven, boo. That yeah, was, I'm going I to heaven. I pray many nights. Me too. Many nights, like I don't want to be. I don't want to be gay. I don't be this. Mm-mm. Like I don't want to be, and that's. Oh, child, I ain't gonna go there because that's a whole nother loophole. We'll I was for the cry. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll go there later because, bitch. <laughs> yes, but anyway, yes. Lake City grew up, went to Tallahassee. Oh, well, I was accepted into FAMU. Funny thing is, I was accepted into three colleges. I was gonna go either to FSU, FAMU, or Howard. I didn't want to go to Howard. My, my mom didn't want me to go to Howard because it was so far away, and I was the only child. And then FSU, I didn't want to go because it was a PWI. Mm-hmm. I wanted to go to HBCU. Like, I wanted that experience. So, I chose FAMU. Mm-hmm. And then, um, yeah, I was there for four years. You know, that's when I became Touched by Tech. That's when I was styling, like, the Royal Courts. I was styling the sororities. You know, I was hosting pageants, doing all these things. See, that's what the girls are not. I've been doing this since I was in college. But I kind of steered away from it because I knew what I wanted to be. Like, I wanted to be this person. Like, I didn't want to be up there sheltering myself, like, anymore. Or whatever mm-hmm. have you. So, um... So, in college, you were still trying to be the trade, too. I wasn't trying to be the trade because I had boyfriends and I was out. But I still wasn't, like... Only time you seen me, like, be very flamboyant was, like, if I was in a gay club or if I was around, like, my friends. I would say to my senior year of college. And I was 21 when I graduated. Um, my senior year of college is when I actually just was just out. Bitch, I was just out and proud because, bitch, I didn't, I didn't really care at that point. I had, My mom knew. My dad knew. The family knew. It was just like I just was doing me. So that year, like, I was in the gay clubs all the time. Bitch, I was makeup sometimes. Really? Yeah, like I used to get me a boy beat. My friend used to do me a boy beat because my friend was a makeup artist and we used to live together. So he would give me a boy beat. Bitch, we would go out to the club. Bitch, that's when I started smoking and doing all of those things. Bitch, I used to do a lot. Oh my God. So yeah, when I came when I came out, I just felt free. So I just like like it I don't I let that inner child and that wildlife out in my senior year of college. Like I had a ball. Like I just did me. So Taking a closer look at college, I just heard you say you were doing things such as styling and hosting. Mm -hmm. So, back then, what is it that you wanted to do? Did you want to be a stylist? Did you want to be a personality? Or you just wanted to do it all? So, at the time in college, it was just like, I'm going to say for me, when I started styling, it was like, I just really like clothes. I like fashion. I used to call myself like Young Yeezus because I used to... Um, love Kanye. I love Kanye so bad. And um, so at the time, I was just like, you know, I want to be putting clothes on people. I started doing my research on what a stylist was, what a stylist did, all this kind of stuff. I started buying like the stylist kit. I ended up taking a stylist class here in Atlanta. And before I knew it, that's when I started. I wasn't really big on YouTube at the time. I didn't know 
I think by being a sheltered kid, like I didn't really know too much about social media. I didn't get an Instagram until my 12th grade. I think it had already been out a year. I got MySpace late, got Facebook late, whatever case may have you. But when I realized what YouTube was, I ended up realizing I could use my iPad to record on YouTube. Mm-hmm. So I would get my iPad or get my camera and, um, not my camera, my phone and record stuff at the mall and like get the newest items out of whatever and I would go do a YouTube video. Oh, I wow. literally deleted them all off my thing, which was crazy. I would love to see yeah, that. I, I don't know why I didn't, but I did, but I would edit on iMovie on my laptop, I mean on my uh, iPad and I would put the videos up. Oh, and wow. So I didn't even realize at the time that that was something that I liked doing that and I like talking to people and explaining like the latest fashions, you know, the newest trends, all this kind of stuff, the latest fashion shows that have happened. And I loved doing that, but I didn't realize like I wanted to be like a host, but I was in school for journalism. Mm-hmm. I was in school for public relations. So it's mm-hmm. just like I had to do public speaking. I had to do all of these things to get that degree. So after a while, like once I got known on campus at Such by Tag, like it became like a thing. Like I was working with different makeup artists that was coming up on campus. Like I would do I would host their photo shoots, I would style their photo shoots. Um it came to where I was making like the little bleach t-shirts, like ripping them up and doing things like that, ripping jeans or cutting jeans or doing whatever. And to what the sororities and the fraternities caught on, I was doing their shirts. Like I was making, when I tell you in college, I was making a bag. And I, t- I, like even now where I'm at, I always, I have been trying to find that push that I had when I was in college. Because I would be up at 8 o'clock. Mm-hmm. If I had class at 10, I would go style. If I had a client, I would go style a girl for class. I would have my clothes on, be leaving her dorm, going to class. If I had, when I was styling for Miss FAMU, it's a whole week because they do campaign for a whole week in her college mm-hmm. show. I had 20 different outfits lined up in my apartment. She would come do her fittings. We would do whatever. Every morning at 6 o'clock, she had to be ready by 7. She done got her makeup done at 6 at the at my apartment by Seven, we put her outfit on and she's on campus for the day. Like doing events. Like it was it was that deep to me. And you know, once I took the stylist class here in Atlanta with Gucci Main stylist at the time, um, it was just like, you know, I, I love this. This is this is what I want to do. Mm-hmm. And at the time, I think that was a scapegoat for me because I still wasn't comfortable showing like this side of like my personality on camera because I was afraid my daddy was gonna see and to see how I really act or my mom or whoever else is out there gonna judge me and I used to care, really care about what people thought. So I so I didn't still didn't get in front of the camera. I was like, I could be fam- not be well known, be behind the scenes, styling the biggest people, whatever case may have you, and that's just gonna be that. But then when I did Chase in Atlanta season three, when I got to Atlanta, it's like that changed everything for me. How did you get to Atlanta? I came to it well Funny thing, my best friend who... I the one we saw on the show. The one we saw What's on the his show, name? Devron. Devron, okay. When Devron was um in college, we were freshman roommates. Mm-hmm. We became friends. We were real close. He ended up leaving college our sophomore year and going back home to do culinary school. Mm-hmm. Then when like my last year of college, I was like, oh, I want to move to Atlanta. Mm-hmm. And this was when Atlanta had just started getting big. This is when I used to come up here with my friends. I ain't really know too much about the... Gay girls up here, so I used to go to Rush, Rain, all this on the weekend, like, you know, just to come up to Atlanta. And so when I left, I was like, when I was getting ready to leave, I was like, I want to go to Atlanta before I, after I graduate. So I called my friend, and I told him, I was like, bitch, I want to move to Atlanta. He was like, oh, me too. And I was like, I'm for real. Like I said, I want to move, like, January. He said, well, I was planning on moving, but I wanted to move in April. I was like, if you think your job will give you a transfer, would you move in January? And I'm going to see if my job will transfer me or whatever. Because that's when I had started working for BCBG. That's what started the retail world for me. Mm. Um, so once he told me that he could get the transfer in January and he was okay with doing that and he'll save up his money, I want to say we traveled to Atlanta twice to find an apartment. We traveled like that September, then we traveled again that November. In November, we solidified the apartment we wanted to stay in. We paid the fees or whatever, January 26th to be exact, or 2018, I had moved to Atlanta. Really? I had moved to Atlanta, and the crazy thing is, I was like, I lost my wallet before I came here, oh and I was God. like, oh, it's just not meant for me to go, like, I'm not supposed to go, da 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 On our way here, we got pulled over by the police, they searched my whole car on the highway, took all of our stuff out, opened our boxes, closed everything that we had. I mean, I mean, way. I mean, you know, niggas be, you know, yeah. niggas be, you, niggas be traveling, traveling from Georgia, from Florida to Georgia. What kind of car y'all was driving? We was in my Sentra. 
Oh, I was about to say, especially if you're in a charger no, or something we like that, they definitely pull you over. We was in a little central looking like the little cunts, and you know, <laughs> uh, and, you know, just you know, whatever. And yeah, they pulled us over, and I was just like, uh, uh-uh. so this is like it's just too many bad things happening. And then we were we got to our apartment 30 minutes before the office closed for us to check in. Mm. So I was like, what the fuck? Like, but you know, when we when we actually made it to the apartment, I was actually happy about that, and I felt like, okay, well maybe. We were supposed to be here, you know, everything is going good, whatever case may have you. And we got here, we cried for like a week. Cause y'all was scared, yeah, nervous. We were scared, we was yeah. nervous. We, and we both then st- I think he started work the like two days after we moved there. I didn't start work until the next week. Mm-hmm. So it, I don't know, it was just a different feeling that like, we was happy to be here, but we was just like, you know, we really love our family, we really love our friends, and we moved to Atlanta. Like, bitch, we really did it. So once I got to Atlanta, I Started um, hanging out with Ryan. Ryan, Ryan, Ryan the stylist. Ryan the stylist. Ryan the stylist. He's so famous. And yes. I used to, okay, Ryan, I got up there. Ryan famous, Ryan bitch. Ryan was famous, uh-huh. bitch. On Tamron Hall and all. Oh. Ryan was on Tamron Hall? Yes, on Tamron Hall. Like, Do what? Uh, I think they was had, he like, talking? A, yes, I think they had a oh stylist. Oh, my God. Stylist, he was on I there. love yes, Ryan. I love that You know, I, I mean, Ryan's older than me, but, like, I consider him, like, you know, like if, when I think of like the class of girls that I won't say I came up with because Ryan was uh, yeah. had already been established, but I consider Ryan like a peer, and yeah. I'm always just like looking yeah. at him, like seeing what he's doing. Him. I love Ryan. Ryan yeah. be doing his thing. He be, so he be making his little money. Yeah, he's making his money mm-hmm. and doing his doing his, his little thing, thing child. But yeah, I started working with Ryan, and Ryan introduced me to like people at the time, and he would come pull stuff from BCBG because mm-hmm. I worked there, and that's how we would pull stuff. And when I started working with Ryan. Um, Ryan was always Ryan was the first person that really started taking me out on the town in Atlanta. Like I used to go to um, opera when they had first Saturday, I mean third Saturdays, and I would go to of course um, compound on first Fridays. But Ryan would take me to like Edgewood, and we would do the rooftop little thing on like Tuesday, on Tuesday or Wednesday. And one night I was there and I met Montel and Cameron. Did you know they were on Chasing Atlanta? Yes, I knew they were on Chasing Atlanta because I watched Chasing Atlanta season one. In Tallahassee because Devon was on there because Devon used to go to FAMU. So I knew of him and then Devon was trade at FAMU too. Mm-hmm. So when he was trade at FAMU and he came out on the show and he posted it to his page, everybody was like, oh my God, like Devon is going to be on this gay show. Mm-hmm. And I watched the show and I was like, okay, I love the show, or whatever. But I had no intentions on being on the show. Mm-hmm. And then season two came out that next year. Um, I moved to Atlanta. That was in 2017. I moved to Atlanta in 2018. And now that's when I seen Montel and Cameron out. This was like maybe March, February, March. And mm-hmm. I think they were doing the get ready to do the casting call. Or already in the casting call. Mm-hmm. And, they should have been getting ready to do the reunion if it was March, February of 2018. March of 2018. 2018. Mm-hmm. Well, they did the cast. Well, they sent out the thing or the casting call like maybe a couple months after that, I'm thinking. Because we were already... The we cast already call ain't got, come out until August. Yes, August. May, maybe July, but I'm leaning more towards August. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because when we started filming, September or October? October. I thought it was September. You, you know what? You may have started in September. Um, how I... I mean, because how I always remember, because I always remember I went to... I went to... I went to New York City... And that's where I filmed the sugar video. The same week I found out I was on Chasing Luna's mm-hmm. when I in, ended up filming that video um, to Sugar on Coney Island when mm-hmm. nobody was there. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the video actually didn't even come out till like years later. I'm um, doing the pandemic and everybody like, thought I yes. had everybody thought I had went to Coney Island during the pandemic and shot it because nobody was there. Yeah. And I'm like, no, bitch, no, I lost, I, I lost the footage. Yeah. I couldn't put it out. Anyways, um, but yeah, but that's how I always remember it. So like, I feel like the casting call came out in August. I got, we got phone calls maybe September, okay, October, maybe. and then we was filming. We was definitely filming by November, December, definitely. I feel like we was filming early in the day, um, Oliver. I was going to say August, but Oliver, I feel like we was May, Maybe October, maybe. because yes, I'm like, we filmed, I know because we had to film before that because, um, who did we go? We did the Christmas thing with Montel. Let me see, I'll tell you exactly. But either way... Um, I got I met Montel and Cameron out one night. I went to say hey to Montel and Cameron. Cameron, um, Montel was like, "Oh, this is my friend from Instagram because I had used to DM Montel on from the show 
because I had liked him on the show. Mm-hmm. So um, Montel did me back, and then when I left the place that night, he did me. He was like, you, 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 you usually ever think about being on the show? I was like, no. He was like, I really think you got a potential. Like, you can grow from the show, whatever case may have you. And he was like, I'm going to send you the link. That's, he was like, but it's, he was like, but you're going to have to do it by the end of the night tomorrow because it closes. Mm-hmm. And literally the next night, I stayed up. I remember because I had to work. And I got home. I got myself together. And I was like, oh, shit, I got to do this thing. I put on my, my whatever. I did my application, whatever. But by the time, I think it was a little extensive back then because you had to write the whole. I feel, yeah. I, I remember something like this. You had to write a paragraph and all this kind of stuff, whatever, mm-hmm. or a little whatever. Mm-hmm. So I, I uh, explained why you deserve to be on the show. Mm-hmm. So I ended up doing that. And by the time that happened, it was like 11 something. I was like, I'm not going to be able to record a video. And that's what a lot of people don't know. I did not record a video to be on season three. Really? I didn't record a video. Montel was like, I was told Montel, I said, Montel, I'm not going to be able to record a video. He was like, it's okay. Don't worry about it. I got you. And literally, I ended up going to the interview. They ended up calling me back for an interview. I went to the interview in that law office space. Mm-hmm. With, up there in Perimeter. Uh, high in Perimeter. And with, uh, who was it? It was Kiri, Kevon, and Dario. Dario. And Mark was there. Mark, And then it was some other guy. It was, was it... Was, was it the boy who Gardini be cussing out all the time? Now, who on that other show? Real life philanthropy or some Hakeem. shit. Not Hakeem. What's the other short boy? He's short. He's small. Um, And he on that show, Real Life Philanthropy. I know he's talking about. You know what I'm talking about? Was yes. he in the room? Um, you, Malik? Malik. 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 No, I don't think it was Malik. It was, was somebody was else. Malik? Maybe, maybe it was. Oh, was it Jen? Was Jen in the room? Because I feel like there were two women Jen, in the room. Yes, it was Jen. Okay. I, okay. Oh, my God. Jen Johnson. It sure mm-hmm. was Jen. Mm-hmm. That messy bitch. I like, got it to his jeans. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got it to his jeans so bad, bitch. But yes, end up getting called. And then a couple days after that, they called me and told me that they wanted me to be on the show. And mm-hmm. bitch, that's what started. My Chase of Reality Journey. So, so, you audition for Chase in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. You get on. What was your game plan? Entering, filming your first reality TV show on the summer, mm-hmm. right? Okay. Well, to be honest, I didn't have a game plan, period. You didn't? You just mm-hmm. was going to go along with the flow? I just... Because I'm thinking... Let me tell y'all. I was so dumb. So I didn't know anything about reality TV. Mm-hmm. All I did was watch it, channel. So I'm thinking, bitch, I'm finna go on here. Bitch, they finna tell me what the fuck to do, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> they finna tell me what to do, girl. I'm finna get me a love... I'm finna be like, I'm on Love and Hip Hop, girl. And I'm mm-hmm. finna have my, I'm finna get the time of my life. Yeah. No. Would you say because of the way Chase and Atlanta looks, like the way the episode looks, mm-hmm. you had like this expectation that it was probably like this big old grandiose thing behind yes. the scene? That's the same mm-hmm. thing I thought. I thought it was just mm-hmm. like this big thing. Like, bitch, I'm finna be, I'm finna be, bitch, I'm finna be on TV. Like, yes. you know, with y'all hoes talking about, yeah, bitch, yeah, yeah. on TV. And so, child, goddamn, it was not what I thought it was gonna be. I was shook because they was like, okay, well, and Dario was like, well, do you have any scenes that you want to do or you have anything that you want to put out? And I'm like, um, y'all can come to my job. I'm like, I'm trying to get, like, I was trying to show Ryan on the show, but I think at the time, Ryan had auditioned for the show and they didn't want... Ain't that crazy they didn't want Ryan? Yeah, they, and I was crazy they didn't want Ryan, but I think Ryan had auditioned for the show, but they said they didn't want to see me working with Ryan. They wanted to see what I did. By, by yourself. Own. And I was like, well, you know, that's that was a plug that I had. So that's what I really wanted to showcase. But when they kind of gave me the know on that, it was just like, what a, what am I going to do? Because I didn't really have, you know, and I didn't know that I could meet, I didn't, at the time, I didn't know I could see scenes to meet up with other cast members. I think the only time, I don't think I put in really no scenes in season three. Really? Mm-hmm. I think all my scenes were like, either someone invited me to be there or, yeah. And see, that's what people don't understand, too. You know, and again... This Outside is, of them coming to my job. This is no shade to Chase in Atlanta at all. You know, like, this is no shade, no shade. We just, But we just tell them what the T-R-U-T... T, how you spell? T-R-U-T-H H, is. The truth. The truth. The, the, the T-R-U-F, you know? The truth, yeah. Mm-hmm. All of us. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, Chase in Atlanta... Your time on Chasing Atlanta is honestly what you make it. You know, it's so like, for example, when I did, you know, when I did the T.S. Madison experience, they had a team of producers who, like, interviewed me, very similar to how and Dario and them interviewed us. They interviewed me about everything going on in my life. They asked mm. about my mom. They asked about my boyfriend. They asked about my personal business. They asked about my business with the people in the, in the group, you know, mm. trying to whatever, whatever. And then they came back to me and basically told me 
what my storyline was kind of what my trajectory was kind of going to be. Mm-hmm. Um, now, what is similar is like I still made suggestions on scenes. I still, I still took the chase and the land approach over there. That we, mm-hmm. I had them hosts filming my music videos. It never aired, yeah. but like I had them hosts filming my music videos. Come film me and my boyfriend. Right. Da, 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 da. Like I did the same thing, but. Right. Whereas on Chasing Atlanta, it's your storyline is really what you, you make it. What you make it, yeah. It's really what you send over and request. And Dario and them ain't sitting down saying, okay, Troy, we want to see you design somebody. So we're going to set you up with, with, with X, Y, and Z. And you're going to style this person. No, no, it doesn't. So, it, you know, unfortunately for some cast members who may not have things going on or who don't have... The wherewithal to create something going on, you kind of fall short because it's just short. Like, and at the time, I had just moved here. I was living. I wasn't living this grand life, but you know, I was living in Sandy Springs. I had a, like a, like a decent apartment at the time, and I was making. I want to say at the time, child. I think I was making like. Thirteen dollars an hour at BCBG as a sales associate. Season three. Yes. Okay. And then when I end up, I think I was in, making thirteen dollars, maybe thirteen, fifteen, maybe sixteen. And then when I end up, when I end Something up like getting promoted to um, the assistant manager, I end up going up to seventeen dollars. Mm-hmm. And so that kind you of used to be but, happy for them seventeen dollars. <laughs> but after that, after that, it was just like. You know, it's like, what else? I, well, I don't got nothing else to really give. I ain't, mm-hmm. got, I ain't got no money to be in my studio and doing all this kind of stuff and da 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 whatever. And I didn't know at the time, you know, I think I had styled, brought some clothes for you that day mm-hmm. at, the, uh, at your mm-hmm. photo shoot. But I feel like I wanted it to be more than what it was at the time, but I didn't really have everything together of what mm-hmm. I needed. Mm-hmm. And I was still learning from Ryan. I was still trying to, you know, Figure out how to really get into the industry and do all these things, and yeah. So, season three happens. How do we meet? Do we meet at was the first time you and I meeting at the zoo? Was it the zoo? Was that our first time meeting? Yes, that was our first time meeting. That was our first time meeting each other. No, I don't remember. Because we didn't go to Kendra. No, but that was after the zoo. That was after the zoo? Okay, so it was at the zoo then, yeah. Wow. Yes, because I came with Q. You came with Q. Mm-hmm. I came with Q. Who I come with? You came by yourself and then... No, I couldn't have. Not all the way out there, I did. Who, I, I rode, rode with somebody. With, was it Dario? Maybe. Because, no. Because I rode with... I rode with Lauren, Kevon, Q... Yeah, I wrote with them. Oh, so it had to be it had yeah, to be Andario. Yeah, 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 it had to be. Who else was there? It was just us three on the cast. I do remember Kiri being there. I do remember Kevon and then was it Dario there? Am I making up shit? I may be making I up shit. Andario was there. No, Kevon was there. I know definitely Kevon was there. Was and I remember Kiri was there because remember we was in the van. Kiri had to shoot behind us, but you could see when you yeah, watch it, you could see them. You could see her, see see her, her in the back. Yeah, so Kiri was. But yes, it was us four. That was that was my first time meeting you. That was my first time meeting you. Because I think after that was Kendra party, and I had ended up going home with my mom. And when I came back, that's when we shot the scene at the studio. Oh, girl, girl, you taking me down memory lane. What do you remember about that first day of us filming season three? That was my first time filming with Lauren. That was my second time filming with you. A first time filming with you. Mm-hmm. Yes. When my first. You said what? I, my, what's the first thing I remember? Mm-hmm. Bitch, you screaming and when uh, not screaming, but bitch, when you was um, supposed to be talking to Lauren and Lauren walked off and she was like, um, and she was like, "See, I told y'all not to have me uh, film with nobody that is associated with." Um, when she was talking about Gardini, and then you had came over and you was looking crazy. And you had walked over to me afterwards and you was like, "Like, did I do something wrong? Like, what? Like." You say something along those lines, and bitch, that's when they end up putting the camera on and start and started filming. And bitch, I was just like, girl, what the fuck is you? And I remember you because you had that laugh. You still, <laughs> you still laugh the fucking same. Like you laughed the same, so you still had that laugh. And I was just like, what did I get myself into? Because when I seen Lauren, I actually just jump in the character like that. I was like, wait, ain't she jumping the character? <laughs> I'm sorry. No, you okay? Yeah, ain't she jumping the character? Character. Sorry, and I said, oh, bitch. Okay, got it. This is, 
this is what is on. And then that's why I was so shot in the van because I was just like, bitch, I don't know. I don't know if I can talk that Oscar because that was a performance. Because when my girl got there in that truck, she did not act like she was going to do all that. But I feel like, well, something something about that, something I'm remembering, mm -hmm. something in my memory right now is telling me her reacting like that was premeditated. Like her walking off was supposed, that was supposed to happen. That had already been discussed. I didn't know that. But her having that big blow up, maybe she told me this, but her having that moment was like premeditated. Like yeah, she, she wanted to have this walk off, I don't want to do this, you know, situation. I don't remember. She probably, there probably was a thing, but I don't remember. Mm -hmm. I was just so shocked because I just couldn't believe that. Because she, I think. No, somebody, somebody told I this out here. Somebody told me this. Talking. I think we had just started talking. We had just started filming. And she was and like, then, I don't want to do I, this I, because. I don't, I don't, <laughs> and when she started taking her uh, thing, I'm walking away in her heels at the safari, I was like, clocking. What is going on? I just remember them heels hitting the. It just. I heard every step of her walking away. Just walking away, bitch girl. That girl is a mess. That girl, yes, she is chasing reality, Royce. She, she really is. is. And I'm just thinking to myself, like, I really. I know. I was honestly shook because I had never done this before. So when I seen that, I really was like, "What the fuck is happening?" Yeah, but I was like, "Oh, she. Oh, she trying. Oh, she trying me." Yeah, you can come. Oh, okay. I was like, "Oh, she trying me." Oh, bitch. But let me tap in. Let me. Let, let me. Let me, let me wake up yeah, right quick. Let me. Quick. Let me wake up. <laughs> let me wake up. Since y'all hoes want to get it crunk. I was really shook when y'all was having y'all up back and forth, like, and you was talking to Q, but you and Q was having y'all love mm -hmm. talking on the side. I was just like, "Oh my god." Like, how would I'm like? How what do I fit in in all of this? Like, do I fit? I don't know. None of these girls, and they just going at it. So, bitch, do I, do, do I stand here? Or do I jump in the argument, bitch? You just stand here, bro. Just stand. Hearing you say that makes me realize how activated I had to be walking into chasing, walking into chasing Atlanta. Like I didn't have no little cool just walk in like it's everybody right else did. Yeah. Bitch, I came. To, I was working day one. Day one. With the Devon situation, then the, my next scene, I'm going back and forth with, with Lauren. Lauren. Then my next scene, I'm going back and forth with, with Kendra. Devon was supposed to be on season three, uh -huh. but then he didn't come after because they ended up having was it a Halloween? Yes, we did film in October because then they started having a Halloween party. We had the hot. It was a costume party, or was it a costume party? Oh, you talking about his? Because I interviewed him. I think it was his bus thing. You know what? It, you right. Yeah. It was some time, some time mm -hmm. around in October. Yeah, you October. right. And you right. I didn't end up oh, going to. Bitch, I, didn't, you know what? I didn't get to go to that. I can tell you exactly mm -hmm. when we filmed. One second. Because I, I didn't get to go. Thank to you that. for saying and that. And I was like, bitch, I ain't get to go. I ain't get to go to that. And when I'm thinking, okay, well. Devon, I'm gonna be here. I'm gonna see Devon all this, and they was like, "Oh, well, Devon's not gonna be on the show no more." And I was like, "Oh." But Devon was at Cameron's party though. He still came with his man. They still came. Okay. Where Cameron had a party? You know, Cameron had a birthday I party. Didn't Cameron, I didn't go to Cameron's birthday party either because I was in, I was still out of town. My mom, y'all had filmed so many times that week. Yeah, we filmed a lot that week. Mm -hmm. Um, what's your final answer when we started filming? My before I look, I'm gonna say we started filming. I'm gonna say October. I'm gonna say October too. I really want to say September. I almost want to say September too. But okay, we finna see who wrong and who right. Cause I, I was always taking pictures back then. And you know it's it it time stamps it. Okay, so was I filming Chasing Atlanta by then? Yes, I was. This is my scene. This is the day they came over. This is my first scene I filmed, I think. November 18th, bitch. Hold on, bitch. Oh, wait, no, this is Cameron's party. Because this is me on the way to Cameron's party. Y'all remember this outfit I had on at Cameron's party, bitch? That's November. That says November 10th. It, it had to be in October. Wait, bitch, look. He got the pictures from the actual day. From the safari. Yes, yeah, so November 7th. Because they did the, the Halloween, the costume party. Bitch, that didn't make the edit because Devon quit. It did because Devon quit. So he didn't want nothing being filmed. Bitch. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> we're at the zoo. Mm -hmm. Um... Keeping it back to, to you and I, because all that shit was going on, mm -hmm. like, Lauren was doing her thing, Q followed behind Lauren, <laughs> yes. so it was really just you that I just had to, like, talk to. Right. I do remember us talking, I do remember that, and, and I do remember you saying something something about she need to hurry up, because yeah, yeah, I'm hot, cause cause it's it's hot. hot. Yes, and some shit like that. Who drove? Oh, we had a driver. We had a driver. Q was acting like he was driving, mm -hmm. but yeah. he was a child. Um, we got in the van... You know, I can't... Okay, I can't, help 
help me. Help me paint. I ain't really. Help I me paint you and I after man. that. No, no, okay, no. I don't I'm, think we really had a conversation in the van for real. Like we shot a we shot yeah. a little bit of shit. Lauren was talking about the like the Gardini stuff. She was talking about the Gardini stuff, and then she was talking about um she was supposed to go somewhere because what was the event after that? Uh, Kendra's thing that everybody stood me up on. Yes. Um. No, it was something else that everybody was supposed to go to. Kendra's thing. Kendra thing. Kendra's video it's, release. Party. But nobody else came then. It was just me. It was just you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, we didn't end up going there, and but we was end up in the when we was in the truck. I think we that's what me and you never talked in the truck. We never got to really know each other. I think y'all everything was overpowered by the whole was going what y'all had going on and. Q asked me, was I going to go to Kendra thing? And I said, yeah, I was going to go. Mm-hmm. And yeah, Lauren was talking about Gardini. But I ain't really. And mm-hmm. I think you said, you know, that was your friend and whatever case may have you. But mm-hmm. that was it. We ain't really. I don't, I don't think we really had a really talk for real, for real, for the first time on camera until the studio. You keep saying the studio. What's, what's, what, what seen me from the studio? We filmed in the what studio. Was you was recording a song. Front row? I don't remember. Or was it I get the bag? Was it, the studio scene was before you we had the was photo it shoot? It could have been money. It could have been money. But it wasn't you didn't come to the studio with me but No, because the studio What what came first? You the, the my studio, photo shoot or the studio? The studio because you sure I, yes, because you wanted me to style you. We talked about styling and all that kind of stuff, and you talked about that after that you was going to have a photo shoot, from my knowledge. But the studio, you was recording a song. You was it had purple, pink, pink or purple lights or something like that. And because mm-hmm. that's when you was in it, I was telling you that I was taking a credit class, and, and I, I started like, laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I just must out laughing, and I was just like a fish. And I said he laughing, girl. You need seven, seven incomes to be a millionaire, and girl, it was so funny. But yes, but you had laughed at me. I was like, girl. What the fuck is you laughing? At? You know what I laughed? It, oh, I laughed girl. because I knew you as a stylist. Yeah. So to hear a stylist say, I'm finna do, do credit. I was like, girl, bitch, I was ready to do everything. I wanted to be rich. I didn't understand the correlation. Now, if, if you would say that to me now, I yeah. wouldn't have that reaction. Right. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. yeah you know, but bitch. me back then, I was like, like what? Huh? Is it, what? And that's, a, that's another thing, bitch. I was trying to be in style and try to do everything around fashion like I was trying to do. Boutique and all the kind of stuff, and I had a boutique when I was in college too. Oh, I never knew it, that. It always pop up on my YouTube. I'm not on YouTube. My uh, uh, Facebook memories because I used to have a boutique and I used to sell out. Because I, being that I was a stylist on campus, the girls would come to me and get the things. And then I, at the time, I didn't know money management, y'all. Y'all gotta know money management, and I did not know money management, and I spent all my money. Did you go to Montel's runway show? Mm-mm. Yeah, see, I ain't really feel. So what's this? Wait, I think Montel called me. Mm-hmm. I'm just okay. This is is this Cameron's party? No, that's they've. Right oh, oh, you right. Yes. We went to the studio. We went to the studio. Wow. Yes, bitch. I remember seeing the three like my hand. They're not blue. They're like brown. Um, Kendra, she has a manager. Oh, okay. His name is Wayne the Pain. Oh, my God. I'm so afraid to watch season three because that's like young Oliver. And I just don't know if my nerves can take it. Yeah, Yeah, I was reckless. reckless. reckless I didn't give a fuck. You didn't care about it. I didn't care. After season season three and the way y'all was like, Oliver... Y'all was like, I hurt, hurt everybody feels. I was like, dang, okay, maybe I just need to dial it back a little bit. You but know? Y'all and girl, season four, we thought we were going to come in there and be dialed back. No. No. We, it, we it, turned it, up in season Every season, it just went, it got worse and worse <laughs> and worse and worse. Oh, my God. But what I do remember is I immediately just took a liking to you. Mm-hmm. Like, and I feel like you and I hit it off yeah, real, 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 we real did. quickly. Like, yeah. you would come over here. Yeah, we I used to be all the time. You used to be here, you used to be at the honey call all the time. I the mm-hmm. right there. That was yes. I got a video of us in the phone and we was listening to Kendra say, Oh, <laughs> <laughs> baby, I'm calling. Bitch. Can you just take me back? Take me back! And I literally screamed because she was like, I thought I thought that was you singing on the track. And it was like that was Kendra singing. And I didn't think she just took it, bitch. And I was gagging because bitch. I said, bitch, not that's Kendra. That was Kendra singing that motherfucking. Song. Whoa! When that whole 
Joe did that. <laughs> oh, if you ever want a good laugh, Oliver, you just have to go watch that first opening to that scene. And you gonna laugh and girl your day gonna be there. Oh no, that whole scene that whole scene with me, her, and Laura is is reality TV gold. It's gold because first of all, it, that's naturally that was us naturally in that moment. That was Kendra naturally in her element. Yeah, that element. was my natural reaction, and like <laughs> was, Laura was doing just, her natural the, thing. It was just a thing. natural mess, bitch. It was so weird. And to this day, just thinking about that part in that show just has me wanting to just scream right now. So, <laughs> which is why in season six, you hear me say we, we was the original freaking frat because mm-hmm. I used to always. Like Troy was the one that I would talk yeah. to. Like he was my he was my friend. Like my friend mm-hmm. on the on the cast. Yes. He was that was my buddy. Before the big three came about, we're gonna talk about the big three. No, we're gonna talk about the, it was the power three. The then power it went to the three. big three. The power the, three. I don't think the big three stuck. Everybody really liked the power yeah, three. Yeah, the power three was yeah. The power three was was it the power four? It was never no fourth bitch. Mm-mm. No, it was only three. It was the it power was only three. three. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Cause who came up with the power three? Was y'all me? saying that? Me? You were saying that? Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm the only bitch out of them two that wa- out of us three that watched Charm. That comes straight from Charm. And Kendra used to say that all the time. That's what she used to wear, refer to y'all as. What the power three? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Oh yeah, the power season, season four when we came back and Kendra got on the jail. Oh yes, yeah. Oh, everybody hated the power three. I don't know why. I don't know why. That lie, that lie that y'all did the first that- review that y'all did together. Oh bitch, that had fit it up. With everybody, everybody, everybody was pissed. Nobody wanted to be around. But I don't feel like we said we gonna get to. I still don't. I don't feel like I said anything. And Kendra, Kendra was here. She said, "Oh, but it wasn't you. It was really Lauren and Q that was saying stuff." But I'm like, and I think Kendra just wanted you to stand up for her. Why everybody always want me to stand up for them to be their fucking lawyer? Why? I feel like that's my history on chasing reality. Everybody want me to stand. Why? Girl, I don't know, girl. But then when it's time to stand up for little Oliver, ain't don't no hoe be found. I be having to be out of here windmilling by myself, which is okay, bitch, because when I whoop ass, I want the trophy by myself. I don't want to <laughs> say I had no assist, whether that's physically or verbally. You know what I'm saying, bitch? When I, bitch, when, bitch, I come to destroy and I conquer, I want the medal to myself. But damn, mm-hmm. er, everybody always want me to. Girl, we just wanted you to show up. But you showed up. I feel like you heard us last season. You heard you heard us over the years. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know I've you know y'all my friends, yeah. so I try to treat my friends right. Yeah. Okay, going back to season three. Okay, mm-hmm. so we shot the studio scene. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember the I remember more so the photo shoot scene, which I was really excited. Okay, so a little behind the scenes tea. What happened? In photo- no, 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 no. You, you just can't. You brought me clothes, yeah. and like we called. We called. I can't remember the talk. Oh, we talked about. We talked about. You called me up about that twine and um. And remember while we was filming, he called me? Yes, he Remember? Did. Girl. Oh, I called him. Oh, no, you called. Yeah, <laughs> some, somebody somebody called somebody. Yes, I called J. Twan. He was, he was like puzzled because he was like, girl, why would you call me? And we not even like that close of friends yet. So, but you trying to fix problems between me and Oliver. It was something like that, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> So I remember, like, so they was telling me Troy wasn't filming a lot back then, right? I can't, I cannot, I, I cannot exactly say who it was. I can't remember. Um, but it was like he not really filming, mm-hmm. you know, whatever, whatever. I was like, well, that's my friend, you know, yeah. like just have, just have him come film with me, you yeah. know, like I got shit to do. He a stylist. Yeah. We'll just, we'll just do that. So I remember being really excited for you to yeah. come bring the clothes and me actually put yeah. on the clothes because I knew production at the time. And I, again, I can't remember who from production told me this, but it was like, you know, Troy not really showing mm-hmm. nothing right now. Um, but we shot that scene and I just feel like I can't remember anything else between you and I for season three. I just, I remember more so us outside of the show. Yeah, We're like, outside the show. We, yes. used to, we literally used to sit up here and watch the show with Key mm-hmm. and laugh. You and, would just stop by and just yes, be on the couch. Because mm-hmm. I'd be on my way. I, this is when, by the time the show started airing, I was already had transferred to Atlanta Station. So mm-hmm. I used to get off and work and come here because I used to always come here my damn work clothes. Ooh, I'm also finna tell some tea. Troy, feel free to tell some tea. I'm finna tell all your business. So Troy, so Troy was my original chasing friend that came over here. But then when me and Q got cool, child, Troy was over here. And baby, I think this is towards the end of the season while we were still filming. Mm-hmm. I, maybe the show had been out already. I don't know. Cause I cried over here one day. Me and Q cried together on the couch. Yeah, yes. about my daddy. Yes! Oh, baby. 
when I move out of this place, which is very soon, it's gonna be a sad day. Cause sad. the honey cut got so many. It's so just so many good. stories just in the walls, yes. bitch. Um, but I just remember, I just I remember y'all being right here, baby. And I just looked up and I don't know if Q had his hand in your skirt or what or Q was feeling up on you, bitch, but you was doing just like that. <laughs> and I was over there looking like Baby, what they got going on? I just, remember, I, just remember, I just remember you giggling. I just remember you giggling. I was like, oh, and yeah. then and then that's when he came to your job and shot the scene. See, yeah. Shot the scene. And that's when I was working out really heavy all uh-huh. the time. I ain't had no stomach. This is twenty. This is twenty four year old body, baby. I'm talking about. I'm I'm still intact now, mm-hmm. but I used to be flat. Stomach had a big booty. Cute, yeah, cute. Your stomach like, still not flat? It's flat. No, yeah, it's oh. flat. But it ain't. It was back then. It was tight. I had mm-hmm. ass. Like you can see my ass through my. Uh, you only can't see them no more. Mm-hmm. They gone. Mm-hmm. So right. I'm not gonna get back in the gym because I'm finna have a birthday party. I don't know. I mean, hi, yeah, we still yeah. go party. We still go party. But yes, and yeah, me and child, I used to like you back in the day. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I'll tell y'all that. I used to like you. I did. Why didn't it go nowhere? I think at the time we both were thinking about the show. The show. Fam. And then after that, I ended up talking back to, after that little fling, I ended up starting back talking to my ex mm. after season three. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it was just like. It never really hit, and then Q left what after season four. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Before season four, Q was gone. Yeah, Q was gone before season, season four. four. Yeah. So. Um. Wow, y'all. We got Troy here from Chasing Atlanta talking about all the things of the things. Mm. We are about almost done with season three. We're going to get to the power of three law that <laughs> changed. Changed the fucking game. It changed the game. Changed the it changed game. the game. Oh, we're going to go to a quick commercial break. Don't y'all go nowhere because you are officially in the mix with Twix and we will be back after In the mix with Twix and tag did it. Boom. Bitch. Yes, God, honey. Get ready for another show-stopping night in web reality. This is a deeper love to take pride in. Because when you have a bunch of eyes on you, honey, you have to be the T. Presented by Oliver Twist, this is the second installment of Chasing. The Beat, a virtual showcase celebrating queer art and creativity. Catch the brightest stars take to the internet stage by storm, plus extra special performances from some fresh faces ready to make some noise. Watch this musical showcase only on the Chasing Reality YouTube channel. Yes, God, honey. What's up, everyone? It is Darius asking you to check out my newest children's book, DJ Stands on Business. Follow along as five friends who are entrepreneurs by the name of Pixel, Raven, a dynamic duo we can learn, and a children's book author named DJ use their entrepreneurial spirit to save money to go on a trip to Mexico. So follow along as children can learn about terms that teach them about entrepreneurship and give them the opportunity to open up the world in the adventures of friendship, and entrepreneurship. You can check out my children's book, DJ Stands on Business, as well as DJ's favorite day and Twinkle Little Star at www.kingdariusbooks.com. All right, so all we are back in the mix with Twix. We got my friend here, Troy from Chasing Realities, Chasing Atlanta, as well as the group chat here mm-hmm. talking about his time filming Chasing Atlanta, listen, if you guys want your commercial to be played during my lives, as well as the videos, okay, because, you know, these things get up into the tens of thousands of views, mm-hmm. please reach out to me, um, and we'll get that situ- we'll get that situated. I would love to promote some of you guys during this time. Back to my friend Troy here. What's going on, okay? So, I consider Troy, like, my first friend on the show. Like, that was my, that was my boy. Anytime I wanted to, like, catch up with somebody on the show, yeah. put, put me with Q, we're gonna have a good time. The Florida of it all well, we was. Just have a bottle. We just have a good time, yeah. baby. First of all, the show came out, right? The mm. show came out, and I think that was the that was all of our first times seeing what everybody else had been filming on their mm. own. Uh, what they was filming with other people, what other people mm. were saying. Yeah. Green screens. And we were still filming while the show. We were still filming, mm. which I always thought was. A horrible idea. Yes, I always thought that was so bad. They messed up everything else. They had all the progress that mm-hmm. was made. 
Done. It was done. Um, I personally felt like I felt I felt people I felt people kind of change towards me once the show came out because mm-hmm. I feel like at least at least this this is my perspective. I feel like when the show was filming and because because I was involved in so much drama. Mm-hmm. I just felt like people thought nobody was going to like me, you mm. know, like, yeah. you know, it was going to be a, we don't like Oliver, oh, yeah. fuck Oliver, the people was going to like me, and then when the show came out, bitch, and season three happened, and people really liked me, yeah. I felt like the cast kind of was like, because mm-hmm, bitch girl, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. who this little hoe thinks she is? Yeah. You know? I agree. You agree? I agree. What? Why? Tell me. Tell me. Tell me from your perspective. Coming. Coming in with me, season three, and where I kind of feel like we all was on equal playing ground. Yeah. In, in, in some regards, mm-hmm. you know, maybe this person did this. This person or had this was able to right. do this. But I feel like we was all, you know, leveled out. I think when it came to after we seen how things started going, like I, I think as far as green screens and things like that. I think the cast felt like, okay, well, bitch is not going to like him because they're going to feel like he messy or he this or he that or, you know, whatever. And, bitch, nobody felt like that. Nobody felt like, oh, you was messy. They was like, oh, I love what he's bringing to the show, da 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 And it was just like, well, bitch, this bitch is messy. <laughs> <laughs> you felt like I was messy. You know, at the time, we all felt like you were messy. Until, uh, I, I feel like, and I wouldn't say I felt like you was messy. I feel like, again, I had people in my ear at the time mm. and people that I was hanging, I was friends with at the time. Was just like, oh, that person's not gonna be your friend, da, 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 whatever the case may have you. And I think people always, also, I feel like at the time too, I feel like me and Montel had a conversation at one point. And, you know, I, when was this? What ha- I, Something had happened, but he was just like, he had never really had a sit down or conversation with you because he didn't vibe with you like that or whatever the case may have you. And I think too, me being with Martel, Martel was dating my friend at the time. Um, Your best friend? Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm sorry, y'all. Anyway, girl, they can't, they can't beat me. Hey, sir. I love you, girl. I know you gonna Bitch, you just reminded me of something. Keep going, though. But anyway, yeah, so they was dating, and it was just like, girl, if other people feel like this person is messy, people that I've been, I'm hanging around, I kind of used to... Montel was like the person that brought me on the show, so it was just like I feel like I had to be loyal to him in a mm, sense. And mm. then I think once all of that happened and the life happened from in the middle of the season, it mm. was just like and Martel was like, Oh yeah, I told you he didn't like you and da 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 y'all didn't y'all he wasn't no da 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 he said he said he was born and da 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 whatever and I think and at the time it was me, Martel and Cameron. Mm. Like we were real cool. Because mm-hmm. you know Martel and Cameron are already cool, so I was automatically hanging around Cameron. Mm-hmm. And so yeah, I think they had just convinced me that you were just like a messy girl. Which I didn't understand because me and Troy used to hang out all the time. Yeah. So you know, I used to be like, Well girl, you hang around me like yeah. you how how you gonna let another bitch come tell you who I am and you be around me? I was a little young, naive person. I was new to Atlanta and I had I never had really a group of gay friends or just mm. gay friends all the time or being around gay friends twenty four seven. Like I had that in college, but it wasn't like being brought into separate areas. Like you in Little Tallahassee, so it's like mm. your your girls are your girls. Are, but I had my best friend here. I was hanging out with Montel. I was hanging out with you. Like I was just. Everywhere in the bound, it was just like Montel was like the person that I was like really close with, and being that he was dating my best friend at the time, it was just like, okay, well, girl, I don't think he gonna steer me wrong or whatever case may have you. So I kind of, like I said, I was naive and young, and I used to just be like, okay, well, girl, if that ain't somebody you vibe with, I can't vibe with, kind of thing. I think what really did it was y'all out there, and then too, yes, in the comments, and then on top y'all. of that too, when you start hanging with Lauren and Q, and it became like a, a thing for real. And I felt left out, bitch. I really, because I'm just like, bitch, I was actually his friend, you know, for real, too. And he was just arguing with the bitch Lauren at the time, too. So it was just like, girl, damn. <laughs> damn. Like, damn. Yeah. I feel, and then I'm going to tell you the story that just mm-hmm. popped up in my brain, bitch. And I, bitch, I got to say this. <laughs> I almost want to say what I got to say before I say this. But we're going to, I'm going to, 
I feel like it was a combination of a lot of things, right? Mm-hmm. I feel like I feel like the comments. I really feel like it was the people's reaction to me in the comments that y'all were leaving underneath those videos, and you could st- you could still go back and watch them. Yeah. Which is why moving forward, I tried to like do more group things mm-hmm. with 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 y'all because I never wanted y'all. To, I never wanted y'all to look at me how all y'all looked at the Lauren. Brunch too, bitch. The brunch. I think the brunch too. When you and Kendra got into it at the brunch. Oh, at um. Harold. Her- no, not Harry. Harry. Henry's. 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 Close now. Girl, I was gag. I was gagging there too because I was like, girl. Girl, was I was lot. working. Y'all hoes, them hoes had me working it season was a three. Lot going on. I was like, oh my God. And I think at that point too, I always thought you would, even though I used to hang out with your side of the show, I was like, damn, bitch, this bitch <laughs> is something every time we go somewhere. Like, bitch, this bitch ain't sitting down. Like, this bitch, bitch is all. everybody. Girl. Then, all of them, they're just suspect. That you gay it wasn't it enough. Was they already told me about your kid. Jim messy ass. <laughs> they already told me about your kid. Jim messy ass. Yeah. Um, I felt like because y'all used to leave comments in the in the on the, on the videos be like Oliver's a star, Oliver's this, Oliver's the this, he, he, Oliver changed the show. He's mm-hmm. all this. I felt like my cast members read all that. And automatically a target was placed on my head that ain't never really leave. It ain't never, it ain't, it ain't never leave. It ain't never leave. Every time y'all say Oliver is this, the same way y'all reading it and I'm reading it, they reading it too. And I just, I just felt this energy. Just, I just felt it where it was, everybody just was like, oh, this little whole thing, she hot shit. This, this little whole thing, she hot, hot shit. shit Cause how old were we at the time? Bitch. 22, 22, 22, going on 23. I was young. Yes, at the time. I think I was, what, 20? You was 23. 23. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, 24. okay, let's talk about, Charles texting me. Mm-mm. Um, <laughs> Okay, go ahead. Let's talk about the Chase in Atlanta Power 3 Live, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm going to remind everybody, nobody had ever gone live on the channel before. The channel would just post the episodes mm-hmm. and the channel would go off. Right. I rem- I called in Dario and I said, okay, like, you see how the people are responding to me. Like, mm-hmm. can I, like... I want to thank these people because, like, bitch, like, my followers are going up. Bitch, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm working now. Like, life is changing. And so, I did that surprise live on the mm-hmm. YouTube channel, the first live ever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. From there, and Dario was like, okay, well, if you went live, everybody else got to go live. live. Which I was like, okay, that's fine. I don't give a right. fuck. You know, bitch, I was the first one. So, shit, I don't give a fuck. Y'all whole spot with me. You know what I'm saying? See, that's why these hoes want to whip my ass. But I'm like, you know, I don't give a fuck. So, you know, let them hoes go live. Right. Um... And then I came up with the idea again. I was like, "Ooh," because actually at the time I was friends with Q separately, mm-hmm. and I was friends with Lauren separately. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we, the three of us, had just like, just mesh together. started meshing, and I think it was the live of us like really just being here talking mm-hmm. that really like that live was what really. Pulled solidified, us together, right. solidified. The power of three really formed before y'all, before y'all eyes with that live yeah, because mm-hmm. the three of us probably had only hung out maybe once, maybe once, like in person. Mm-hmm. And in actuality, in the span of the three of us being friends, the three of us have probably all together at one time hung out maybe a total of five times. Really? And I'm and I'm pushing it. I'm pushing it. I've always. I've always, always been with Lauren. Like, I've hung out with Lauren multiple times, and I've definitely hung out with Q Cute, multiple right. times. Um, But the majority of the three of us being friends is FaceTime. Um, at the same time? At the same time, yes. Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah, bitch. Oh, we used to FaceTime each other all the time, bitch. Just be bitch, on the phone for hours. We had group FaceTime that is? Once FaceTime became a thing, yeah. I mean, once group time, once group FaceTime became a thing, yeah. We did. Group, group FaceTime been around for a good little minute. Oh, and if it wasn't that, we was just all on three-way. Yeah, I'm like, bitch, group FaceTime didn't come out until, like, last year. No, bitch, it was out before then. It was like 2022. No, no, it was out before then. It was definitely out before 2022. No. I'm almost leaning towards 20. It was definitely out before 2020. Let me see. When did group... Twenty eighteen, yeah. 
Group first time been around for a good little minute. No, bitch. It's been around for 2019. It's been around for a good little minute, and that was that's the beginning. Of oh, the so two. no, yeah, it came out in in 2018, but bitch, they stopped it because I'm like, bitch, I didn't get group FaceTime again until like <laughs> two this years hoe. ago, bitch. This hoe. Am um, I lying? Let's talk about the, the live. Mm-hmm. I don't feel like. I feel like I, I. This is what now. This is what I honestly believe. This is what yeah. I believe, and I'm gonna stand on it. And you gonna tell me what you? Oh, I gotta tell you what I what I thought. Yeah, same with you. So it's. I'm shocked to hear you say Montel say he did, he he trouble he had trouble connecting with me because mm. I used to hang out with him, Jatuan, and Mark all the time. Really? Yes. Like all the time. Hmm. And when I, I I'm not gonna say all the time we was going out every night, but anytime it was Mark, Jatuan. Montel and Cameron and Cameron mm-hmm. would be around sometimes. I would hang out with them, and I remember, you know, and that's when I had found out. That, was it Montel? Was that's it when I had found out the team that, been, that there was a there. love triangle going on. See, there was many love triangles going Ooh. on season three. So I ain't gonna be too many. So I ain't gonna blow up the spot. I ain't gonna put everybody's name out there. You guys said talk to Mark too. Well, Mark, talk Mark to was him. talking to all y'all. <laughs> Mark was talking to the whole cast. Let's so see. I gonna say, but yes, we had a, like a little thing. Time. Oh, never Mark was talking to everybody. Him, yeah, I, I never really went further with him because something just told me not to. So that made me why. Bitch, I just remember this night. I ain't gonna say no names, okay? Because mm-hmm. it, it's not it's not my story to tell. Mm-hmm. I was there. I saw it with my own two eyes, but it ain't my business to tell. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna be at least that respectful. But baby, I remember we was all at Cameron House trying to go somewhere. And I think that's when the girls found out that Mark was talking to this one and talking to that one. Or baby and all I gotta say is Mark had Mark had a handful. Mark Mark was dealing Mark Mark was we should have had the cameras on Mark that night. Oh Mark, bro, they went at it? Oh yeah. Oh wow. Oh yeah. Oh the girls was going at it. Oh the girls were going at it. I went out with them once one night. It was in this is when the girls were filming another show because it was me, Marcel, Mark, and this one they were filming. I forgot what show they was filming. I want to say it was a show. Was it G Status? Yes, it was G Status. Mm-hmm. That's why G Status said filming G Status was that a thing and they were we were all together. But I used to hang with them too. Mm-hmm. 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 Um, but this is th- this is what I think. I think I'm just gonna say it. I think the new hot bitch on the block. Linking up with the the head bitch in charge, mm-hmm. Lauren. Mm-hmm. Adding Q, who was like, I feel like people view Q as like one of the more reputable personalities that have been on the brand. Like mm-hmm. everything he say he do, yeah. you know, he he doing it right. in real life to some degree. So I feel mm-hmm. like all three of us linking mm-hmm. up together during that time of season three was just it was yeah. good for us. Yeah. It I'm trying to think what, what I feel like y'all I feel like y'all put more on it than what it actually was. Like we never said, oh, we a we a click, fuck everybody else, or we're gonna stop. We just said the three of us are the power three. Well, you know, I used to hang out with Lauren too in season three. See, I used to hang out, I used to be with Lauren a lot. I done been to Lauren House before. I done been to Lauren House. I used to be. I used yeah. to. I used to go to Lauren's house. Me and Lauren went bowling together. Me, Lauren, her boyfriend, and her friends. Like, I used to. Come, come, come. I used to be with Lauren, bitch. So was it that? Everybody, y'all I felt like we all, all, we all should have been. y'all got together, I just felt left out because I had a relationship with Lauren. I had a relationship with you, and I also had a relationship with you. Not like so you wanted yeah. to be, you wanted to be a part of the clique. <laughs> I would say I wanted to be a part of the clique. Yeah, yeah, bitch. I want to be the power foe, bitch. I want to be the power foe. <laughs> <laughs> and I, that's what I felt like. That's what oh. it was. Like I just feel like you know the three. This is again. This is what I think. And I, I feel like I needed I, help too, bitch, at the time, because bitch, I was just drowning. But I used to help out. you. I was drowning, bitch. I didn't know what the fuck was going on. I feel like who the cast viewed as the three girl, you know, three other popping bitches on the thing that all linked mm-hmm. together and done left us. They they done left us out, and now you know, fee fa fo fum. I don't know why it translated that way, because we just three bushes over here having oh shit. <laughs> Baby, we don't know which one of Lauren houses it was. Baby, I don't know. I don't know, baby. I don't know. Shit, you know. I know she cooked some good macaroni and cheese. And that bitch, that, that bitch day, can baby. cook. That bitch can cook. That bad. bitch can cook, and she can do some ham. She can do some ham. Bitch, <laughs> that's two things, baby. That, that do. what, bitch? <laughs> um, 
All I know is once the Power 3 Live happened, you stopped talking to me. Mm -hmm. And I was reaching out to you and I was like, hey, like, what's going on? You cut me off. Because I had felt like I had trusted these people and who had got on there? Somebody was like, um, Lauren had, Lauren had, I think it was really Lauren that had said something smart. I don't feel like what Lauren said was smart. I remember. Lauren said she appreciated Troy mm -hmm. because at least at least this is how I took it mm -hmm. that she meant. And I feel like what she, I feel like what she meant, she said, she said, I appreciate Troy actually coming on the show and showing his real life. Like, mm -hmm. okay, yeah, he chasing to be a stylist, mm -hmm. but he also got a nine to five. Mm -hmm. Um, but and I feel but I feel like you took that as her like being funny about your nine to five, but I feel like she was appreciating you being honest about it mm -hmm. versus because she said like when she signed on to do the show she was told that everybody was like her mm -hmm. everybody was like her yeah. you know bosses doing mm -hmm. their own thing making money mm -hmm. da, 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 da. she didn't know that people was you know doing that and still you know having a regular nine to five but she said it, it was never a problem but that's not what was presented to her that that was the, that why are you laughing what happened what i said Nothing, bitch. Go ahead. Um, and so I felt like she she was I felt like she was singing your praises, and saying I appreciate Troy for at least being honest and not trying to come on the show like other like many people do, mm -hmm. and be like, oh, bitch, this is what I do full time. This this is what I'm doing. It's like, no, bitch, that is not what you do full time. You also doing other stuff, you know, right. which I also think is important right. for for people who watch us. Yeah. What was your response to it? I yeah I I, I felt. I did feel like she was, when she said that the show, she thought the people coming on the show, that, you know, that she was, everybody was going to be like her, like be a boss or have a da da da, da whatever case may have you. And I, in my mind, I'm like, bitch, I am a boss. Like, bitch, I am, I'm 23, I'm a store mm -hmm. manager of a store. Like, bitch, bitch, bitches at 23 weren't, don't get fucking a whole store. That's like you run your own damn business, basically, because bitch, you don't have nobody else telling you what to do. Like, bitch, it's just you. So it's like, bitch, I am boss. Like, bitch, I am. I am a bossy girl. Like I may not be out here slinging hair for my salary, girl. But I, at that point, when I got my store, bitch, I was I was making a good coin. So it was just like, girl, you can't tell me so that you're saying, I'm, I'm a boss. still bitch, I'm, I'm still a boss. Bitch, yes, bitch, I'm a boss. I got That's how I you. Feel. And so when she was saying it, it was just like, girl. But I was like, Lauren, you know, like I felt like I was your friend. And then I felt like with you being there, I don't know what. Did, I don't think you said nothing. I think I held you at a different thing for you to like say something for me. Or stick up for me because I think because I felt like she said it in the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so but once I sat back and watched it, that's why I was able to talk to her and like you know whatever because it wasn't that deep. But yeah, I was really pissed off at that point. I was just like, girl, fuck all the hoes. And I also feel like except for Q, I also feel like because you had other hoes in your ear too who didn't like yeah. her and me. Because mm -hmm. Q was just like cute. Yeah, I had no issue with Q. I didn't have issue. With you. So then, shall we get to the season three reunion? The season three reunion was... The season three reunion was... I never would do that again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad Adario took the audience out after that. Oh, yes, most definitely. That was good. The, the season three reunion was interesting. Mm -hmm. It was going okay. Like, we was we was getting through it. Um, There wasn't much resolve happening, but at least we was getting through it. Yeah. Where did it go wrong? Where did it go wrong? Where did it go... Where did it... Oh, Wasn't it when you? it was when um, Lauren was Boyfriend. talking to me. Yeah, me and Lauren was having a, like a, a back and forth. We were trying to get it out, mm -hmm. and no. Lauren boyfriend said something, and my friend was like, um, "That's a grown lady. She can talk." Mm -hmm. And he was like, "Bitch, who's talking to you?" And when I realized who it was, she was like, "Bitch, I got your da 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 whatever." And then girl from there, it was just like you went crazy. It was up and stuff. Yeah. I went crazy. No shame. That was that was that was old temper me before I've been to therapy and all these things and I figured out my issue. I begged and Daria not to let you go. Out of all the girls from season four, that I was like, yeah, fire them all. Get rid of them. <laughs> fire all of them. Get rid of every single last one. I was like, but don't get rid of Troy. I like Troy, and mm -hmm. I, I just feel like Troy just got misled. But so don't get rid of him. I did. Because remember, Troy, remember he had that he Mr. had that Adaria, zero policy. If you fight, you get fired. You get fired. And I was like, don't fire Troy. Like, please don't fire Mr. Troy. Adaria had sent me that thing and said, "Bitch, we was not. I was not come back." And I was just like, you know. And I sent him this nice email. You know, thank you so much for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. Da, da, da. Like, I wasn't bitter because I already knew what he said in the damn contract. Like, bitch, it was bitch. 
Yeah. You fight, you you done. So it's like when he sent me the email and told me that, I sent him back a nice email. Like I didn't go off. Like I didn't get on social media and shade them. Mm-hmm. You know anything like that? I just went out. Like the other people I, did. Yeah, I bowed out gracefully. Like yes. that's all. That's all I know how to do. Like I don't care what it is, friendships, relationships, whatever. I'm gonna bow out gracefully because at the end of the day, it's not worth putting more energy into something that's already on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, that's how I always felt. So. Um, yeah, when he told me that, I was just like, okay, well, and I was sad about it. I really, I really was sad. I was really sad because I was like, I really wanted to go back because I didn't feel like I got the chance to really showcase me or really people to really see who I am. And it was just like, you know what? But if this is it, this is this it. This is it. Yeah. I, um, I used to beg. I used to really beg. Yeah. Because I didn't want you to go. I appreciate it. Yeah. Because, I mean, I'm going to be honest. You know, it's in the past. I was like, I was like, I was like, and Dario, she's stupid. Like, just yeah. just give her a chance. She don't know. Like, she don't know. You know, like, she not, she not like the other ones. Where, yeah. to me, it was like a DNA of. Just nasty. Just nastiness. Yeah. I feel like with you, because I had spent time with you. I was yeah. like, that's not, like, I, I don't know what happened. Because yeah. I still hadn't spoken to you. I was like, I don't yeah. know what happened. I feel like something happened. Yeah. And, I, and, and yeah. yeah. I ain't going to say I just I used to vouch a lot. I used to yeah. vouch a whole lot. I appreciate it. So that. we go into season four. Freela Kendra come out. I think right at the top, like right before we start. And shout out to Mama Twitch. Cause Mama Twitch should have punched me in my Mama Twitch should have actually took off the that day. She should have took off. <laughs> Bitch. She just like I felt built that day and whooped my ass. That's Girl, okay, so mind you, so I came to the reunion, bitch. I had I had niggas with me. Yeah, bitch. I had so many niggas with me, niggas. You know. Girl, listen. The pit bull of me did not care at the time, girl. I was ready to go on everybody. <laughs> Bitch, I forgot about that. I forgot when I walked into that reunion. I had I had about four niggas with me. <laughs> it was yeah. It was because I remember it was that one, that one, that one. My mama. <laughs> That's two niggas right there. And it was another boy. I can't. Oh yes, I, I remember. It was it was my Morehouse brother, the boy I was talking to. The boy who was trying to talk to me, and yeah, I remember it was four of them. <laughs> Plus my mama, so five, really six. Yeah, so Mama Twix was definitely there. Oh baby, Oliver wasn't Oliver wasn't about to be doing none of that. But mama Twix was ensuring all of Oliver wasn't about to be doing yeah. none of that that day. Mama Twix said, Oh yes. You, mama Twix said, baby girl, you don't want it. <laughs> girl, so as we walk into the car to leave, we walking past this hole. Cause I was going, I had already went off on I saw You tell you you tell you tell the people what you did. I forgot I forgot what I even said. All of all I know is I walked out and you was walking by and I started saying something to you, bitch. I walked by you, Mama Twix. I, what was I saying? You said something about my mama can get it. <laughs> you said something. About, she had so much to say, which my mama was talking trash in the audience. Oh, and she I just, is. Mama Twix was my talking, mama was talking shit so much audience. shit in the audience, and I was like, mama, "That's what. That's what happened." She mama, was, she, I forgot what she was saying. Mama. <laughs> God, mama, y'all saying? don't y'all don't know how many times I have begged my mama to stay out of my business. So I love because I don't go down to the courthouse bothering her about hers. Y'all don't know how much I have begged my mama to Ooh. just stay out of it. That mama was, was talking shit from the audience. I do remember that, mm-hmm. and I remember you you was walking by and you started and you started saying something. I just been telling my mama, just come on, just ignore it, just please, just come on, just come on, come on, ma, come on, ma. Girl, I was pushing. Come on, ma, just I please was come on. It. Fast forward years later when my mama get on live. Yeah. And mama Twins cussed me out and said, look, I bet that I should have, I should have beat your ass, girl. You should have. You should have told me up, girl. But mama Twins, I feel like mama Twins is a great mom because she didn't look at me as an adult. She still looked at me as a child. Mm -hmm. And I feel like she respected that of me. Like being that I was a child and I was somebody else's child. Like, girl, I ain't gonna do that to you because I know you still a kid and then years later when she we got on that live and she said everything she had to say and she was what well, did I get on that live? I got on that live today because I was this when I had moved into my new apartment. And um yeah. And ever since that day like I just have I've had a different a different respect for Mama Twins and that's been twenty 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 two. And it does stuck. But mama, yeah, my mama came with our live and cleared it. She cleared out. everybody. She called everybody out. Cleared it. I just was like, Lord. She called everybody out one by one. You ever know when you when you in school and you got you got that mama that don't mind coming to showing out and you just mm-hmm. you just looking like just Lord. And you just put your head down. Like, like I gotta go to lunch with these people, mom. Tomorrow. Today. I gotta get on the bus with these people. 
Can, yeah. can you just please, just please? My mom don't give a fuck if listen, but I appreciate it. You, yeah, she, but she, she don't give a, when tough. it comes to me, baby. Chandra yeah. gonna she gonna suit and boot it up. You know, she like that every shit time. every time. Every time. Um. So, so season three happens. Yeah. I was okay. Even though that had happened, mm-hmm. I was still vouching for you though, because mm-hmm. I, I mean, yeah, you know, fuck it. Um, season four happens. Yeah, and Daniel takes me after like maybe like a couple. Maybe like a month or two before the show was getting ready to film. And he was like, you know, we would love for you to come back to the show. Da, 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 da. He was like, after, after careful consideration and watching whatever, whatever. Um, he was like, um, I would love to have you back on. And I was like, okay, cool. When did we make up? That. We talked over the summer. Remember we when we went to watch sushi? Bitch, you took me to raw sushi! <laughs> yes, you did! You, you know, that's one of my sushi. favorite, like... Eat, eating moments in all of Atlanta. Yes, that was. And I was so mad that they closed it. Because after Ryan introduced me to it. And it had to be a Tuesday. Because I felt like we was drinking. Yes. Everything was like reduced. The, the, uh, it was the happy hour time. Mm-hmm. And um, me and you went. And then after that, I used to just go by myself. Bitch, you did call me. You called me like a Florida hoe. See, one thing about a Florida girl. We're going to pick up the phone and call you. We're going to call you. A real Florida a girl. A real bitch. A real Florida girl going to use them. How many digits in the phone? Ten, ten, ten digits. Mm-hmm. They gonna ten use them digits. tens. Mm-hmm. Seven without an area home. They gonna they gonna use them tens mm-hmm. to get in contact with you yeah. and figure out what's going on. Yeah. And you called me. You was like, "Can we? Can we go? I, I want to talk to you." Yeah. I was like, oh, "Okay, yeah." Troy came and picked me up. Will you pick me up? Yeah, I picked you up. Came and picked me I up. Picked you up. We went to raw sushi. We went to raw sushi. We talked. We had a great time. We had, we had, a, great time. Time. We had, we had a great time at raw sushi. We had yeah, a we great had talk. Time. We had an amazing talk. Amazing I really time. yeah. And I was like, okay, yeah, all right, okay. I came back here, dropped you off, and... Dropped me off. And after that, we... I think we started filming, like, maybe a couple... Maybe, like, a month or so after that. Yes. Yes, yes, mm-hmm. yes. You came to my performance mm-hmm. and at the when, Eye Lounge. Yes, I came to your performance at the Eye Lounge. That's when they showed me actually coming back. Mm-hmm. And, girl, that's when I figured out... Found out about all of these about you and Kendra. Child. <laughs> now... You and I are trying to repair a friendship, right? Mm-hmm. But now the whole Kendra of it all is introduced into the situation, and right. now Dominique is here. Yes, Dominique is introduced. Dominique is introduced for season four. Dominique, Dominique is introduced yes, for season yes, four. Him and Rico. Yes, and I felt like this is what I think. Again, it's just my feelings. I felt like Troy was like, "Oh, it's a new girl here. Mm-hmm. Let me be friends with her." <laughs> To get my little duo, truo, trio situation, name, thing going on, you know, to get my no. thing going on. That's, but that's just what I feel. Because I just feel like, okay, you took me out to Raw Sushi, we started, and then I just felt like you just dropped me. Well, you introduced me to Dominique and Rico here at the Honeycutt Hideaway. When we had the little brunch. Yes, you had did a little brunch. Mm-hmm. We for the new it was yes. Yes. We, it was for the new people. Cause Travis wasn't a Travis wasn't a part of our cast at that he, time. He wasn't a part of the he cast. He didn't come till later. So it was just me, you, me it was me, you, Nick, and Rico. Um, cause I had met I think Darius was here that day or before we started filming and he left. That feels right. Mm-hmm. And um Dominique was here. Dominique had on orange. Rico had on thing. Because I remember Rico came in. That's when I was like, oh, a little Puerto Rican pop. Because of my, my green screen was really dramatic when Rico mm-hmm. rocked in the door. Because I was gagging a little piece. You thought he was cute. I thought Rico was cute at the time. Mm-hmm. I think he's cute now. You know, I think that night Rico stayed the night at my house that night. And me and him fell asleep on the couch eating McDonald's fries. <laughs> Not to even I thought me and Rico was gonna be real close. Yeah, I, I, I thought Rico. that. I, I still love Rico. We have we aren't as close as we used to be, but I still got love for Rico. It's no like no tea, no tea, no animosity, no no beef, anything. Like yeah, that. same um, here. But but yeah, um, yeah. I don't I, think it it wasn't I that. Like I feel me. like Domin- that day I met Dominique. Dominique gave me his number. We kind of he he would follow up. Like we kind of like. It was like a mutual friendship to me, I feel like. Mm-hmm. It was a very mutual friendship, and um, we just started hanging out or doing things or whatever, and I think, when, what, did Dominique come to my, I mean, Dominique went to, I think Dominique, his, who introduced me to Joe and Juniper. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's who introduced me to that, because I had ne- I didn't used to really go to the, the, um, Tenth and and all that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. for, for real. Um, but yeah, I used to be scared. Yeah, I used to be scared too. I used to be scared. I was like, so many gays over there. So many gays, like, girl, what is this? Yeah, it's too much. But yeah, Dominic, Dominic introduced me to that, and 
Yeah, we just started being friends and that, but it, it had nothing to do with you. It was it wasn't I'm I was trying sure. to be it wasn't I was trying to be like or have my own little clique or whatever case maybe. But I think me and Dominique just clicked off of basically that day in here. And I think after that, um So it's still my fault. No, it ain't your fault. No, I'm saying it was cause I I had the brunch, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and I told them to invite all y'all. So yes. it's, it's you know you the one who clicked us up. I did. Yeah, yeah. I would like the credit. You know? <laughs> I love that for you. <laughs> <laughs> I love that for you. You are amazing. Oh my god! But yes, that's that's how that happened. No, there's no tea. How was season four? Season four is interesting mm-hmm. because we started filming. Yes. The pandemic happened. We stopped filming. We did. Kevon left. Kevon did leave there. Kevon left. Mm-hmm. And then we picked up filming like months later. Like many, 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 many months yeah, later. I don't think we started back filming until It's almost the August. spring. No, it wasn't that it wasn't that far. When that fight happened. No, that was July. That was like July. That mm-hmm. was during the summer. But I wanna birthday. say I wanna say the last time we all have filmed something was like at least from what I can't remember, it was definitely like December, January. Like at least three, four months had gone yes. by. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of time had gone by. Yeah. We had stopped filming when they shut when they shut it down like end of February. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think our last time film was February. And then um Yeah, we started back like when did you have your Seafood thing, you to taste yes. them? It was definitely during the pandemic because I was scared. Yeah, that was like but this was like around June. This had to be like June. June yeah, July was. was when I had my when we had the, the brunch. Mm-hmm. What was your attitude coming back for season four? Attitude coming back for season four was let me actually show that I actually do something. Like mm-hmm. if I if I don't even if I don't have no event or anything like that, like I still want to show like personality. And that was when I actually did have my first event season four, which well not event but my first like little gathering, which was the Christmas party. Mm-hmm. Which birthed the iconic phrase "Move for it, Hammond." Yes, move for it, Hammond. Yes. <laughs> that the iconic phrase. Yes, that, that night was just like, okay, like girl, this is my mom. I remember getting ready in a, in the uh, in the thing and everything. Like I was like, okay, this is my this is my time. This is my moment. This is my first time. I just go to see where I live. Mm-hmm. This is my first time getting to like really be around them and them see like how I act in my environment. I had you know invited a couple of my friends too, so I was a little bit more comfortable. Mm-hmm. And yes, yeah, so. But yeah, that was my first thing. My first like personal Troy, mm-hmm. Troy curated this mm-hmm. thing. I had fun because yeah. I was ignoring Kendra. Kendra was in the corner like soaking. Like oh she, yeah, Kendra was definitely. I was the last. I was the last one to get there, mm-hmm. which I did on purpose. Yeah, I did on purpose. I did on purpose because I knew. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna say something mm-hmm. I've never said before. You getting this out of me? What's that? After season three, I realized. That me just being me bothered a lot of people on the cast, mm-hmm. right? That my mere presence alone would bother people. So I would, I would play into that. I would purposely some scenes. I would purposely show up late too. Like I would purposely, yeah, so that definitely bothered I would purposely, I would purposely be late because I was like, I want them all, all y'all, all y'all have have fun, enjoy the night, have mm-hmm. fun. <laughs> And let's just see what happens when I come into the room and I speak to everybody and I just and I begin to have fun. Let's see mm-hmm. what happens. And um and and t- to finish that thought, you know, with everybody, when it came to like battling, like getting into arguments with with all of y'all, I like I would I I won't say I study. I just took note into how all of y'all argue, mm-hmm. like how this person argue, what they do. Mm-hmm. And then I just noticed that everybody always get crunk. So that's why every time I got into argue with most, unless I wasn't like invested, I just got mm-hmm. real. Okay, mm-hmm. so exactly. so what happened? That pissed the girls off. Oh, girl, it was send them, send, send them. them. It was send, send, send. send me. And then cut to my green screen. This motherfucking hoe, like all this, all this. Yes. I had, I hadn't yes. already came up with a little formula in my head. So, anyways, we was having fun, and then I, now I, this I also did on purpose. I got there. Have fun. I remember getting in the kitchen. We was in the kitchen. I was mm-hmm. talking. I think Rico with a K was in there. I had to slap Travis by that time. Yeah, she was, was laughing because she was talking about Travis. Uh, Beijing. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. A terror. I remember us being out there playing a Family Feud game. Yeah. And then I remember like being there for like maybe 30, 45 minutes. I was like, all right. I'll see y'all later. I'm yes. I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave. Kendra had said something during the, um, remember during the Family Feud game. It was like, um, I said, I had forgot what, what question I asked and Kendra was like, something about a fake ass bitch. Mm-hmm. She said it so loud yes. and, and the room just got quiet and I was like, 
All right, right y'all. I'll see y'all, y'all later. Yeah, and that's when that's when all the shit started. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because in my brain, if y'all want to see from me, y'all, it's I want it to look like y'all came out here and got me. Y'all, yeah. y'all not gonna get me saying I came up here and fucked up this man party. Yeah. Yeah. If y'all if y'all want a scene from me tonight, y'all gonna have to come get this scene from and me. She came out there and got and it. And they came and got it. Yeah. She came, you know. She definitely came out there. Yeah. I was, I was like, girl, oh my God. That ain't your friend. You watch what I say. And then y'all get to fight in that season. That same, ain't that crazy? That you know, crazy. the one thing, and I hate to say this. I won't say I hate it, but it's probably not the nicest thing to say, but I just, I won't say, yeah, I'm going to say it. I'm going to be honest. I enjoyed the fact that all y'all was so team Kendra season four. Fuck all of the kids. Chill. All that. <laughs> and all y'all ended up fighting her. Look at that. Who all, who else like Kendra? Oh, 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 was about to get, oh, was about to, um, yeah, other people didn't get you fell out with Kendra. Kendra. Dominique fell out, yeah, Dominique fell out with Kendra. Rico with a K fell out with Kendra. That just we never got to that T to season five at the reunion. Yeah, I'ma say it. We never got to that T. Everybody had fell out with Rico with a K with season five. That's yeah. why that bitch ain't come back season six. But they, we ain't gonna talk about mm-hmm. that. Yeah, because everybody wanted wanted that Puerto Rican pop. <laughs> everybody had something to, to get with her when she came back. Uh huh. And Mama said, "No, ma'am, y'all, we not finna do <laughs> it." I'm in my, my, my soft life era, baby. Bitch, fuck y'all hoes. <laughs> Um, I was like, now look at them. All them was chilly this for Kendra, and now she done turned around and threw the football at y'all. Now everybody want to run. Football. Bitch. Ciao. Um, so let's go to, let's, let's talk about season four, the, the Passover. What's the Passover? Bitch, your party. <laughs> the Angry Brunch. Yes, the Angry Brunch. What did they call A Mad Tea Party. The Mad Tea Party. The Mad Tea Party. Yes, the Mad Tea Party. What do you remember about what was going on with the Mad Tea Party? Oh, I remember getting there. I remember us praying. I remember texting and Dario an hour before. And then and Dario Oh, <laughs> 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 <Ooh>, shit. <laughs> Girl, you, girl, you about to scare me, girl. girl. I got this shit down here. This thing rubbed up against me. I was like, girl, no, she don't got no rats in here. Uh-uh, girl, girl, we got to move go now. Go now, but no, um, yes, I remember telling Dario basically my tea about COVID and whatever, and I was just like, girl, and Dario was like, well, we still gonna have the thing, whatever. But I had not had, like I said, you I had still, caught COVID, right? Yes, but still to this day, on that Saturday, I didn't have any more symptoms. Y'all like, heard I, that? I had already had it for like five days. So, and all of us in the room filming. Right. And you know you're supposed to be... Could have killed all of us. 14 days. But, however, child, everybody still alive and nobody... I had to told the Dario, none of us knew. We just all of them eating lobster, eating biscuits, lobster and, and shit. Biscuits. No, and nobody actually got sick after that. So, thank God. But... What was that? That's my phone. Oh, uh-huh. But, um, so, yeah. And I remember just sitting there. And I remember when Kendra came in, it was just like this cloud came in with her. I... And I think Kendra always said, like, during that time, like, that was one of her worst times. She was going through a lot. But she came in. It was just, like, a dark cloud. Like, it was just, like, bitch, here we go. I just knew. I knew something was going to happen that day. Like, I knew it. Like, I just felt it in my bone that something was going to happen. And when we sat down and Kendra and you, when Kendra said, um, where was Lauren? When Lauren said, uh... <laughs> bitch, I forgot about that. When Lauren said that damn edible it was arrangement, that, it was that, it was that edible arrangement, I bitch. Said, oh, girl, yeah, it's gonna be up from here. So, girl, I'm telling her, I'm just like, oh, um, I mean, yeah, bitch. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I'm telling Lauren, I mean, I'm telling Kendra, I'm like, girl, just let it go, whatever case may have you, bitch, Kendra would not let it go. And then when he was like, see, I'm trying, you know, I'm trying to, when you try to calm everything down, the Kendra was like, see, this is what I be talking about. And because you was calm and you was like, why do you always do that? Acting like the victim. And when she said that, girl, that's when everything started popping off. So what I remember is leading up to that, Kendra and Wayne started posting stuff on social media about the power of three, mainly Lauren and... and yes, yeah, so because they was worried to see Lauren and Q at the event because the they event. thought... They were going to be there. Mm-hmm. Which, at this time, both of them were already gone. Yeah, I think Q was already going to L.A. Mm-hmm. And, cause, but Q was supposed to actually be there. Mm-hmm. Thing, but he Lauren, too. It, Lauren, too. Lauren, too. And Lauren said she was going to catch her And so, I remember... So, so I remember coming there, and I'm like, okay, well, my crew ain't here. So, mm-hmm. I'm really walking into this by myself, mm-hmm. right? And I already know what Kendra gives. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean... 
she did she she did the same thing all the way up until season six. Mm -hmm. She got a problem with you. She gonna be mad until she see it. She gonna blow up in the scene, mm -hmm. and then she gonna resolve it. You know, and then she, it's gonna be going. Yeah, forward. and then, mm -hmm. you, then you know she gonna be she gonna be back to normal. I mean, girl, she did it with me. She did it with she did it with you. She did right. it with Dom, she did it with every, everybody. She, she Kendra Allen, I love you, girl, but she literally do the same yeah. thing. Um, and I remember coming up and and I remember telling this bitch. I told him, I said, Troy. If Kendra get up and try to fight me, don't do anything. Let her hit me because I knew the bitch was still on probation. Yeah. I said, I'm sending that bitch back to jail today. And you did say that. Didn't I say that? Said that. I said, when that bitch get up, do not, you don't do nothing. You stay right there because as soon as she hit me, I'm sending her back to jail. He said, okay. I said, okay. We having a party, we eating, we doing stuff. Da 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 da. Kendra gets crumped. You know, which at the time, I'm just gonna be honest, cause the bitch ain't like me. Yeah. Which cause at and then which she admitted to when I just interviewed her. Me and her had talked before the same way you and me, you and I talked, mm -hmm. me and her talked before season four. Squash yeah. everything, everything was done. Yeah. So when Freela Kendra and all this shit came out and she knows mm -hmm. she's no longer answering my phone calls, because remember mm -hmm. she was come, she was supposed to come perform at the eye lounge. Yeah, she, she, didn't was, show yeah, up. she didn't show up. I yeah. didn't know. I'm like, like Okay, and I remember you said she called you and was like she couldn't make it. Yeah, and, and she told me she couldn't make it, but it mm -hmm. wasn't like a I I can't make it because I ain't fucking with you. It was just like hey, I can't make it. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. girl, I'll see you soon. Yeah. So when Free Look Kendra, all that shit came out, I wasn't gonna give it no energy because to me it just read, oh girl, you just doing this for the show. Because mm -hmm. before the camera started rolling, everything was okay, and then mm -hmm. for some reason everything has changed. Um, and so bitch, I don't care how long it takes to get the op back. You know what I'm saying? So in my brain. Yeah. In my brain, I want this bitch to do what she what she do, get mm -hmm. crunk. And mm -hmm. if you really bought it about it today, assault me, bitch. And I'm finna send your ass back mm -hmm. today. Today. My phone and I had two phones, one recording the whole thing. I had baby, that's when I had just got two phones. I had one phone recording everything that was going on. Like one phone I had turned on and had just dropped down in my bag to record it. And I probably still got the audio still bitch, to this I'm day. Gagging. Oh bitch, I was finna do her. Just... Oh, I was finna do her. I was finna do. I, I was finna do Miss Kendra. Damn. Cause girl, if you gonna do all this, oh yes, man. Come on, let's do it. The what fucked up the whole plan is because I know Georgia law when it comes to fighting. Everybody go to jail if you fight. Mm -hmm. I knew if I called the police, he was gonna go to jail. Cause this bitch went to the trunk <laughs> and popped the trunk and got my tripod. I like, girl, no. I told Devron. I said Devron, and my best friend know me. If and Daria them would have not been rolling those cameras, that my glass of apple juice that I had, that bottle that I put in that car, and when Rico Rico grabbed it from me, it was going. It would have been right in the windshield. Like it wouldn't. It wouldn't have been no. When I, I was ready to give them real, like, until <laughs> until Dario came over with no cameras. That they was gonna get real for the hmm. <laughs> Like I was gonna give them rundown. Oh, let me show. Let me show y'all what is. I know you from the Champaign, Tennessee, all the way to the A. Look, Atlanta, Georgia. That's where Wayne the Paint. Yeah, but I was gonna show you where Wayne the Paint found you and show you where I came from. Cause girl, I was gonna bust the window. Like girl, I was ready to fight. So, like I was ready. I was like, girl, but these cameras is on. And at the time, I think I was already going downstairs when they when she threw the chair at my best friend. I was coming back in the inside. You so didn't. I, I didn't you, see you, didn't you didn't see her pick up the chair. I didn't see her pick up the chair. I didn't see that part. I remember Kendra getting up. She she Kendra did something. They took her away because they had already took me outside. Cameron was already walking me down the steps. They took Kendra away and then they brought her back. And then she sat down, we was going on, and she got up and she threw a bowl, and Dario flicked it. And I just remember you coming around. You came, you you came around. When she threw the bowl, and I had grabbed to, grabbed it out of her hand the first time. Yeah, but the mm -hmm. second time when she threw it, and Dario hit it. Mm -hmm. The last time that you I grabbed my hand and see, and I just threw it. You threw it. You threw it towards her. Yeah. You didn't even throw my drink at her. That's no. what started the fight. Yes, the last time I threw my drink, <laughs> girl, it was so much going on. I literally grabbed my plastic cup. I had about this much Hennessy in there. Because on my profile picture bef before, during the season, I had that as my, um, <laughs> my profile picture on Facebook and Instagram of me with my Hennessy in my hand like this. Because literally right after that, Cameron was like standing next to me, telling me to calm down. 
I let it through my cup. Soon as she, soon as she threw the, yo, threw, tried to throw the thing at you the last, well, she threw whatever she threw at you the last time. I let it just grab my cup and said, mm. "Did you hit her?" I think I did. I think that's why Wayne got up. But I think she didn't know where it came from. So Wayne got up. That's when Wayne ran around the corner, around the table, and that's when I got up. And me and Wayne started fighting. Well, Wayne was like, she was trying to ask Wayne what was going on. That's when me and Wayne started fighting. And then my best friend came out. That's when Kendra started fighting. Then I had Kendra. I never forget I had Kendra hair that red wig. <laughs> now, Troy, in my hand, girl, that was too much. Now, from the angle <laughs> in which I was looking at, mm-hmm. you you had her, like, yeah. in that little corner. All yeah. y'all was in that corner. You, Rico, all y'all was just yeah. in that little corner. I was, I was, I had Kendra in the corner. That's why I was like, girl, it was no shade. Like, Wayne might have, and still to this day, and maybe I didn't feel the leak, but Wayne may have hit me at the beginning, but I'm telling y'all, in that corner, oh girl, it was a wrap. We was, we was, and I was backed up. Once, let me tell y'all, if I'm backed up against the wall, bitch, I gotta get out the wall. I, I gotta get out, so that's, and I'm claustrophobic, like real life claustrophobic. So it's like, if I'm in a tight space, I'm gonna do anything I can to get out of that tight space. And bitch, they had me backed into that corner, it was just like, bitch, I gotta get out of here. Y'all went outside, y'all was cussing, bitch. Talk about you grabbing this tripod. What were you gonna do with the tripod? Them bitches is gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> you bitches are gonna die. That was my motto, bitch. I was ready. When I tell you, when I seen that hoe come across them, them things, they were trying to stop her from coming over there and they was getting in them tracks. I'm like, okay, yeah, girl, let them let them come over here on wanna fight again, bitch. I'm finna just start swinging this tripod, bitch. I, first person I was gonna hit was Wayne. Bitch, I wouldn't even stuck kitchen no more, bitch. I just wanted to just hit him one good time. I just want to just slang in. One of my favorite memories from that scene, I can't quote it right now, but it's Wayne cussing you out, but like from all oh, the way over there. He was like, he was like I told you, I told you twice, he was fake, he was phony, and he didn't deserve to be on this season. He was <laughs> fake, he was phony, <laughs> and he didn't deserve to be, bitch, that shit was <laughs> funny to me. Child, when I seen that shit, I was like, bitch, not Wayne gonna say I don't deserve to be on the season, but bitch, you deserve to do that too. You deserve to be bad, but I don't. Girl, I was so pissed when I seen that one. When I heard him say that, girl, I was so pissed. I had to lay him and Kendra out outside. I hate to say it like this, it's gonna sound real ugly, so I'm gonna try to clean up just a little bit. On Chasing Atlanta, Wayne worked better as a plus one to Kendra versus being his own his own standalone yes. cast member. Mm-hmm. Cause Wayne, when Wayne, when Wayne would pop up in scenes and do shit. That shit used to be funny. funny. Like it used to be like, bitch, go ahead, girl. Why? You everybody used to be like, girl, where did you come from? And why are you here? Why are you here? But that shit used to be so it's funny. So funny. Um so the fight happens. Mm-hmm. What happened between you and I after that? Because I felt like you was upset with me that so, I didn't fight with you. After I told you, bitch, I'm not fighting, I want to send this hoe to jail. Yes, I know you wanted to send her to jail. And I think at the time, me being Growing and being immature and just thinking about where I was from and how I would have handled the situation. But I have to re- I had to realize, too, that I inserted myself in the situation because I was upset about it being my party and it was supposed to be about me. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I feel like that spotlight was taken off of me at the time mm-hmm. because it was just like, bitch, I put this in together. I don't help pay for this... Um, Little thing, I got the food and all this stuff. Whatever, can snap you. We, we done did all that. Y'all done paid y'all money, and we can't even get it together because you acting like this. So I think in that moment, I was just like, bitch. And on top of that, when she threw that last bowl at you, I was just like, oh, bitch, girl. And I, at, at the time, I was like, I feel like you knew Oliver not gonna fight. So, bitch, let me just let me just jump in, bitch. Let me just let me jump in here. And I feel like when we started fighting, and you didn't jump in or assist and I think when I seen the video and you was grabbing your stuff like leaving and then I think me and you didn't connect until we was outside or you didn't you didn't grab me to come on until we was outside I felt like you had just left me there and I don't know my best friend was there I felt like you know you were the person that especially after us you know reconciling and like being back close mm-hmm. how we was I felt I'm not gonna say betrayed but I feel like you know I wanted my friend to like have my back in that moment and I mm-hmm. feel like you didn't, but then now looking back on it, I realized like I said I put myself in that position, and you had already told me what you were not gonna do. So it's just like why would I want you to jump in when it's already when you had already basically said like you want to just go ahead and send her <laughs> send her out. Yeah, I yeah. want I wanted to send her on. Yeah. Um. 
You know what? And honestly, back then, and, and now that I'm thinking about it, remember I was, remember I was filming We TV at the time, and that's when I had started making money. That's when I, that's when I had just got my Sephora brand deal. Mm, yeah, like I had started getting like real mm. money from my social media. So I'm like, bitch, the last thing I need right now is footage of me hitting this trans woman during mm. this time where trans women are dying in America. Right. And they take all my shit away, you right. know, fucking around with these chasing Atlanta girls. Right. And so that's why I was like, I can't fight her. You know, clearly y'all know now, but it's not that I don't, I can't fight. Right. It's not that she can't fight. It's just all of her, Eddie going to fight. All of her twigs with this gray patch and the lenses glasses, he got the yeah, word, right, you know. Right, right. So Eddie going to try to protect all of her in those mm-hmm. spaces, especially when cameras are rolling where people can see this and make judgments off of it. I'm always trying to protect this yes, because right. this is what makes all the this money, possible, right. Right? right? And so I just didn't think me fighting Kendra was going to help me in any way. I felt like it was going to give me more, more problems, problems than right. anything else. So that's right. why, that's why I had that preliminary conversation. If she do this, don't do nothing because right. I already know production of them gonna stop her. Like people right. gonna stop her. Don't don't fight her. Don't do none of that. I'm finna white woman this bitch today. Right. right. The plan failed. It ended up not happening. It failed miserably because um. um I regret they got out of Steve. What do you remember about season four for you? For me, season four, I think... Because it seemed... No, that's season five. Yeah, but season yeah. five. I, but I think season four, my pivotal moment in season four was... Um, was definitely the brunch. But I feel like me and Lauren making up at the... When we all had our conversation at your Sephora shoot. Mm, y'all made up there. Yeah, we made up there. And oh, that, beautiful. That was me. That was when you brought her dead atop. And that's when I walked in, I was like, and when she walked in, I was like, oh, this Lauren, I thought it was Kevin Shield. Because that's when she had first got her, um... That's when she, yes. Yes, yeah, she was, you know, she was not mm-hmm. getting into herself, getting into becoming the girl. Uh-huh. And, uh, yeah, she, I think Memories. she just got her first, her first little body done, her little, um, procedure in season four. And we'll call it that. Okay. She had BBL in season four? I don't... Going into season listen, four? Listen, you know, I'm, I can only tell the truth. I don't know if she had got nothing cut open. Oh. Now she may have had something, you know. She may have had things, mm-hmm. but I don't think it was the surgery. I think oh. that didn't come until after season four, where she had the surgery. Oh, I thought she had lipo. Don't I heard you lie about your lipo. Go to the next thing now. I heard you fuck your best friend. I heard you the type dog, Bigfoot. Hope <laughs> the things you the lie. things you've lied about. Even as it pertains to your mother. But that is funny. You don't want them. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) It was the ho. Ho. (laughs) The things you've lied about. The things you've lied about. (laughs) Like, Nikki, why do you know the truth? Why do you know what happened? Even pertaining to your mom. As it pertains to your mother. (laughs) You don't want them. Like I said, you don't want to Jesus. Out. You didn't want to um, anyway, So yeah. you and Lauren make up season mm-hmm. four. Season four ends on a great note. A great note. I think the reunion was beautiful. The reunion was beautiful. I feel mm-hmm. like we we cried at the reunion. We cried, yeah. We cried. We let I think at that reunion, that set the tone going to season five, but that set the tone for chasing reality. I feel like season four. It did. It set the tone for chasing reality because I feel like that was our first time being able to kind of be one, but also we realize in that moment, we all got issues. Mm-hmm. We all be dealing with some of the same stuff. Mm-hmm. We all are dealing with parent issues, debts, friends, you know, whatever case may have you. And it's just like, none of us are different in a sense. Like, and I feel like if we, I think we realize we can lean on each other more and bond more on the things we have going on versus fighting each other. And I think... Leave it season four. I think I think even me and Dominique end up having a conversation with Travis behind the scenes after season four reunion to make up. What was the theme for season four? What was the dress code? Because I'm looking at what everybody had on. What was our dress code? Cameron had on yellow. Somebody had on blue. Yes, the, the member day. Um, member in the event space, it was those colors in the little boards. Oh. And so our daughter said, these are the color palettes. Uh, anybody, y'all can wear any of these colors. Oh, mm-hmm. that's what it was. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think what helped the season four reunion be successful was, uh, were two things. One, mm-hmm. Kendra and I were no longer arguing. Mm-hmm. Like, we had, uh, we had made up. Yeah. We were, we were fine. 
And I also think what was even greater than that was Lauren was on her best behavior. So maybe maybe because she knew that was she was about to say she was leaving. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I just remember Lauren just being so nice that day. She was so she nice. She was so nice. She, I told her she was in a different light that day. She like, was she in was, a, She was mm-hmm. so just like. I don't know, like she, you could tell, like she was grown, like bitch. And I she was like, ready to move forward mm-hmm. and move on. And I feel like she knew, like bitch, at that moment, like bitch, I'm the queen. Mm-hmm. I ain't really gotta do too much today, bitch. I'm gonna, I'm leaving, bitch. Let me just let the girls mm-hmm. have their moment. I'm gonna tell my truth. I'm gonna tell my truth to y'all too, and bitch, I'm gonna move on. Yeah. And I feel like that's what she did. Yeah. Season four reunion was very beautiful. It was very good. And we I was- had our first performance. Uh huh. Lauren, Lauren uh-huh. Had performance. Yes, it was kind. It was cute. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like season four was a soft reboot, restart yes. for Chasing. Lauren was gone. Q was gone. Mm-hmm. Um, was I, I honestly think what got Travis kicked out was the fact that he that he got into it with um. Now this is what I believe. Now I can't remember what I was told. We got to a man. Um, yes, and, and y'all and y'all didn't resolve and y'all didn't resolve it. We didn't resolve it. Y'all and, didn't. And I, I really think, felt like it was Travis's fault, honestly, because he wouldn't say who I'm he was cancer. talking about. He wasn't. He wouldn't say who he yeah, was talking at, about. At the last but thing, clearly, it's yeah. only you was talking about. He was talking about Dominique. It was either me or you was talking about Dominique because yeah, I was the only. It was me and Dominique, the only ones with known boyfriends at the time, time on the mm-hmm. show. So it was either you talking about me or Dominique. You definitely not talking about, about me. Right. So just say you talking about Dominique. Yeah, he wouldn't say that. Then he wouldn't say it. Reunion. He still wouldn't say it. And I think when he brought up talking to Dario that he was gonna do legal action between me and Dominique. He died. I think you know it. That's what I don't live. When, yeah, when it comes to doing lawyers and all that, I'd be like, girl, don't need right now. He's to my brand. Bye. You gotta go. I think that's really what got him shipped out of here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I feel like season four literally was a relaunch. Season five, bitch, the season best five, season ever. She set the tone. Season, season five of Chase Atlanta is the best season. The best season of Chasing Atlanta. Ever. The best season of any web reality show, honestly, I'll go ahead and say yeah. that. Yeah, we'll say that. Yeah, I will. From the views to the content to the scenes, the to looks, the storyline, the looks, green screen. I feel green like screens. everybody came on there. Shit. The new cast members the new came cast in, activated. activated. The old ones was activated. Who was the new in season th- four? Five, four? Let me five. five. Willa, seven. Seven. Jay. Jay. And Aaron. Aaron and Ike. Oh, Ike, yes. Yeah. It was five new hosts season yeah. five. There was a lot of bitches season Ike, five. Yeah. Um, Lauren was gone, so like that dynamic was no Lauren longer was there. And let me tell you, I, I honestly, I love it. I was scared. No shit. Really? Yeah, I was like, bitch, Lauren gone, Q gone. The girls was, re- I felt like at the time, the girls were really watching the show for them. Mm-hmm. You and felt then, that and, way. And I feel like you, and I, of course, like you too, because I feel like the, at the time of Power 3, and then I feel like at the end of season four, when everybody said they were leaving, and yes, we had them build some kind of rapport with the, with, you know, the supporters, but it was just like, I'm like, damn, we gonna have a flop season. And bitch, when we started filming, even before the show aired, I was like, oh no, girl, this is a good season. Oh, bitch, season five was never going to be a flop because I was going to make sure it wasn't. That's why all of season five, I was in everybody business because I'm yeah. like, it's not it's, it's not going to be a flop, yeah. you know? Yeah, it I, was sickening. I kind of felt like even though, okay, now even though there's mm. no, I don't believe in this. Oh, Rico Castanon. We forget Rico Castanon. It was oh, yeah, six it was, new hoes season six, five. Yeah, Damn. It was, 13, it was 13 people on the cast. Which was five. bananas. Yes. Do you know why it was 13 hoes on the cast Mm-mm. on season five? Mm-mm. No, I don't why. Ooh, and Dario, don't be mad at me, okay? You, baby, you know I love you. Call me. Listen, why was so many people on season five? At least this is what was told to me. Oliver, you shoot too many scenes, and the other people don't shoot enough, mm-hmm. so it comes off like this is your show. Mm-hmm. We gotta add more people right. to offset. I can see that because nobody was doing nothing. To the, the yes. Other yeah. But at least that's what was told to me on yeah. why there was so many people season five. Yeah, because we needed they needed more scenes to not make it look like it was just the no show purpose. was just focusing on Oliver. Yeah. You know? Because yeah. season three, season four, even when I look back, I'm like, damn, it's back to back to back to back to back to back to yeah. fuck. Uh, which I honestly appreciated because yeah. I used to hate when people used to be like, oh, Oliver trying to take over the show. Bitch, I ain't trying to do nothing. I'm showing up to yeah. work just like everybody, everybody else. else. Right. Yeah, bitch. Yeah. I ain't having no secret meetings to right. be no shit. I never wanted to be a star of this shit because whoever the star get the most hate, I just right. wanted to come get my gots and take my and black ass home. home. Right. Yeah. And I think, yeah, season five was a lot of bitches. Yeah, it was a lot of bitches. Um, but I was going to make sure season five was going to be a yeah. season. 
Season five was. I feel like everybody came out the gate like, bitch, mm-hmm. let's work. Mm-hmm. Everybody, yes. Everybody worked. I feel like. Because it know, was supposed to be the last season. Yeah. Season five was supposed to be the end. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, and Daria should have cut it right Season now. five was, was, was originally supposed to be the end. You should have cut it. Because that was it. I was like, because you're a um, cat. Mm-hmm. But yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about season five. Um, should we go to one more commercial break? Commercial Let's break. do another commercial break. break. I got the P two. Listen, y'all, y'all are here. Sure, you got almost three hundred people here watching oh, you. Hey, y'all, what's going on? Thank y'all for tuning in. <laughs> this girl, all of it got me out of the house. It's late night. See. Yeah, we talking about it. Let's talk about it. Yeah, yeah. listen, y'all are here with me and my friend Troy. Y'all are in the mix. Don't go nowhere because we got more coming up after this. Stay right tuned. Back. Okay, baby. Which one we gonna play? That's Chasing right. the beat is back, baby, and you do not want to miss this. So gather around your screens as some of your faves come together to showcase their artistic gifts and creations. Created by Oliver Twist, this celebration of queer creativity is one for the book. So tune in to see show-stopping performances from artists like T.S. Lil' Kendra, Lyric London, Tremaine Terrell, Conca Garcon and J.J. Jones, Fly King I and Andre, T.C. and Astro, Ilwin, Rico Casadine, Oliver Twix, and so many more. Plus, a whole lot of extra special guests stopping by. Chasing the Beat is back, baby, and you do not want to miss this. Only on the Chasing Reality YouTube channel. See you there. What's up, everyone? It is Darius asking you to check out my newest children's book, DJ Stands on Business. Follow along as five friends who are entrepreneurs by the name of Pixel, Raven, a dynamic duo we can learn, and a children's book author named DJ use their entrepreneurial spirit to save money to go on a trip to Mexico. So follow along as children can learn about terms that teach them about entrepreneurship and give them the opportunity to open up the world in the adventures of friendship, and entrepreneurship. You can check out my children's book, DJ Stands on Business, as well as DJ's favorite day and Twinkle Little Star at www.kingdariusbooks.com. Y'all, we are back here with In the Mix with Twinks. We got my boy, Touched by Tag. He can call me his boy, bitch. I ain't that Okay. No. Girl. He no. Girl like no. But you be giving a girl. You be giving a boy sometimes. I'm giving a boy right now. Yeah, you give a boy right now. I yeah. am that girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about season five. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm I'm gonna hand it over to you. Oh, open us up about season five. Season five. Season five started out with me doing for me. I think the first thing was me doing my like the little networking mixer. Mm-hmm. And at the networking mixer, this is when I feel like. Everything that, and it's so funny how season five worked because it was like there were actually things that happened in my life with some of the mm-hmm. was like Cameron and other people before season five started. So it was just like, okay, girl, <coughs> this, I'm, I'm really about to, I'm really going now, outside of me trying to do events or have events, I'm going to actually have more of a storyline to talk about too because it's like actual things that really have happened. Mm-hmm. But season five, when we started in, at my uh, networking event, me, Dominique, and Rico, and you weren't, I think you were filming, you said you were filming the um, circle at the time. I was filming the circle. Yeah, you were filming the circle, and um, season five came about, and um, yeah, we did the networking mixer, and that night I feel like. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but yes, at the thing, I feel like. Everybody knew that there was going to be something between me, Dominique, and Rico. We already knew, like... Because we all we, had heard about it. Yeah, I had heard about it. Everybody had already heard about it. So, it's like, when Cameron get here, we already know it's going to be something. Like, there's going to be a conversation had. And I think, too, I didn't know Jay. Or, well, Jay said I met him at Cameron's scene before. But I, I didn't rec- recall remembering Jay. So, when Jay was there, and then him and Cameron talking, and then Jay was in the room, and then Dominique and Cameron went outside to talk, it was just too much going on that night. And I was drunk. Because Thursday was whipping up the drinks left and right. So, it was just like, girl, listen, I'm already here, girl. Do not take me there. Mm-hmm. And I think the opening to me coming on the show for season five was, like, exactly what <laughs> I needed to be. I do remember Dominique's. I think my opening was Dominique's photo shoot. Mm-hmm. And that's when I told him that I want to have a networking mixer or whatever. And when Cameron was like, um, oh, this was a networking mixer, but it ain't nobody here networking. And it was just like, Cameron... Girl, 
I bought other people amongst like our peers. You want? I don't know if you thought it was gonna be like big name celebrities, but I bought our peer system that can help us create content amongst ourselves so that we can like level up together. Mm-hmm. And Kim, it was like a lot, but I think that my intro to season five was like everything because I started out doing something with Dominique, but I was showing that we were still cool. But I also had like my first own event in a real nice space, mm-hmm. you know, whatever cares to have you in. Yeah, but I thought like season five was like the start of something like really, really good. Yeah, I agree. I remember, um, hopefully y'all, ooh, hopefully y'all heard that. Shit, I didn't realize the shit was all the way over there. I mean, but it picks up. Um, I remember coming back, getting ready to come back for season five. I had already knew I was going to go film the circle, and I knew I was. Mm. I didn't know real, honestly when I was going to be back for mm. season five because they potentially could have helped me to film another season. Mm. Um, that was in my contract, so I was like, I really don't know. Like, I really don't know what's going on. Um, but I just remember. I remember for me, I remember feeling like, okay, since Lauren is officially gone, mm. and I'll be real. This whole Lauren Queen B shit, I mm-hmm. honestly feel like that went out the door season three when all the new people came in. Mm-hmm. Honestly. Mm-hmm. Like, was Lauren still like the the it girl, the like, it girl on the show? Before, yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. But I feel like in terms of her being like the center or the nucleus, I, I think, feel like that was gone. Yeah, I think I think you and Kendra had to that's why they did. I would agree. Mm-hmm. But season three onward was yeah. Oliver and Kendra. Yeah. Um. Well, season four. Yeah. Was Oliver and Kendra three? Um, three and four was Oliver and Kendra. Yeah. And I just remember coming back when I getting ready to come back for season five. I knew I was going to film the circle. Mm-hmm. Um, which to me was like the biggest thing ever. Like I was really excited. I didn't know what that was going to look like. Right. And I just remember, of course, and Dario had shared with me he wanted it to be the last season. So I just remember thinking like, okay, one. With all these new people coming in, it's the last season. There, it, somebody's gonna have to hold this down. Right. You like somebody's gonna have to make sure the group moves forward right. through everything. Cause right. like we don't we don't need to stay stagnant and stuff. We need group scenes. We need we need we need that constant reminder to like let's do this together. Yeah. Which was a role that I just took on. I was yeah. like, you know what? Like I I feel like I have the respect of the of the group and mm-hmm. the whip production to kind of like. You know, assist in. Okay, let's all do this together. Yeah. Let's all go here. Let's yeah. let's shoot this together. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. Okay, I'll do this for everybody. Whatever, whatever. Right. And then I also wanted to set up my own career with. If this is the last season of Chasing Atlanta, I need to show every a- aspect of myself. I need mm-hmm. to show my music. I need to show me creating content. I need to show me. Um, I need to show me cur- working with celebrities. I need right. to show me selling. I need to show me doing everything. everything right. Um. Yeah, I didn't expect to really be in any drama because me and Kendra was cool. Me, you were you, good. I was cool. Yeah. I was cool with everybody. Yeah. Um, so I didn't really expect to be in, in any drama, and I really did not expect to really like be fr- like be close friends with the new cast, right. just because you know. Yeah. You know, uh, we, we already had everybody had already had their report. Everybody okay. already had their yeah. di- their, their, um, dynamics. their dynamics. So, um, I know I did enter into season five thinking like. Okay, Oliver. If a scene is going boring, you gonna have to. You gonna have to. Mm-hmm. You gonna have to get up wake and. Up. You gonna have to wake it up. You gonna have to do yeah. something because you know you got these new people who may not know who you know. And Dario and them don't be really directing us and be yeah. like, do this, do this, say this, say this. Yeah. Unless it's something like he he just want to talk about. about. Right. He'll tell somebody to come. You know, bring this up or whatever, yeah. whatever. Which was season five. I was the resident. Oliver, bring this up. Yeah, yeah girl, I don't give a fuck. Come on. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do. It. I don't give a fuck. Um. Yeah, I was excited about season five. Yeah, I was I was very that. happy about season five. I'm still happy about season five. Yeah. I feel like season five is our best season. Um, Hell, when we was in the mansion and Buckhead rented out, I mm-hmm. said, oh, girl, oh, we stepped our coins out. Yeah. We had stepped our Jay got that mansion. Jay mm-hmm. got that mansion like a, from a friend or something like mm-hmm. that. And then I was like, okay, well, you got the mansion. I'll provide all the... Other you know, things. yeah, the stuff, the food, yeah. the the little service and stuff like that. Let's make it real cute, which I thought it was really yeah, cute. It was, it was really cute, really fun. That yeah, it only was a lot of fun. Had yeah, it was a lot of fun. Oh, uh, what came first, us at the golf course or when? Season five, when you mean Kitchen went to the golf course. Is this before? Is this before the cabins or after the cabins? This is it's before, before the, the cabins. cabins. Mm-hmm. Cause, Cause I told y'all, I think I told y'all that night that I wanted to go to the cabins. Why was we into it that night? Was, was that our first time that season getting into it? That was our first time in the season getting into it. But only reason why, because I brought up that Dominique said, did you know, he wondered if you knew that 
Rico Cass and I had brought the mates with him to the event, to my um, awareness event. Mm. And when he makes everybody, I think he said that, oh, he was going to make everybody. And you was like, oh, yeah, well, make that hoe. Let me see you make that hoe if you're going to make some. What and this person said, you don't leave your homie out to get jumped, Oliver. That's nasty word. Who I let get jumped? Who I let get jumped? Was she talking about me on season four? I mean, we passed that. Show. Yeah, we baby, we passed it. You got to catch up. Yeah, this whole this whole already said she was a, she was she 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 was she was not following yeah, the protocols. Was not. <laughs> that was not the plan we had agreed on <laughs> for said reasons, you know. Okay, for said reasons. Yeah, but um, but yeah, season um, what was that? What was talking about? Side note, you see, you see, and it's it's these type of comments that that's helped me develop the type of mindset I have when it comes to me being in media. Mm-hmm. That like all of it just do a good job because people still gonna say crazy stuff. Now Troy just sat here and admitted to that me and him talked about you everything. know everything, and the right. people gonna say all of you still you let him get drunk when the man the man just sat here and said yeah. it wasn't even nothing like that. Yeah. yeah, bro. Um, but going back to season we love five, you too. yeah, no, we love you, baby. But I'm just saying it'd be comments like that, you know. Uh-huh. Um. Going back to season five, mm-hmm. you brought up the maze. Yes, I brought up the maze. And that, that had, I think that had that, made me upset. That fixed you out because you was like, you think I knew somebody was going to come with a weapon? And I was like, oh, girl, I didn't want to be all this. Like, I just want to have a conversation. But I think. I was offended. Yes, you were offended. I was highly offended. You were hot. You were hot with me. And I didn't, I didn't want it to come off like that because I really was just genuinely asking because Dominique asked, you know, did you think Oliver knew? And I was like, well, I, if, I know you don't want to bring it up to him. So, like. I asked him on your behalf because we all going out together. I was like, I know me, him, and all of, I mean, me, him, and Kendra are supposed to be filming the scene. So I'm like, let me just, <laughs> you know, I'm like, let me, I'm like, let me, let me ask the question. I'll ask the question while I'm there. Like, girl, we in a, we in a good space. I feel like I can do that. You know, I know you weren't in like that best of space with all the girls at the time. I had fallen out with nobody. Yeah, you had to fall out with nobody, but I think there was like them girls be having problems with me. I don't be knowing, you know. These girls be having problems with me, baby. I don't be knowing yeah. until I until I know. I'm like, yeah. oh, we have yeah. a problem. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I I wanted to ask on Dominique's behalf because I was just like, you know, I know we had talked about it. And I just wanted to see, like, you know, did you know because or whatever case may have because Dominique wasn't mad. He just wanted to know, like, you know, did Oliver know that he had a mason? Why would he tell me? And you know what? In hindsight, I Based probably what you said. I exactly. probably was triggered because as as y'all, as y'all been watching me doing these interviews, you've heard many people. Uh, y'all, y'all heard many people dispel many things that I've been blamed for, right? Y'all mm-hmm. heard them say it live here. Y'all done heard Kendra say it. Y'all done heard Kendra vindicate me. Y'all done heard Devon vindicate me. Y'all done heard Reese G. All these people say, all, you know, this this is what happened. Mm-hmm. I think by that time I was so triggered if it was like, because I had my, my experience at that time had been, I just kept getting blamed blame for shit that I really did not have nothing to, to do with, with right. you know? And so I'm just like, Girl, this is a whole nother thing now where I'm literally telling this boy not to fight and I'm trying right. to stop him from fighting. Right. And Dominique, first of all, you don't watch your ass over here and yeah. confronted this boy. So whatever the fuck he had, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> whatever he had underneath that coat, bitch, you brought it yourself because ain't nobody putting no batteries. And like Kendra said, I don't know who put them batteries in Dominique. Dominique's and, no, not in me. Me, me, But they better take him out. Take him out. Take him out. Take him out. Take and I was just like, how did I become, res- like, first of all, one, this is another thing I feel like I'm being blamed for. And then two, I would never in no way, shape, or form, even if I don't like your fucking ass, mm-hmm. allow anybody knowingly to, like, enter to something with an intention to hurt, to hurt somebody. Right. You know, like, because we, like, we all somebody's son. We all people in, you, don't nobody need to be losing their life or getting hurt right. over chasing Foolish, Atlanta. Right. You, yeah, like, I just, I felt, I, I was really offended. Yeah. Well, I apologize because... At the time, I really, no, I wasn't trying to offend you. It was, mm-hmm. you know, it was really just me, like, trying to see, like, girl, did you know? Because I don't want to go to the cabin and all this be a thing. Mm-hmm. So, I, I, don't, I think I told Dominique what what happened. I think that's why Dominique said it again in the cabins. But I just wanted you to know, like, bitch, you want none of that. It was, it was really no tea. It was just me just trying to, like... Keep the storyboard moving, but I wanted to like you know have him. <laughs> hey girl, oh you was producing? Yes, hey girl, you, you hung up on me. I said, oh bitch, this too much, and I was already going through a lot in mm-hmm. my life at the time, and I was just like, you know what, bitch, I'm just gonna get up and go. What also, that was my first scene walking out. What also gets? I don't know if it gets said or skipped over, y'all. That day, I was sick. Yes, he was sick. When I tell you, I was sick. When this bitch. Asked that lady for some hot tea and lemon at the damn top golf. I said, oh, girl, yeah, she's really sick. 
I had been, we had been working hard on Fox Soul. Even though I loved working on the, on Turns Out with T.S. Madison, um, mainly because of the money, bitch. Mm-hmm. That money was the tea. Mm-hmm. Um, but because it was such a boutique show and a small production, I was editing. I was executive producing. Mm-hmm. So, like, my role was... My role was basically being the, the liaison between what was going on here in Atlanta and talking to the network because I was the one who had to edit and pass off the show. Right. Me passing off the show was how we got paid. Yeah. So, bitch, Madison Hill could have been cute. The show could have been a tea. Production could have went amazing. If all of it didn't turn in a final product at the time, right. which was none of us was getting paid. Right. And it just used to be a whole back and forth. It took a lot of energy out of me. And I don't know what happened that morning, but I woke up and it was, I'm just going to say it was, it was both ends were activated yeah, at the same me. time. And I, I just was like, me. and I told Andaria and Dario was like, from what I can remember, he was like, no, you got to come. You got to get, he did. He, he was like, no, come. he was like, no, you got, I'm like, bitch, I'm literally dying. Like I'm literally, yeah. he said, you, you got to come. I he mean, was like, I you got to come. I was like, okay, well girl, I'm coming like this. I'm coming with this late, bitch. Yeah, your big ass thing. It was, yeah. 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 Um, <coughs> yeah, my, the favorite thing I remember about that night was me talking to those white men. <laughs> that was fun. Girl, I was gagging. I, I actually had gagged today because I was like, girl, can you hear my sugar daddy out here, girl? As long as you, Tell them to run me some of the money to assist me. I mean, I saw them kept looking at me, so I just struck up conversation and I just acted like a damsel. I was like, "Can you come help me? Yeah. Show me this." Let and, me... He, and him trying to show, and it was so funny that he was trying to show you, but them be the men that don't even. And I, the fact that he was doing it in public was what was really gagging. Yeah, me. I think I had saw they watch. I can't remember what, what watches they were, but from when, I, when I saw the watch, they had an automatic gown. They did. Mm-hmm. Well, I saw them watches, and, and it I, wasn't. And it wasn't the. And I remember the watch. It wasn't the um, silver band. It was. The leather band and it had Yeah, the the watches was a T mm-hmm. and baby I I was healed. I yeah. became I became healed for that mm-hmm. moment. Cause I said, baby, I mean let me move That's how I made my money at work. I don't even be looking at people outfit. I look at what watch they got on. Yeah. They got on a nice watch and they just bummed out. But if you got on a two hundred fifty thousand dollar watch, girl, you got some coins. Yeah, you got some money. I'm spending that money. And I was baby. like, Well, you know, let me let me see if I can get a little bit out of let me see what I can do. You know, bitch, I got on this big old white yeah, cotton ball. Let me see what I can spare. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. girls. Girl, so we get into it that night. Now, what they don't show on the episode, because uh, Indari doesn't show it. It just cuts from you walking out at Top Golf. Oh, yeah. Me but too. you came back and we talked. Yeah, we talked. Mm-hmm. And we, we, we talked. And then I think that's what made us going to the cabin be mm-hmm. a much smoother, like, thing. But, yeah, we did talk after that. And I was glad that we were able to talk in that moment versus letting it linger. Because mm-hmm. I feel like that kept our relationship ship still yes. going smoothly. Like, Because I don't think we left season five. When we left season five, we didn't have an issue. Mm-mm. 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 Yes, we did. We did. Bitch, we're going to get there. Yes, we did. Oh, girl. Yes, we did. Oh, my God. Um. So, we go to the cabins. We have fun in the cabins. This is how much this shit don't even add into me, y'all. Because, girl, I be forgetting everything. No. But, I mean, it's coming back to me now. Mm-hmm. Um. We go to the cabins. You know what I forgot to, you know what, what I forgot to talk about with Kendra? Remember when her and Aaron and, um, and them almost got into a fight? Yes. And Kendra was, girl, Kendra was going off in that motherfucking house. And I was just like, Kendra, girl, just calm down. So, you just drunk. Did you hook up with anybody in the cabin? Tell the truth. Mm-mm. I didn't. Nobody. Nobody. For real. Mm-mm. You was down to playing Willis Cabaret though. Yeah, I was at the cabaret, but I didn't go to nobody's room. No. Mm-mm. I didn't go to nobody's room either. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. You didn't. No, I didn't. I promise I didn't. I stayed in my room. I promise I I didn't go to nobody's room. Mm. I promise you I didn't. Okay, well, girl, let's put on the table, girl. Ooh! <laughs> let's put on the table, because, girl. Gag me! <laughs> Come on, gag me! Oh, girl. Is okay. it on? Is this thing recording? What you got to say? The girl said me saying that that was when you and Jay hooked up. Me and Jay hooked up. Mm-hmm. The I'm just the messenger. No, I love that. Um, no, me and Jay did not hook up. Did it happen? No, we didn't. No, we didn't okay. hook up. I didn't hook up with anybody. Okay. I will say, now, what I will say is... Now, now, if I got to tell on Jay, I got to tell on everybody. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I, if I now if I'm gonna tell on Jay, I got to tell on everybody. Is you ready? Well, girl, who else is everybody? Because what I will say is, girl, I remember when somebody in season three said, er, uh, "What they say? They want the kid. They, they want, want the, the kid." kid. <laughs> Baby, I felt like everybody wanted my flesh in the cabin. Like everybody, like I remember, Aaron was sucking on my nipples. You was sucking on my nipples. Girl, I just thought about this it. This is in the lingerie. This is in the lingerie. Do well, I? Will you to open it up, and I'm finna bust it open, child? 
Child, uh, it's not me. Child Troy and um, what's that baby name? Um, who? Aaron. Aaron was sucking on my nipples at the same time. Troy was on this one. Oh, he was, girl. That that nipple was. It was Troy was on this one. Aaron was on this one. And baby, they was going. I mean, I was like. <laughs> Dominique had to already slit his hand up my skirt. Yes, he did. It was a lot. Jay Moore, Jay Moore was trying to, you know. You I was, took body shots. Everybody was just, I just was like. <laughs> Look, we told that Dario, I said, yeah, production going up the steps. Willa was playing, was yeah, funneling. Will, yes, girl. We Kendra are. was trying to get me to pull on Luigi. It was just like, <laughs> I was like, girl, all y'all hoes be cussing me out into that. Y'all really want to fuck me. Oh, y'all want to fuck me. Bitch, not Luigi. Y'all want to fuck me. Leave Luigi out of this. Trust me, I want. I don't want Luigi. <laughs> Maybe I don't want Luigi. <laughs> Maybe I done heard about Luigi. Maybe I don't want nothing to do with Luigi. Oh no, baby, girl, girl, don't knock the X off this Twix, baby. <laughs> uh uh, baby, no, 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 no. Oh my god. Uh uh, but no, I didn't. No, I didn't have sex with nobody in that cabin. No, but and I, I really, I did for real, for real. You know, I was in the room with Dominique the whole time. Mm. Me and Dom, you know, me and Dominique room together, and then I think the only person that had a room by themselves was Aaron because remember I was supposed to be in the room with Aaron, and Dominique was supposed to have a room by himself. Mm -hmm. But I was like, Dario, girl, I'm not doing that. Now, now, what I will say now, because Jay did come to my room, I did let Jay come to my room. Um, child, child, I did let Jay come to my. What movie we watched? I can't remember what movie we watched, but I always liked Jay. Cause this was during the day. When you, was this during the day? No, it was at night time. No, it was at night time. Cause mm -hmm. I remember. No, it was at night time. Cause I had ate like two edibles and I was knocked out. But oh, y'all was gone. I had no edibles in the house. No, bitch. Remember I had brought that juice. Yes, you did bring that juice, girl. We was fucked up in that. Thing. Yeah, the cows was fun, but um, I've always, I've always liked Jay. Like, I've just always mm -hmm. really liked him. And I tried to, like, I really didn't want to broadcast our friendship because mm -hmm. I didn't want nobody fucking with him. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I felt like people had attacked my friendships with yeah, other, people other people before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so with Jay, I was just like, uh, me and you just to be, we'll be cool. Like, of course, I'll support you on the show. Like, we'll have fun and do shit. But right. I didn't really want to broadcast it like that. Right. Um, the cabins was fun. The cabins was fun. I feel like we did a lot of Healing. It was released, a lot of healing. We released a lot. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we let everybody really be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Like, again, I feel like that was a moment where we all were able to see, like, bitch, we're, we're, even though we may look like we're in a better place and we're doing better than we were last mm -hmm. year, but bitch, we're still battling a lot of demons. Yeah. I remember, I, I remember when I came up with the idea, I, I literally came up with the idea while we were shopping. Cause I was kind of like, again, putting on my producer hat, I was like, we didn't fought mm -hmm. kind of this entire. I almost said the entire time. Since we had, since but since we, had we got there. here, yeah, yeah. And I was like, we really didn't have like a moment where we really like bonded as mm -hmm. a group. And so I was literally in the store and I saw all these masks, but they only had they only had two of a kind. Mm -hmm. So like every mask was like basically unique. They only had two of each one. So I was like, okay, I'm just gonna buy. And it, it just so happened it was enough masks for everybody right, to yeah. get one. And um, I may have gotten an idea from Dr. Jackie, maybe, maybe. Um, but I was like, we're just going to call it Mask Off, and I'm mm -hmm. just going to pair people up, you know, that didn't have issues in the group, and we're just going to talk right. about it. We're going to, you know, whatever happens, whatever happens. But whatever happens, it's going to be good TV. And it was. People yeah. really enjoyed that episode. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Baby, we get back to Atlanta. Get back to Atlanta, and baby. You and Jay fall out. What happened? So Cause they said you, you didn't pay. Wasn't that what was being said? That's what was being said, that I didn't pay my coin. Now, at the time... I laid it all out, man. I'm going to lay it all out. What happened? Because I want to know. So, Jay had made a shirt for me, um, my, which was my green screen shirt, my first green screen shirt, which was the blue shirt with the fringes. Mm -hmm. And at the time, me and Jay were really cool, and Jay was like, you know... And even Jay, but Jay would always tell everybody, like, you got to pay me right now. Just give it to me when you get it to me when you get a chance or whenever you can. And I was like, okay. I had just left my job and I was working at the restaurant. But at the time, I used to keep... Jay said that I was posting cash on my store, but I wasn't. Jay was in my close friends at the time. Mm -hmm. And at the time... Because I didn't really post in my close friends. I had just added everybody who I was like the... What you call it? The fat five, whatever you want to call it. At the time, I had just added them to the close friends. And I was post like... I had posted my gun because I had just got a new gun and I had my tail far bag. 
<laughs> I had myself our bag. Oh, that's so Florida. That's so Florida. I got a new gun. Yeah, I just got a new gun. And my tough our bag. And I had my tough our bag. But my tough our bag had got hot Cheetos in, in it. No, it was just <laughs> had my money, my money, Goulash. my gun. So I took a picture of it and I was like, um, got my son ride with me, which is my gun. And but it had my tips that I had made from that day at work. And so I was supposed to go put that in the bank and get and send it to Jay. But that day I actually forgot. So I, I ended up going home. No, I didn't forget. I ended up going to Willie's and getting some food when I went to Willie's. Willie's right up by my house. So instead of me going past my past my house to go back to the bank, I just ended up going home. Mm-hmm. And so I didn't take the money to the bank that day. And then after that, it just kind of like wasn't like a thing because Jay wasn't like, oh, bitch, mm-hmm. save my money, like get on my coin. So I think like maybe a couple of days after that, I ended up putting some money in the bank. I had paid something. I was like, Jay, I'm going to send you this. I think I sent him for like $45. And I was like, I'm going to send you the rest. Friday when I actually get paid. Mm-hmm. They, um, at the, and everybody know at the time when I was working at the bar, like, all of my friends knew that day that the guy was messing with everybody money and messing with tips. Like, we we're supposed to be paid on a certain day. He'll change it so we get paid this day or whatever. So, um, I end up, um, when I end, I end up getting hired at Balenciaga, but I had not started until before we. While we were filming, I had not started yet. Mm-hmm. But so, Jay um, still had not asked for his money or whatever case may have you. So, I think I ended up sending him something else, I feel like. Oh, no, I didn't. I didn't. I'm lying. I didn't send him nothing else after that. And he didn't ask for anything else after that either. So, I was like, you know, okay, well, whenever you're ready for me to send the money, just whatever, send the money. So, something was going on in Jay's house. And I sent him, the like, some more money at the time. For that, I was like, well, I'm, I can send you this, you know, whatever, because it's what I got. And I ain't gonna lie, bitch, everybody was struggling. I was, I was in my own apartment at the time. I was making, I was paying fifteen, like almost six hundred dollars a month. And then on top of that, too, being the bar that I was working at, they was messing with our money. I wasn't getting paid often. Mm. I was not getting paid what I was supposed to get paid. Like he would, he would wait days, and I was honestly, I ain't gonna lie, like it would, he would wait so many days, I would even forget, like. Since I was older, he would say, okay, well, I ain't got this much today. I'm going to pay you this much out of because this is how much cash we've made today. So I'll pay you this much, just and you got to come back and get whatever, whatever. So it was just like an influx in money at the time. So when we left the cabins and came back, and I think when um, <coughs> Willa, had, Willa had called me, was it Willa? Willa or somebody had called me and was like, or seven, and called me and was like, you know, well, this is what's being said. You know, Jay saying that ain't nobody paying him his money or people owe him money. And I was like, who's saying who owe him money? Da, 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 da. And I was the only person that owe him money was Seven. Because I honestly had forgot because I thought I had seen him everything. And so he was like, uh, what was I like, no, Seven said she paid him. So and we was like, the only person he could be talking about was you. I was like, well, what, for what, the shirt? And when we put it all together that that's what it was, I could have called Jay then, but I was like, no. I'm gonna wait because Jay said how I would tell somebody he was supposed to confront me at your meetup. And I said, okay, he wanna play the game. Let's play the game because this is how we gonna play it. And then I had already told Dominique about it. So Dominique was like, bitch, okay, well, girl. And you know, this was the freaking fact was like, <laughs> <laughs> my girl. So Dominique was like, okay, bitch, well, girl, this how we, if that's what you wanna do, this is what we gonna do. So we go in there. And when you said, oh, anybody got anything they wanna say? And bitch, when you said that, and he woke it up and started saying what he said. Which I was being messy. I I knew I knew something had happened. You, you had knew something happened. Yeah, yes. I knew something. So happened. when he said, I'm just like, girl. And honestly, I and literally all of I had just deposited a lot of money into my bank account too. So from work. And- <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did somebody throw some money that up was, in it? The- Dominic threw the ones in the air. And that's why I had went behind and was picking it yeah, up. Just was- picking it up because he was like, oh yeah, you said y'all don't want no, y'all don't like money, bitch. I take the money because I like money. And, but yes, when Jay had said that, I'm like, girl, what was it? You said how much I owe you? I sent him the money, but I thought it was just so weird at the time because it was like, Jay, I love you down. Like, I actually mm-hmm. do have a friendship with you. I do love you. Oh, it all started from that night at the Ike's album release party. The song release, Hope He Can Fight release thing. Remember after was it was about to get into it out in the parking lot? I thought that came after all that. No, that didn't come no, after that. That was, the that last, was before that. Yes, yeah, so that was the last episode. That's how we all ended up being falling out because did we go? Yeah, because we came back from the cabins after that. Bitch, outside of Ike's thing. Outside of Ike's thing. Do you want to talk about that? Child. We can talk about it. You sure? It ain't. It ain't. It ain't really too much to really say. It was just that. 
We thought Jay had said something to Oliver. And Jay didn't say shit to me. About me. Jay didn't say shit to me. And I how it all had how it all had sounded or how it all played out. It was just like, okay, well, girl, Jay, girl, you being fake. And so... Yeah, y'all jumped the gun on Jay. Yeah, we had jumped the gun. Y'all on jumped Jay. the gun. Yeah, y'all was doing a lot. We had jumped the gun. And Jay, Jay hadn't done a fucking thing. Because we was about to come to Jay's house and go air Jay out. But girl, let me tell y'all what happened. I'm finna tell it, bitch. So here I, you know, no matter what me and Troy have gone through, as y'all have heard us talk, like because we like hit it off season three so hard, even though me and him would go, oh, uh, you know, in and out. And then sometimes I be feel like I don't know I don't know what this whole doing for the mm. show, girl. If she just I don't know what's going on. I just always right. felt this like protective energy when it came to Troy, and so I can't I can't think. But I would have to sit down and, and really comb it out. Um, I can't think what made me come up to you and be like mm. like I just want to check in with you because yeah. like I've been hearing stuff like yeah. and I think it has something to do with y'all the seven how many was y'all over there five eight five, nine five, five. fifteen five, six. how many is it now right um and so i was like i just want to come check in with you because i'm like i know you i'm friends with you you know i don't know these other girls they all knew but i know mm -hmm. you you yeah. know and at the end of the day these hoes will be five mm -hmm. and we'll still have to be here to work so right. I'm, I'm coming to check in on you and baby i don't know what the fuck well oh, never mind Baby, I don't know what the fuck that, what the fuck that, what that <laughs> wrong. I just remember leaving the thing and Troy is outside crying. Will over there cussing and Dario is like purple in the face. He ain't even red. That bitch is purple. Like, <sighs> what and, is I, going on? and so basically they thought Jay had told me something about Troy. Mm -hmm. um, I guess coming back being messy. And I'm like, no, yeah. bitch. Them hoes, him and Willa, and me, Willa, Dominic, and and Rico, we covered a K. Was all in the car, speeding down the highway to head to J House to <laughs> fight him. <laughs> and they calling me, and Dario calling me like Oliver. What did you say to Troy? I'm like, huh? Like I don't, I don't even know what's going. on. I'm like, what? What y'all talking about? What? And I was in a panic mode, bitch, because girl, we was on the, we was on the way, good. Car and drive, put to the pedal, 80, 85. Which is fast forward to season, to the reunion yeah. where Willow was like, because we was mad at what this whole has said. I'm like, girl, you can't, you still can't blame that on me because y'all assumed mm -hmm. what I was talking about before me and Troy even had a the conversation, conversation for yeah. me to talk about it. Yeah. 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 Bitch, it was a lot. It was a lot. It was a lot. But yeah, so fast forward to <laughs> the day of the thing, after all that build up had happened, bitch, it was like, okay, bitch, let's do it. Let's now, now you now you want to bring it up? Let's bring it up. But I'm, but I I feel like I had already had like this tea on like what that Jay had been talking about everybody, mm. and I felt like me and Jay were friends, and it was just like, it, what if you if you already been talking about everybody, but if you're talking about me as a friend and the friend I was to you, and you then go. You know, talk about everybody else. It's just like you know, if you talk about everybody else, you talk about me too. And when you tell everybody, you go and then you out telling people that I owe you money, as if I owe you this wide amount of money. You like thinking, you thinking he's spraying you? Yeah, I'm thinking like he's spraying me, like you know, all this kind of stuff. And it's just like Jay, it, it, it never had gave that. So when in that moment, it was just like, okay, girl, I'm to go ahead and say what I gotta say, and I'm and I feel like it. I feel like. In the history of Chasing Atlanta, I never had to read a person down or, like, give them, like, that kind of energy. But I feel like in that moment, that was my moment of being like, okay, bitch, I let everybody run here be sly and say what they want to say. I'm not going to let you slide. Well, bitch, today, you're not sly. <laughs> I, I, I came here. Look, I came there with my glasses on, sitting there with my sweatsuit on specifically for Jay. Because I knew somebody I knew somebody was going to say something about it. Either he was going to bring it up, you was going to bring it up, or Dominique was going to bring it up. And say something, and bitch. When it, when, oh, I wasn't gonna bring it up. When it cued, but I knew, I knew it was, I knew it was cooking. Yeah. When it cued, bitch, it was like, okay, bitch, in action. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And I, I wasn't acting, bitch. I literally was. I was really fur furious with him in that moment, and that's why at the reunion we were able to have a conversation after the fact. Because I don't think me and Jay made up on camera at the reunion, mm. but after the reunion we were able to like talk and you know whatever because I really did love Jay, and I, I still love Jay to this day. Like even. Cause I think even after when we did our season six photo shoot, me and Jay was together 
drinking or whatever after the damn shoot because I ended up riding with Jay back to Fanny Feathers in the city. But has your relationship gotten back to what it used to be? Mm-mm. No. I mean, I, I see Jay on Instagram, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, I think. Yeah, we'll talk about it. We'll, we'll get to see after season We'll get to season six. Mm-hmm. Okay, so. Um, chasing the beat. Oliver comes up with this idea for the end of the mm-hmm. year. Well, chasing the beat. Well, well, what actually ended up happening was the city, the tourism people, which made me just think about. I need to email somebody. Mm-hmm. Baby, let me tell you something. See, this is why you should know people, and this is why I really care about how I be acting. Baby, the city had given me. Oh, you in trouble? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, the city, bitch. Bitch, I can say it now. Bitch, the city was cutting me a stupid check. Mm-hmm. When I say stupid, oh, bitch, I'm sure. For you to put on there showcase and everything. Bitch, I had to do. I had never seen that amount of money at 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 one time for mm-hmm. one thing. Mm-hmm. Dare I say it? Bitch, you was gonna get it. Oh, bitch, it was a nice twenty thousand dollar check. Period. And and I was gonna pay y'all. Yeah. I was I was gonna give y'all all y'all money to come perform. Yeah. Because I I felt like that was the right thing to do. Right. That was the right thing to do. If y'all gonna perform, if y'all I'm gonna ask y'all to do all this. I was gonna give y'all some money. Cause bitch, I mean honestly, they really could have gave me ten. I would have been all right. 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 To me, the ten the ten thousand was extra. So bitch, we finna. Right. You know we finna, this, we finna do it up. Bitch. We finna do it up. Cause again, I'm thinking <laughs> this is the last season. You know, I'm thinking okay, we I. I slash us need to come up with something that can be that can be taken from here and and moved, and moved on to something mm-hmm. else. Whether it's chasing the beat tour, whether it's a chasing the beat concert, right. whether it's chasing the beat whatever. Right. It, this needs to be something where we can make money right. after this. <clears throat> the president or the guy who's over that bureau here in Atlanta ended up getting sick and he wasn't gonna be there because mm-hmm. it was a, it was a thing where like all these. All these people who spend money in Atlanta to basically have their like logos like down there at the Coca Cola's places mm-hmm. in the aquarium. Yeah. All those if all those people were coming. So like the, the heads of Hilton, the heads of Aquafina, the heads of all these people were coming in for this big high powered brunch. Mm-hmm. I mean lunch mm-hmm. and like ceremony. It, it really was a seminar, but it, it, they really judged it up because all these rich the people, people were, were coming. coming, and we were going to be the the entertainment, right? And so I'm like, bitch, we finna, we finna have a ball. Oh, bitch, we finna tear it up, yeah. you know. And y'all giving us a budget, oh, and bitch. and it was they was giving me half up front. So I'm like, oh, bitch, yeah, we can do it. Kitchen, what you need? Like, girl, okay. we finna, girl, we finna do this. They ended up canceling on me. Um, they did give me a severance though, mm-hmm. which I then I took some of my severance. And I paid for the studio and stuff. Chasing the beat that we ended up filming. Mm-hmm. So it ended up working out really, yeah. really well. Um, but the season ends with Chasing the Beat, mm-hmm. right? Anything I'm not covering as pertains to you and I or the show, mm-hmm. I was very proud of you when it came yeah, to Chasing we, the Beat. We did. I think I think that moment of Chasing the Beat, like, and even I told you like after that, I feel like it gave me it gave me a lot of hope that you can you can really one day be in front of a teleprompter because that was my first time reading on a teleprompter mm-hmm. doing anything and I was just like it was real official it was real official and I was like wow like mm-hmm. I could be doing this on somebody's real like actual TV or on somebody's platform whether it's BET MTV or whatever case may have you and like actually be showing <clears throat> my personality and be doing this so <clears throat> yeah I I really am grateful for the opportunity like that's something that I never will pass up that's something that I never will be like. Oh, didn't do anything for me because I feel like that was a really pivotal moment in my life when it came to Chasing Reality. If it's something that I remember from Chasing Reality is my awareness event and Chasing the Beat. Oh, yeah. Chasing the Beat. I mean, Chasing the Beat is a special thing for me that I just mm-hmm. really enjoy doing. And I love seeing the final product and seeing people react to it. Yeah. Um, But Chasing the Beat was like a real special thing for us. You yeah, know, it was it a was. nice it was a nice sign off. It was a nice moment where we all mm-hmm. were together. I really, really enjoyed it, and the people really enjoyed the product. And I mean, you know, it's still going with the second one that just came out a couple yeah. weeks ago. People really like it. Um, dare I say it now? Listen, probably in June, July, there's going to be a live Chasing the Beat concert here in Ooh. Atlanta. I go to sign my contract. Yeah, I'm pulling out the exclusive Maybe um, probably this Friday. It, it was originally for June 7th, but I think I want to do something else special, too. Mm-hmm. You know, my brain is always thinking of multi things, things and how we do. can make this more, you yeah. know. So, and I think I, I just need a little bit more time to get, you know, yeah. you know, to get, you know, the things the together thing, yeah. the way I want it to be yeah. together. You know, some specials, you know, you know. And it'll, be, it'll, it'll be kind. Yeah, it's going to be kind. Um, but it's definitely happening. It's, it's, it's definitely going to be a live concert mm-hmm. um, here. It's going to be at the Pachi Cafe. 
tickets. So, okay. guys, please be on the lookout for tickets. Yes. It's a 400 capacity. It's 285 holes watching this. So, if all 285 of y'all come, even if y'all got to fly down, y'all got to do whatever. And I'm pretty sure the people from the other live and all that kind of stuff, y'all can all just come down and y'all can sell out the tickets. Yes. And I, like, and I really... I am asking for our supporters and our community and our people to really support this because this can really be a really pivotal moment, yeah. not only for myself, but for everyone that's involved. So we're working out the details, but it is definitely coming. It is definitely coming. Yeah. Um, however, let's go to season five, The Reunion. Oh. Now that reunion, honey. Talk about it. From beginning to end, I feel like... Well, I I can't I ain't gonna say that because I ain't gonna shade nobody on your platform. But say who? Oh um, yeah. I mean, you bad. <laughs> you bad. Bad like this. I feel like the reunion was good. I did not care for TTV's hosting at the time because I felt like it was like a little dry or he was shy. I don't know what it was, but I thought like, other than that, I feel like the cast still gave what they needed to give, and I feel like the questions that were answered. It was a lot that was left unsaid. I will say that. I feel like the reunion with a lot of questions that we should have been asked, we didn't get to. We spent too much time on Cameron and Jay. Jay. Yeah. But we spent spent like over an hour on them when we really should have spent like 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Maybe 20. Yeah. And I feel like we spent a lot of time on that. And I feel like it wasn't a controlled set. He didn't really control the cast. So I feel like, but it was so much more that should have been and could have been talked about. But I feel like every time anybody had something to say, they got their point across. It was a it was a good amount of argument. It was a good amount of still trying to come back together and get some kind of you know some kind of um reconciliation there. But I think even when I told the girls I was watching and I watched this back so many times and I was like, you know, with my friends now when it came to season six and I was different than I was in season five. And I told them at season five reunion, I was like, you know, I'm always there for everybody in here. And I never really show up for myself and I'm not going to be showing up for everybody else more than I show up for myself going forward. Mm-hmm. And I think everybody thought I was just playing because I normally just be talking and I end up doing the same shit I used to do before. But literally season five set the tone for me in my life to go forward with where I'm at now. And I set boundaries. And when I set those boundaries, a lot of things start to change because a lot of people still wanted me to be the old choice that they knew. But it's just like, I really like did a transformation in front of your eyes and it's like nobody could really handle that transformation. I feel like season five was a, a, a pivotal season for you. Like, yeah. I felt like you were going through a lot of personal things, things in yeah. your life that was I was, that was affecting how you were showing up in scenes. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you want to talk about, like, what was... what I won't say specifically, but, like, just mm-hmm. where you were in, in your life at the time. Like, I know you were... You were... Because you, were, you talked about on the show, you were, you were, seeing, you were seeking therapy. Mm-hmm. You were talking about issues with your dad. Yeah. And, like, you was really just... I felt like you was really just trying to... I was trying to... I was just trying to figure it out. Yeah, you were trying to figure like, it out. I feel like a lot of emotions... You were very emotional season yeah, five. Yeah, I was very emotional. Very. And, like, when I started talking to Twan and, like, Twan used to, like, help me with a lot. And we started opening it up about, like, just things that have happened in my life. And I didn't realize a lot of the traumas that used to affect me. Mm-hmm. And so it was just, like, as I'm going through that... And trying to figure out, like, how do I heal from these things that's happening to Twan? I'm also dealing with the stresses, of, the stresses of the show because on top of that, we were filming often. Like, it wasn't like a week that we didn't film something for season five. Like, the whole nine, ten months, almost year that we were filming. We it didn't was, film for no year. We did in season five. We filmed for a year? We started in season five. We started in... September. September. We didn't finish filming until... Bitch, we was done in May. We, we finished Cinco de Mayo. My cousin died that day. That's how I remember. We finished Cinco de Mayo. That's another thing people don't talk about either. The reunion was July. 
Yeah, that's another thing people don't talk about either. My one of my favorite cousins died the day we had the film Chasing the Bee. I was crushed. That's his his hat over there and some of his shit. Mm -hmm. All the shit over there that belongs that table right there. People think that's an altar. It's not an altar. Everything that's on that table belongs to a dead relative of mine. Wow. Mm -hmm. I, I keep. I keep oh, you did. I think mm -hmm. you did say that. Yeah, say I keep. That. I keep the personal things like yeah. something that was personal that I knew they really liked. Yeah. But that you see that Cowboys cup right there. His picture mm -hmm. and he died that day. That was one of my favorite cousins. Every time I came home, oh my god, I'm gonna cry. Every time I came home, he. Always, because people knew I did music. Mm -hmm. I used to sing, but then I started rapping. Every time I came home, he would be like, "Where my CD at, man? Where my CD at? Mm -hmm. Give me my CD. Where my CD?" And every time I would hear him say that, that would make me think, "Oliver, you got to put out a project. Like, right. you, you got to work on your music." Because right. your cousin man asking about this, I miss yeah. him so much, Alfred, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Alfred King, honey. When I tell you, but yeah, it mm -hmm. was, it was just a lot going on. Lot. Like, and then I was freshly talking to somebody. Um, me and him were just. I'm still dating him to this day. Um, but we were just in a fresh, like, situation. It was just, it was a lot. Like, I'm trying to battle that, battle my friends thinking that I'm leaving them when I'm with my man come in town or I'm with my man, um, getting ready for this new job. Like, it was just, it was just so much on me. And then, y'all, I was broke as hell. Like, I, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna lie. I was in a space where I never thought me, Troy, for coming from, like, and I was, a, and just, just how you just said, when I, when I was working at Brooks Brothers before I quit and was working at the bar, Cause I'm like, okay, well, my friends working at bars, they making good money. Bitch, I'm gonna go find me a bar to work at. I'm gonna leave my salary job because I know I can make more money doing this, whatever. Which was a fail, but I don't feel like it. I feel, it taught me a lot of discipline too, because I feel like God showed up when He needed to. But I was damn near doing. I was making 80k a year at my job that I quit, and went to the bar and was not making close to that. Like the first week I worked there, when I was working at my job, still I made. Hella bank that first week. As soon as I quit my job, God, that seemed like everything slowed down. I wasn't making money. I ended up, I ended up having to um, figure out ways to pay rent. I was paying rent on one of my credit cards. Like I had maxed one of my credit cards out, paying my rent for the year. Like it was, it was a lot. Like I was just in a really, really stressful place. And then when I started working at Balenciaga, and the store that I was in wasn't really making money, so it was like I was still like in a, in a struggle space. It was, I didn't know how to handle it. I'm the only child. I'm out here doing this by myself. I don't really like to depend on people. I don't really like to call my mom, call my dad, my family for anything like that, whatever case may have you. And a lot of people are like, you know, you're crazy because you do have that support. But it's just like when you're at a certain age and you want to be independent, independent or seem independent, you get your own apartment by yourself. You go do all this stuff. And it's just like it. you start seeing everything backfire. It's like, damn, did I make the right decision anywhere? Should I left? Should I have left my apartment my best friend? Should I have quit my job? Should I be talking to this boy, having him come back and forth? And then, you know, when you dating somebody and you try, not even necessarily trying to impress them, but they coming in town, you, y'all going now, y'all spending all the time and money. It's just like, I got another credit card over here that I got a max credit card. I'm paying minimum payment on a month. But every time he come in town or he wants something, I'm using this credit card, but I'm still not making what I need to make back. And that's what made me like start taking like my content and all this stuff serious and trying to, you know, whatever, you know, get, get to that point. But yeah, I'm just in a weird, or just, uh, it was just too much going on. It was just too much happening in my life at the time. It was just like me, like I said, me reopening those old wounds from growing up and the things I was talking about in therapy with Twan. It was just like, dang, like I acted like this. I act like this in a lot of scenarios because of things that happened to me in my past. And I was trying to, like, even that night when me and you got into it at Top Golf, I was trying so hard not to get mad. I think that's why I was crying because I didn't want to start yelling and exploding and blowing up because that's something that me and Twan already talked about. He was like, you know, try to get your words out, think your thoughts out, you know, talk it through. And it's just like, I didn't, in, in that moment, I was really trying to do that. I was really trying to show, like, a change in me. And I think that's what was breaking. And, it, and it's like, that's what it is when life when life when people say oh life is breaking you down to pull you up i literally feel like i was crumbling every time mm. we filmed the, every time we filmed the scene and i never forget dario me and dario had a conversation at his house and when i was crying in the cabin he was like i could see your pain over there and dario was crying to me in the cabin i ne had never seen dario shed a tear get emotional face quiver anything like dario was normally just mm -hmm. straight professional all the time but when dario came to me in that cabin and was like I see you over there and I know you're hurting and I know you're, you're dealing with a lot. He was like, and he gave me a hug. I knew that I was really like breaking. Mm -hmm. like I was breaking. 
And the fact that everybody around me could see it, the fact that everybody around me knew, and that's why everybody was so protective of me at the time. That's why Willa was so pissed with the thing that happened with Jack, because it was just like, we all know what Troy is going through. Like that night, it took a lot for me to come to Ike's thing that night and enjoy myself and have fun. But I still came. And it was just like, you know, you mm. get to say like, you got to be able to maneuver through. But I feel like that was a moment of me, like, where I literally was at rock bottom. Mm-hmm. And I literally had to build my way back up, and then it take it didn't it, it it didn't take one month, two months, three months. It took me a whole year and a half. Really, almost. after season five, after season five wrap, before we started filming season six, I had I was still working in the same store, Balenciaga, and which is why season six I was just like, even in season six, that's why I was like I wasn't gonna do so much because I still you said was, that yeah I was still trying to get myself back on my feet, and I was like I'm not gonna. Go remax out credit cards, or we go put money on credit cards that I'm paying down mm. to make it look like I got all this going on. I'm like, no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna get in where I fit in, do what I can, and then I'm gonna move forward. Because at the end of the day, you know, I'm not in your position. I mean, I've been everybody else was in, in another person's position, and it's like now I am in a position. Like if season six was going on right now, and I was in the space I'm in right now, oh girl, let's book out the studio, let's have this, let's do that, whatever can happen because. I'm in a, I got a promotion at work. I'm making the money that I was making before. I'm in a better space. I've paid down all of my debts. Like, hold on, where my, where my purse at all of it? Yeah, I mean, it's just like. When you pay down all your debts, girl, tell the, I mean, well, don't show the number. Yeah. Oh, the, oh yeah, you can. Yeah. Not on that one. But tell the girl. Yeah, I mean, it's just, you, you know, know, it's just like, like, you, you know, know. You, just, you just get your life it's just together. Like, but you know? it, it's, it's not a brag. It's not a brag or anything like that. But it's, it's just a like, show. But before I got this card, I got this card this year because I said before I turn 30, I want to get my American Express. I want to get my business account and I want to get my new car. I ordered my car in two weeks. Thank you, Jesus. I stayed up, but I, I did what I need to do for that. But what you gonna be driving? A Tesla. Oh, I mean, it's just you know, know. <laughs> help, help the um, atmosphere <laughs> and, and the ozone layer and things like that. Um, a sustainable I'm so girl. proud of you. Thank you, but no, like it's the definition of like staying down until you come up. Like I had to realize that I couldn't try to put this life out there that I really yeah. wasn't living. Yeah. Like, I, I, I I I feel like when I first came on Chasing Reality, people knew me for being one of the people that are relatable. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't mind telling my... Mm-hmm. You know, I, I didn't mind telling my story. I didn't mind, like, saying, like, you know, I wasn't this big shot bitch. And I think that I got so caught up in everybody else looking like this big shot and everybody else being this person. It's just like, I wanted to look like I was that. But I had to sit back and realize even if I never was on Netflix, WeTV, whatever case may have you, even if I didn't groom a uh, Missy Elliott doll, even if I didn't do Jessica Dime hair, even if I, I wasn't a drag queen and going on RuPaul's Drag Race, I was me. Mm-hmm. I tried to make it work. I, I went to work every day. Mm-hmm. I had an honest living. I love it. I... Live a normal life. I live. I, I have a boyfriend. I have every everything that I've wanted. It's like I have. I got my dream job. I always wanted to be in luxury. I fought to be in luxury so many years. Finally got a luxury. Finally got a man that I feel like loves me. That we just we're like we're going strong. We're going on three years this year, and it's just like you know, it's just so over three hundred people 300, watching you. Hi, but I. I really like had to get out of there and realize like at rock bottom, only place you can go back is up. Mm-hmm. And it took me time, but I met some people. I met an accountant. I met people that really helped me get back on my feet and put me in a position where I need to be. I went from a, and I, I don't mind telling this. I don't. I went from a five hundred and some credit score, which I my credit thing now. It's at seven twenty. I mean the seven hundred plus. Like you, that's not you. That's not how they go to. So that told. That shows you how. I had a fifteen thousand dollar debt. Really? I'm now at twenty percent of that. So that tells you how much of fifteen thousand dollars I paid yeah. off I'm in so the last year. How much I hustled. Like mm-hmm. that true definition of stay down until you come up. Like you have to really isolate yourself. Some friends gonna leave. Some people not gonna understand. Some people gonna think you acting funny. Some people gonna feel like whatever they want to feel. But you let people feel how they want to feel about you because at the end of the day, you have 
nobody to explain yourself to but yourself because you know what you're doing it for. You know who you're doing it for. So I was doing it for me. I had to stop trying to make everybody else know that I love them Mm -hmm. and show Troy that Troy, you love you. Like you don't have to try to find this love in all these other people. You know, everybody does not have to like you. Mm -hmm. And I think that was my biggest thing. I wanted everybody to like me. I didn't want to say the wrong thing to Montel in season three about being me want to be friends with you. I didn't want to say wrong things to Kendra about being friends with you. I didn't want to come to my friends or be around Willow or whatever case may have you and agree with everything that they said in order for them to love me. I had to stop doing that. I had to be my own person. I had to learn how to be me. And sitting here today, I can honestly say, like, this is authentically me. Like, I don't have to fake friendships. I don't have to fake love. I don't have to fake anything because at the end of the day, this is who I am and you're going to get it. Like, today, I may, I came here because I wanted, to, I wanted to come here. I didn't care if this come on and my the people that I was hanging with on the regular see this and they'd be like, oh, he fake because he over there with Olive, but they know what Olive. No. I don't care because at the end of the day, this is my decision. This is my choice. This is my life. You are somebody that has supported me even when I feel like I didn't have a support system where I feel like I was down. Like, you've, you've called me. You've spoken life into me. And not saying that they haven't or people have not, but it's just like, I have to love. If I'm going to love on everybody and love on people, I'm going to love on people that really genuinely love me. And it's just like, I'm not going to leave you out, leave anybody else out because of how anybody else will feel. So I've grown. I've become like this. I, I say this in most of my chasing reality openings, but I've become into a new person, but I really have set into a new person. And I think this person that I am now is the person I want to be going forward. Like, <coughs> So I got a pollen oxide has been killing me the last two weeks, but um, I realized I don't. If it's not meant for me to be this famous person on TV with a mic in my hand, that's not what's meant for me. But if it's meant for me to be on the 56th floor of the Empire State Building, being in Balenciaga corporate, that's what it's meant for me to do. Like, but at the end of the day, everybody's success looks different. Everybody's success is not your success, mm-hmm. and everybody's mission and purpose in life is not yours. So you can't try to picture yourself doing what everybody else is doing or trying to be on everybody else's level. That's why people be on social media now and be like, oh, I'm doing this, or I'm out working these hoes, I'm doing that. I don't care because guess what? I'm working me. I'm, I'm at a level, <laughs> bitch. I'm working me. I'm at a level in my life where it's just like I can sit comfortable. I can go out with my men. And my men want to order $200 steak. I can do that, but bitch, guess what? Just how um, one of these famous Twitch persons came into my store yesterday and spent 12000 with me, and when I get that commission check in the next couple of weeks, it's going to pay itself back. And it's just like, so I'm hustling, I'm learning how to, and it's like, I think that's why I like my job at work, because even though I'm on an hourly and I get commission, that commission is what made my check mm-hmm. bump up. So it's like I'm an entrepreneur, even at work. Mm-hmm. I have to reach out to clients, I have to build those relationships, I have to cultivate people in order to make my money and I'm comfortable with that so it's just like I'm not gonna try to I want to keep growing and like I said even like I just told you I'm putting out my vlog tomorrow from my wedding but I am gonna start posting well I have been posting videos more often but I'm still trying to get consistent and post it every week which is why when I go out now I always have my phone I'm always vlogging recording whatever case may because ever since that last conversation we had and you was like bitch if I can do it you can do it too and like I said I don't have to be whatever but i'm comfortable with being just me and whoever it is that god has me to be and so yeah. can i hug you, you can hug me. bitch i mean oh my god troy i'm so proud of you when i say i'm so proud of you because i can feel it i can feel it no, girl here she go with this shit i'm so proud of you yeah you know i appreciate everything it. you just said you got it's you know i ain't yeah. You're doing better than a lot of, uh, many, many. Yeah. I'm so proud of you. Okay. I'm really proud yeah. of you. I'm so happy for you. I appreciate it. Bitch. Yeah. You better fucking do it. Yeah. Which you are. Thank you. Y'all, y'all at home, y'all clap it up for my friend Thank Troy. You. Thank you. And y'all better jump in his DM tonight and tell him good job. Y'all better get on Twitter at him. Tag did it, ain't it? Tag did it. At tag did it and congratulate him because that's freaking amazing. That's, that's, a, that's a lot of hard work. Thank and you. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Bitch. Thank you. 
You still want to do a little bit more. We got to talk about season six. Let's do it. We can do season six. Season six. Well, I thought we were going to (laughs) go. It went tumbling down. A little bit behind the scenes, T, about season six. Um, Thank you, y'all. Season six was, um, there's, there's a person. Um, it's in Dario's story, so I ain't gonna tell his story. I let him tell his own story. Mm-hmm. But there's there's a, a a person who works in mainstream television who basically, um, if I'm remembering the story right, had advised, and I'm friends with him, had advised Dario to do another season but make it amazing mm-hmm. as a way to kind of shop the show around mm-hmm. to other people. Um, and I'm not sure where where they are in that process, but that was explained to me. Like season six gonna be the final season. Let's mm-hmm. make it freaking epic. Let's basically mm-hmm. make it season five on steroids. Right. Um, how do you feel about season six? I feel like season six could have been better. I, I, in what way? In, in, in all honesty, I feel like in what the girls are saying, the girls that should have clocked in were not clocked in. Who should have been clocked Bitches in? should have been clocked in. I feel like we were born should have clocked in more. I feel like... They wasn't clocked in? Not how they thought they were clocked in. Oh. I so, mean, they so, was clocked in. So they was clocked yeah. in, but not clocked in in the way I feel like they should have been clocked in. I feel like I could have clocked in more. Let's we can clock my scene. I feel like I could have clocked in more, but I just told y'all mm-hmm. my scenario. I could have clocked it. in more too. I feel like, but I think at I feel like at some point I feel like the vets became like, okay, girl, we want y'all. Oh yes, we want y'all to have the show. have it, have the show, have it, pick it up, do what y'all gonna do. We 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 gonna be in there. Mm-hmm. We gonna pop up. We gonna do what we gonna do. But y'all. Y'all can have y'all it. Y'all can have it. Y'all that was can, definitely my attitude. Like, y'all, y'all can, can have it. Yeah, because I, I, even though I knew it was season, I knew it was season six and I knew it was like the final season for now, I was like, you know, I'm, I'm still, I, I wanted to like, I'm phasing out. Like, I want the new girls to be like, oh girl, we still here. And if something, if we do come back next year and Dario happen to send out a, a thing, y'all gonna be the ones that he pick out first because y'all, you know, whatever. But it's just like, no one really carried the show. No, I know for me, I, you know, for me, season six was kind of like, I would say, Dom, I, I think Dominique did have a really good season. Though. Dominique had a great season. Mm-hmm. Dominique had an amazing season. Um, I still feel like I had a really good yeah, season. Yes. It just wasn't, it wasn't, if you compare it to all of my other seasons, it's definitely probably second to the bottom, you know? Yeah. And that's only because like, for me, I really felt like, and this is just my opinion, mm-hmm. right? I felt like I had done so much season three, season four, season five, when it came to giving storyline, mm-hmm. when it came to giving personal story, mm-hmm. when it came to fighting with other cast yeah, members. Yeah, go through that stuff with your boyfriend. I'm Bitch, I went through that shit with my boyfriend. Um, I'm showing y'all aspects of my career. I'm taking y'all inside of the Fox Soul, and I'm bringing mm-hmm. this person on, and I got this celebrity showing up, and Monique is here, and Dr. Yeah. Headley's popping mm-hmm. in, and you know, and you know, bitch, I had spent that money on chasing the beat, girl. I'm I'm really spending. I'm the one season five that's really doing the majority right. of the of the of the group events. So I just felt like with season six, for me, I was just like, I really want. Oh, girl, we was neck and neck with group events in season five. Okay, I mean... We was like... Okay, all right. You can have it. You can have it, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> bitch, you can have it. Uh, girl, I'll be so glad when I can get this fixed. I'm so sick of this. And it's supposed to be coming. Girl, I ain't even paying attention to that. Bitch, it just gets on my nerves. I see it all the... I see it every time. I'm just like, girl, I'm gonna snatch it down. Um, but anyways, um... I just was like, you know what? And honestly, I felt like at that time, this is what I thought, you mm-hmm. know? And it may sound like a brag, but this is my truth. I'm like, bitch, I am I just finished on one of the biggest platforms in the entire world, yeah. on one of their biggest shows. Mm-hmm. Bitch, I don't fucking, you know? I'm on, I'm on live with Candy every, every mm-hmm. once Most a week be, yeah. for half of the year. Right. I'm traveling with Pat. My right. YouTube is still doing good. Social media, actually, my social media did freaking amazing right. last year. Yeah. Baby, let these babies have it. You know, like, girl, yeah. I'm, I'm an old girl at this point. Still the youngest on the cast, though. But, no, I am. I, I, ver- I verified it. You I'm, are, I'm yeah. the youngest cast yeah, member you ever mm-hmm. of Chasing Atlanta, Atlanta still. Yes, yes. I was like, girl, I'm going to let these <laughs> girls have it. Mm-hmm. You know, y'all... Fi- and actually, a lot of my storyline was resting in Kendra. Mm-hmm. Because I was supposed to... I was basically 
for season six, a little, some more tea. I don't know if I ever said this, but season six, I was basically going to come in as like her content manager. Mm -hmm. So like, I was basically going to help her like get her social media together. Mm -hmm. Um, get her, uh, get her, um, like content together, help her like find out way, like help her set up the same ways I be making money on the internet. Right. I was basically going to be helping her and like, but just like walking thing. her through that process. Right. Um, and I was going to kind of tag team when we were born. I had a conversation with Jatuan. Um, the day I did, the day he came up and did his green screens, we had on that orange, mm -hmm. and we were basically talking about what we were going to do for Kendra. He was going to mm -hmm. help her with the music side, all the other stuff, mm -hmm. because we we knew internally her and Wayne had already done fall, fallen out. So right. I was like, you know what? That'd be good for me. You know, because me and Kendra friends, I, I trust Kendra. It's more self-contained. I don't got to be worried about, you know, dealing with bullshit. Because in my brain, King Kane and and Jatuan finna come in here and carry. Like, right. they gonna, they gonna, yes. they gonna, they gonna give all that, yeah. you know? I thought so too. Um, I think... I think one of, I think one issue was one our production kind of fell apart. Yes, because somebody somebody did leave in the middle. A couple so. then it was like one or two. I felt like when they first started, yes, because it was. Mm -hmm. Remember, he was around mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. came back. Yes, but then when them two left, it was just and Dario and was it somebody else. Oh, and um. Uh... Right, right, bitch. I forget about him. Oh my god, I forget about him. Yes. But then it went from five to just Andario and, and Jamar. And Jamar and Andario is running the show. Mm -hmm. He's editing. He's you know he doing he's like doing, he's he doing, doing a lot, lot. Doing and lot. filming our scenes. Mm -hmm. Andario was doing a lot. And I, I honestly feel like, and I don't want to blame him because yeah. I don't think it was nothing intentional. But mm -hmm. I feel like because. He was in a in a difficult situation with season mm -hmm. six after kind of being burnt out season one, two, three, four, Sorry, five. Right. Now that he has six and is now at this place, I feel like, like you just said, his attitude, which I think kind of bled into all of mm -hmm. us, was let's get in, let's do it so we can be done. Yeah, let's get it done. Like You right. know, I don't think let's, it was... Because it was, this was very much the shortest... Like, this is the mm -hmm. quickest time frame of us filming. Like, normally, Dario will let it drag out. Like, if, it, if the store is good mm -hmm. and everybody is whatever... Once it gets too long and he be like, okay, y'all, we really finna wrap up. But, bitch, and Arya was like, girl, three months, done. Yeah, we done. We done. Yeah. Um, I really do think that kind of bled into it to where it was more so, it became like, we coming to work mm -hmm. versus we having fun. Like, we, we we having fun. We feeling like, because when the cameras used to come out, I was just like, okay, girls, let's do mm -hmm. it. But it's just like, when the cameras came out, now it's just like, girl, what we finna do today? It was very much like, girl, who finna who finna get into it today? Yeah, because it. Was, I feel like that's what I feel like. Last season five, it was a mixture of everything. Like it was making up, breaking up. People had real deal stories going on. I feel like this season, I mean season six, it was very much arguments, just consistent mm -hmm. arguing for no reason. Yeah, the beginning of the season was you, Dominique, and King Kane. Mm -hmm. what, what? What? How do you look at that? Because I don't want to like dig into it again, but like. Looking back on it, what more can you add to the conversation that'll help us understand what was going on between y'all? Neverland. Okay. <laughs> sure. When you just said that shit, oh my god. Uh, Neverland. <laughs> Who she said that as in regards to? She said that. She said that at, at, at a reunion, ain't it? Yes. Was well, she talking to Lauren? No. That it was, wasn't Lauren. It wasn't Lauren. Who was she? Who did she say? Uh, Neverland. Neverland. Cause she said it after Nene said Neverland. So she yeah. Said, but who did she say that she? I said? can't remember who Kendra was referring to when she said Neverland. <laughs> but she said Neverland, and that shit sent me. But anyway, no. I think King Kane. Honestly, he's. I don't. I didn't know King Kane was gonna be on the show until they sent us the cast list, like mm -hmm. who I was on the cast. But when I seen it. And I realized what had happened that night at your birthday party. And he had asked me about what was going on Which between he, me and he. He wasn't a cast member then. At, yes. least, at least I didn't know he was. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I didn't know I he was a cast member then. But then once he did that, and then once me and Dominique had talked, and me and Dominique talked before, I think we ended up getting the cast list of who was going to be on the show. But when Dominique came to me and said whatever, and then like maybe a couple, I think. Either he did get, either we did get the email before or maybe right after, and we was like, oh, bitch, he gonna be on the show, so this is why he did it. Or this may have been his intentions behind it. That's what it felt like to me, because it was just like, mm. what other reason? 
I understand that me, you know, me and Nick are friends, and then you and Nick have been friends too. So it's just like I understand, but it's just like to my him and him and King Kane. Yeah, him and okay. King Kane. But it's just like if y'all have been friends before. What does me and Dominique French have to do with you? Mm-hmm. Like, we weren't all friends mutual. I could see if it was like me, you, and Kendra, and we friends, and I'm trying to get in between y'all and be like, y'all, y'all gotta work it out because we all cool, you know, whatever case have you. But me and King Kane and Dominique didn't have that dynamic. Like, we never all hung together at one time, I would say, like, consistently. It wasn't somebody that I had been around for years. So it's just like, what did, what did me and Dominique have to do, and why was it? Why was it in your interest to go relay information to Dominique? That oh, but, me and but you what had you had talked about. about. But, and that you asked me, because it's not like I came mm. to you. I didn't come, I never came to him and said, oh, let me just sip, give you this tea, because you know me and Nick. Which, talking. at the time, I told him, I was like, why would you go back and tell Dominique? Like, let them, yeah. let freaking frack fuck freaking it up. Frack, okay, yeah. Like, it'll, it'll, it, it, and I feel like it would have went better with the storyline, whatever, but it was just like, we had no choice. But it did come out. We got our email before I knew he was on the show because that's what made me be like, okay, well, girl, let me just go talk to Dominique before because I don't want what he's telling him or what he said to, to come him, out on the show to just be like coming out on the show and make it seem like you know whatever when it was never that it was never given it all was that. never given all of that what King what King made it to be like but other than that no like what, and, and what happened saying, uh, what happened between you and Dominique. Really nothing. You know, I think like I said, I feel like I'm I'm not I'm a low maintenance friend. I tell anybody that I'm very low maintenance. Like I don't have to call you every day. Mm-hmm. I don't need to text you twenty four seven. I don't we don't have to go out all the time. Like but if you need me, I'm gonna be there for you. Mm-hmm. Like if you call me tomorrow and say, Bitch, I'm going through da 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 I need your help or can you come rescue me from the burning building at the top of the bridge, I'm coming. Mm-hmm. But it's just like I don't have I'm I feel like as an adult, like when I was in college, I used to do that. I used to want to get out the, get off from work. I mean, get out of school and go sit on the phone with my friends and be like, oh, girl, you know, this is what's going on. Da, 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 da. But I felt like our, we had our own separate friendship, but it always seemed to tie into bringing in something from Chasing Reality. And it's just like, I didn't want that to consist in my life all the time. But I also mm. feel like me and Dominique, too, it was also, like I said, it was, it was me. I feel like it was, us both feeling like one sided. Like Dominique will call me sometimes, and we so we were supposed to do something we didn't do it. Or I call Dominique and say we're gonna do something we never do it. And I feel like it was just a a miscommunication thing. And then when he started hanging out with Seven often, it was just like I kind of felt. And I told Willa the same thing, and Willa can vouch for this. But I told her I was like, you know, I feel like they're only friends or only becoming close because. Me and Dominique aren't really talking, and then on top of that, me and Seven wasn't talking, and me and Willa had already had like a conversation because it was kind of the same thing with everybody. I feel like everybody felt like I wasn't present in the friendship, but really I was just a phone call away. And then when me and Willa ended up having a conversation, Willa knew everything that was going on too, you know, because I was just like I said, I was just getting back on my feet, and then my boyfriend had just moved to Midtown, all this kind of stuff, whatever. So, um, yeah, it was just it was it was just a lot of me not being there and I felt like them wanted me to be there in the time that I felt like I couldn't be and then I was living on the south side of the town so it's like y'all not come all the way to the south side to see me and then y'all know I work in I also felt like I told Willa too at the time Willa used to come sit and eat lunch with me and because Willa lived on Cheshire Bridge at the time she would come eat lunch with me because she knew I didn't have a car and I also when I left from this side of town I was home I wasn't coming back all the way up here like for nothing because I had a moving with my boyfriend at the time so Dominique worked at the Emily Lennox where he groomed his dogs in the um, at his studio and at his shop and it's right across from Lennox. But anytime I would say Dominique come eat lunch with me or you know you know I'm right there in the mall. You can even just walk in and stop by and say something. I feel like it wasn't it, it. He never came. He never came to see me at work. I don't think since I've been working at Balenciaga, Dominique has been there. I think maybe once, if I'm not mistaken. But even still, Dominique worked right across the street. So I'm like, if you want to see me that bad, like come have lunch with me, come see me, whatever case Matthew. And he never did that. And I felt like if it was so important for me to be a friend to you at the time, you could have just came over to work and ate lunch with me. Or you could have came over when I'm on break and we could have just walked around the mall or chitted, chatted or whatever case Matthew. That's literally what Willow would do. Mm-hmm. When I'm on my break, if I wasn't eating food, me and Willow would walk the mall, Go in the store, whatever case may have you, key on break, whatever case may have you, and going about going about our day. And then she may call me when I get home just to see what I'm doing, or girl, you okay, whatever, whatever. But 
that's where the issues came in. So we just wasn't talking. And I think, and then on top of that, when Seven and Dominique became close, I think Seven thought too that I, me and Willa had still not talked, but nobody knew that me and Willa talked. It was like, I was literally like, okay, we just don't see how this play out. Like, is this going to be the new friend or new person that he gets close to? Because I'm not the kind of person, I'm not going to, if me and you, if me and you fall out, like if you somebody that I'm really close to and we fall out, I'm not going to go make friends with the person that, the, the person that, I know, in a sense, has caused me issues as a friend or has brought me certain issues going on as a friend because we all have had issues. And that's why with this season, with season six, I was so it was so quick for me to just be like, me and Seven were like, done. Because I, we all have had issues with her in the past. And just like, as friends, yeah, we can, yeah, we can deal with things and, you know, make things go away and, you know, reconcile. But it's just like, how many times are we going to continue to give the same person the same chances? This is like, it's just like me and you. It's just like, bitch, if we would have fell out season six, girl, wash your hands with me. Because, bitch, why are we still falling out? Oh, yeah. And that's and that's why I have said whoever I fell out with in season six, oh, baby, that was it. Yeah, that was because it. I've already, like, I've already done my due diligence with all y'all to yeah. get, like, to get back in a good place. Yeah. And I made sure I communicated and everybody understood how we was going to move forward in the friendship. Yeah. And when I saw a deviation from that, mm-hmm. it was like, okay, I'm not finna. It's, yeah. it's, it's easy at this point, yeah, you know? Easy. And so I was just like, you know, I'm just gonna wash my hands with certain things, and it's just like, no, no, I'm being dramatic. I'm being dramatic. I'm being dramatic. I was just gonna wash my hands with certain things, and just like, you know, and I felt like, you know, even after the situation, oh, child, we can go. Well, we ain't even gotta go deep into that. But even after the situation, after um, we, me and Seven got into it at the bowling alley that night, and um, (laughs) we got into it at the bowling alley, and I think. What else happened after that? And when the show came back on, and she was like, "Oh, is it giving candy?" And I'm and I'm candy, and he's, um, mean whoever she said, and she was like, "Oh, because um, it's giving you 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 trying to get into it with me for a storyline." It was just like, "Don't act like we have not ever ever had issues outside of being on the show and filming." And only reason I brought it to you at the show because you weren't supposed to be at our event. It was supposed to be a boys' night, and you came, and then you pulled me to the side. So yes, on camera, I'm gonna bring up. What I have the issue with, I'm not going to sugarcoat because this is season six. We're supposed, to, we're supposed to be showing that we can have tough conversations as friends because Will has already said we have an orthodox friendship. We're not regular friends. Like, things are not going to be easy peasy all the time. But we can work and talk through things. But for you to get there, walk out the scene, and then say, oh, at the night when you and Kane fought, at the little thing, Oh, it means we good. We ain't gonna talk about it on camera. We good. We 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 here. Da, da, da. We took the picture that night, posted on our stories. All of us, me, me, Willa, and Seven, and we was fine. We had not talked about it since then. Why but you ain't? Then, what, what was Jay? Was Jay? Jay hadn't got there yet. Mm. We was uh, we was just this one. Was, oh, sorry. Okay. We're just all sitting on the um on that chair in the corner. Mm. Wait, wait, you, yeah, wait, we're sitting in the corner, yes. And so, bitch, let me tell you something. If if the Fat Five ain't never do nothing right, bitch, mm-hmm. that day when when Jatuan was acting like he was gonna try to do something to fight me or something like that, bitch, the Fat Five had surrounded, surrounded. Yes, I said, girl. I said, bitch, I've never seen this before a girl. day in my life. Girl, we had your back, <laughs> especially which is it's it's. It's really disappointing. But you know who had my back the most? Who was like, girl, be all right. Willa and Drew mm-hmm. were the two who was the main ones who was yeah. like, no, bitch, sit right here. We got yeah, you. We got yeah, you. Everything mm-hmm. going to be all right. Yeah. And so, um, what was I at? But yeah, I think that was just the the basis of everything. That's why we ended up having an issue. And I feel like people want me to be this in-your-face friend. I felt like I was trying, like I said before, I was trying to be everything everybody wanted me to be. Versus being myself. And it's just like, if you can't accept me as a friend that I am, like, you may see me with my other friends outside of the case and have you, but that's not the friendship that I want with every friend that I got. Mm-hmm. I, if me, like me and Dominique, I feel like me and Dominique could have made money together. We could have collaborated together on a lot of things. And that's why I feel like my friends in this circle should have been. Because my friends that I'm in my group chat with, those are, those are like friends that I've had for a really long time. But now time I'm seeing... We be outside. That's that's not to not to see when we get together. We either going outside or we in the house drinking and drunk. Like mm-hmm. other than that, like, <laughs> so it's just like drinking and drunk. Drinking and drunk. Like it's just too. It's too drinking and drunk. <laughs> you be drinking, you be drunk. So it's like, you, know, you know, I'm just like you know, I don't, I don't. It, it doesn't have to be that for 
it doesn't have to be that. <laughs> Girl, I don't know. I don't know what y'all talking okay. about. It's like, but it don't have to be that all the time. So I think that I couldn't be there for them how they want, how he wanted yeah. me to. And I think that's what ended up making us have an issue. So when we did talk, we did say we could have reached out, we could have talked with him, his nephew, but we just let it go on, we let it linger. And like I said, being that Seven was his friend, it was just like, okay, well, girl, you don't really need me. And mm-hmm. I was talking to Willa, so it's like me and Willa cool, you and Seven cool, cool. Like it ain't like the group automatically broke up all together because Willa still talking to Meek and Seven. And I wasn't mad about it. That mm-hmm. just goes to show you, like, I'm not a mad friend. Like, I don't have to be mad at y'all and not be mad at and you know not talk to somebody that I that I want to talk to and they talking to y'all too but however I will say after the season air and Seven said what she said in her green screens and all the and we had a conversation about the situation and the friend group knew um, that Seven said that we weren't going to get in our green screens we weren't going to talk nasty we weren't going to do all that we weren't going to shade each other because that night we had not did our green screens for the final round yet so when me and Seven seen each other at the party, she was like, well, we're not going to shade each other in the, in the green screens. We're going to keep it cute, whatever case may be. And I sat there and I went to the Andaria green screens and kept it cute because I was like, Andaria, I really could read down about what happened at the bowling alley and so forth going forward, but I'm not going to do her like that. I was like, because I do respect her. Like, you know, that is my friend, somebody I care about a friend, but then you get in your green screens and say all these things and then say, oh, I'm, I'm trying to use you as a story and I'm trying to do da 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 da. And that's when I had went in on Twitter on her. I don't know if you've seen that today. Mm-hmm. But yes, I went in on Twitter on her and she blocked me on Twitter. And when she blocked me on Twitter, I blocked on everything else and I haven't talked to her since. Y'all still haven't spoke. Mm-hmm. We spoke on the phone like a couple of weeks ago. Well, it was Willa, Neek, and Willa, Neek, and Seven on the phone. Uh, Willa had called me. And when she called me on the phone, um, I was like, well, girl, you know, Seven's still blocked. I was like, so I can't uh, see her on the FaceTime. And so she was like, yo, are you going to thought block her because I want all of us to talk on the phone. So we talked, but I never even said nothing to her. We, I just talked to Willa and Dominique, and then we ended up hanging up. And we hung up. I just re her. Bitch! And it's no shame. You re her. It's no shame. That is funny. Like, it's funny. But it's no shame. Like, I just... After that, I, I kind of feel like my friends chose her over me in a sense. Mm. And it was just like, but I've, I've always been a friend that's been there for y'all and whatever case may have you. But maybe because she's a friend that doesn't mind sitting on the phone all the time and being on FaceTime and gossip and talk about whatever else in the world that she talks about. She never, I don't feel like we ever, I don't feel like we ever did that. And I feel like I feel like I feel like when I got on the phone with Willa, me and Willa would have our deep conversations, whatever case may have you, but me and Willa would talk every other day or maybe and it started going to like maybe once a week or twice a week. But it wasn't every day. And that's how I said Willa would call me and I would either answer the phone or tell Willa, I'm gonna call you back and I would call Willa back. But I don't feel like with me and Nikki had ended up becoming to like a Are you and Nikki? Like cool? a Nikki a missed thing. Me and Dominique are cool, but we haven't like hung out like for real. I feel like we we tried to get together, but it's like it never. It's not the same. It never fell into where we just hung out, or or we we've been able to hang out. So, um, but he still grew my dog. Mm-hmm. He grew my puppy. Dang. Yeah. Do you think um, freaking frack will get back? I mean, I don't have an issue with getting back. I just don't want it to be. I don't want there to be an expectation on me as a friend of what. I have to give because at the end of the day, I'm giving what I got. I have a man at home. Like, and, and when Dominique had a man, when Dominique, Dominique literally used to be like, oh, girl, I got a man at home. I got to be home by a certain time. I want that same respect. Like, I know everybody's not in a relationship, whatever case may have you, but I got a man at home. I got a puppy at home. Like, I'm building my little family, like, right now. But I'm also, like, just, I was in a space, too, still, where I'm just out here hustling. Like, I'm, it's not me and I be in the streets, but I'm vlogging. I'm doing all these things I said I was going to do. You know, I'm doing my box. So it's just like, I can't give you all of this of me all the time when it's just like things I'm still trying to do for myself. And so, yeah. But I, it, it's, it's, it's never no issue with me. Like, I don't, I, I never will hate me because Nick is somebody I feel like came into my life and helped me find a confidence that I didn't know I had in myself. And then also meeting Willa too, I feel like Willa helped me realize more about myself as a person and 
outside of I know y'all situation, but I feel like Willa. To what me, situation? I ain't gonna say y'all situation. I don't know if y'all have talked about no y'all. Yeah, in a situation. So <laughs> I, feel like, I, feel like, I feel like me and no Willa situation. have been. Willa was just one of those persons like out, out, like outside the show. She's always been even during the show because Willa has has had my back on, on the show and off the show. But I feel like off the show Willa is really like a like a sweet person. But I feel I would like, agree. Yeah, I feel like she's a really sweet person, and I feel like she was one of those people that really helped me realize a lot about myself too, and she really helped me change in a lot of ways. And I feel like I helped her change in a lot of ways too. And so I think that when it comes to Willa, I'm always have love for Willa. Willa gonna always be like somebody that I care about because she's always showed me that she cared about me. And I don't feel like she ever did to that. Outside of when we was on the show and she said, you know, that I was doing pump faking on the show, whatever case may have you. And I never really spoke about this. Like, I'm open. I never really had a conversation about her with it. Cause, um, pump faking when? When she was out on the green screen, she was like, I was pump faking with Jay Twan outside of the house and the thing. And it was just like, I was like, well, Willie, you know me. Like, it's, ne- it's, it's never been nothing about pump faking. But like I said on Twitter, and I had posted my story, I was like, you know, you don't hit a child, you just put a child in their place. <laughs> <laughs> that's Troy, you were showing out tonight, bitch. I love I this. Like, I guess like, that's what I want to film with. I'm just like, I like this spicy kind of shit. I'm just like, like you just you just put a child in their place, and it's uh-huh. just like that's why when I told when we was outside talking, to him, I was like, bitch, I'm not the one. I put my finger in his face. I want to let you know, like you can do all of that, but I'm not the one. Like you, girl, can, your finger was in his face. Yes, it was it, like a dick. right there. Like it was right there in his face, and it was I'm just sorry. like, no, you are fine. It's like if you want, and that's my thing. If he really wants to fight, cause ain't no bitch gonna, gonna come out here and chastise me like a child, put their finger in my face, and bitch tell me what I need to go do or what mm-hmm. I'm not gonna do. Cause guess what? Soon as my finger would have been in their face, knocked it out, and then that would have started the brawl. He didn't do all of that. So when everybody's coming outside and trying to pull everybody back, and he getting crunk, that's why I wasn't indulging and going forward to him and fighting him. And that's why Dominique didn't do this, do it either because it was just like, what we what we doing all that for? Like, if you really want to fight, you taking off your shoes, you doing all this super holler because you took off your shoes for Oliver already. You ain't hit Oliver. You took off your shoes outside for me and Nick. You didn't hit neither one of us. You didn't get crunk until everybody coming out. And then when Oliver and Kane fighting, you want to break up. You forget about everything that me and you got going on and you want to break out. Well, when you whatever happened with you, <laughs> I don't know what happened. I don't consider it a fight. That wasn't a fight. That's awesome. The it was, ro- just, it was the, just a little tough. Still a roll around. Yeah. Um. Okay. So here, here's the thing with me and Willa, right? Mm-hmm. Um. We had the falling out season five. We probably be done in the next fifteen. No, you fine. We had the falling out season five, right? Where all that shit happened. We didn't speak. I saw her off camera, off season at the photo shoot. I went up to her and spoke to her, mm-hmm. and we began to speak mm-hmm. immediately. And I'm and I'm telling you, I ain't adding nothing. Mm-hmm. I want. I'm really trying to tell this the way it happened. She immediately apologized to me mm-hmm. and said, "Oliver, I apologize for how I came at you at the reunion." And she went into talking about things that she was going through, which mm-hmm. I'm not gonna get into the details about. She already talked about on the show, you know, housing, mm-hmm. her her, her trying, you know, trying to get a job, trying to find some place to stay, dealing with the past of her grandma, mm-hmm. other stuff she was going in her life. And she was just basically saying that was the place that she was operating there. And I, you know, I totally understood it. I apologize. I can't remember what I apologized for, but I apologize, mm-hmm. you know. And I just said, I said, Willa, like I tell all, I, I, I've told every chasing girl the same thing. Every time we make up, if there's any, if there comes a point in time where you feel like I done done something, mm-hmm. you come tell me. Mm-hmm. Make me aware of it so I, I at least know what's going on. Mm-hmm. I said, don't call nobody because I said, if something happened and I feel the way about you, I'm coming straight to you. I'm not going to pick up the phone and call Daria. I'm not going to pick up the phone and call the next hoe and ask and, and do all that because that's never been my style. Right. Yeah. Has yeah. it? Yeah. That's never been my style. I will say you you will call. You have called and said, bitch, girl, what's going on? We got an issue. In mm-hmm. my and I'm never gonna call another bitch about another bitch. Be like, girl, what's her tea about me? No, girl, I'm gonna call. Why would I do all that? Just call the bitch. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And so me and her shook hands. Mm-hmm. We gonna move forward. If any, because we because we also understood. You know, this is like you just said. Mm-hmm. It's an unorthodox friendship. We mm-hmm. basically becoming friends in front of the world. Yeah. So we taking baby steps. If you know, we still get to know each other. So just come check in. Let's let's make sure we check in with each other. Yeah. Now, me and Willa ain't hanging out and talking on the phone, but we we talking a whole lot more. Mm-hmm. We conversing on social media a whole lot more. We texting. She doing my hair. She coming mm-hmm. over here braiding my hair. We can. We having a good time. Da-da-da-da-da. 
the scene at my sister's room where we film the dating thing mm-hmm. happens, right? Mm-hmm. And I get up there and I say what I say mm-hmm. to, did you say no because of me, right? Mm-hmm. And in that moment, while I understood and would have understood if she would have came to me that day or around that same time mm-hmm. and said, hey, Oliver, what you said offended me and this is what happened, I would immediately apologize and I would mm-hmm. explain to her, oh, baby, I didn't, I didn't mean it that way because mm-hmm. nothing had happened for me and Willa to even, for mm-hmm. me to be shady towards her. Mm-hmm. I was really asking to fuck with the other nigga, which they didn't really play into a lot. But remember, I knew mm-hmm. that boy. I had I mean, already you know, known yeah, him. Yeah, you tell me that. Right, and so I was fucking with him, mm-hmm. asking the guy, did he say no? Not thinking my question is offending the person he just said no to. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to fuck with a nigga that I know wants me to say yes to him. Mm-hmm. Asking this little boy. And not... In the, in the grand scheme of things, what would that little skinny little was going to do for me? Right. On top of, I didn't think about this until after the show. I was dating a man around this time. Mm-hmm. I ain't tell none of y'all. I ain't tell nobody. Mm-hmm. The only person on the cast that knew I was dating this man and I had fallen in love with somebody and was talking to them all the time mm-hmm. was Willa mm-hmm. because she would be over here doing my hair mm-hmm. and I would be on FaceTime with him, mm-hmm. right? So... I mentioned that to bring up to the mm-hmm. King Kane fight. Don't let me forget that. So, fast forward. Now we, now the show is out. I'm watching the show. I'm watching that scene. It cuts to her green screen mm-hmm. basically saying she had an issue with what I said and, like, tearing me down. And mm-hmm. so I'm like, this whole time you was upset about that? Mm-hmm. Now, I did a breakdown of one of my other reviews. I ain't going to do it. I ain't going to do it today. But we had filmed... But in that in that breakdown, I went through my emails to put the calendar together. Mm-hmm. We filmed that scene at MSR in July. Mm-hmm. The day before my birthday. The day before your birthday. She came and did my hair multiple times. We filmed the scene at the studio, at the hair salon, where she was like, I just mm-hmm. love you and all this mm-hmm. all this other stuff. She done did my hair for um my green screen. She done did my hair just being around here. I done gone to her to get a braid down. Mm-hmm. On the phone, checking in on or whatever, whatever. Never communicated to me that what I said to her at MSR was a problem. Never. Not mm-hmm. one time. Even when the fight happened at King Kane Place, she was checking on me. Calling mm-hmm. me the next day, checking on me. And she was very supportive and very mm-hmm. understanding as she communicated to me. Being a trans woman mm-hmm. and experiencing things at the hand of men, she was mm-hmm. very understanding about it, right? I'm watching the show. I'm finding out. She had an issue with me at MSR, which mm. to me, now this is the way I view it. Mm. MSR happened in July. That scene where we where we was at King Kane Place ain't happened until when that scene happened. August. August. Mm-hmm. August. We filmed the scene at the salon where we was talking about you, her, and I being friends under that. Mm. We've spoken on the phone. I've called you scheduling. We've done. We've key all this stuff. The issue that you communicated months later in your green screen that you had with me in July was never communicated to me at any point on or off camera. It was never communicated Mm -hmm. to me until I saw it on the show, which to me was an immediate violation of the agreement we had made when we made up before the season six camera started rolling, Mm -hmm. right? Oh, even when I came to the housewarming, thank you. Even when I came to Seven's housewarming, oh, me and her was in the kitchen, and she was like, "I just love this Z you in, ain't nothing." Mm-hmm. You oh, know, I think bro, she was mm-hmm. she and she said some other stuff too. I can't remember, but she was very like, "I just like how you handling yourself, what you doing." Mm-hmm. No issue about me and her ever mm-hmm. came up. When I found out she had an issue with me about the MSR stuff, I called her immediately. Everybody who was on her Instagram live can vouch for this. I was down in the comments, basically begging her to call me. Like, how you are viewing it is not what it was. Like, she, like, I was trying to come for her or I've had problems. But listen, I ain't never had no problems with nobody on Chasing Reality. Because mm. whoever come and go, all of the Twix is going to be mm. real. And that's all of the going to be in any space, whether it's Chasing Reality or The Corner. I'm mm. still going to be me, this great bitch with the great, and whatever ha- comes with that going to come with it. I'm right. never intimidated by no other person. Right. Never. That mm. ain't never been in my blood. You know? Yeah. You bad, bitch. I'm bad, too. We yeah. bad together. Um, but I was basically like begging her to talk to her. She would not talk to me. Mm. I caught tried calling her. She wouldn't answer the phone. She wouldn't do none of that. Okay, cool. Fuck it. Fast forward to the the scene where the green screen comes up about the King Kane situation. And it cuts to her saying that I felt the way about him saying he claimed Tonka when it didn't hit me until months, like a while after. 
Will, why would you say I would feel a way about him claiming Tonka when you have been around me multiple times seeing me skin and grin and key and talk with this grown ass, successful, black ass, old ass man that mm. I'm in love with and you telling me, Oliver, that man love you, girl. Why would I have a problem with Tonka and Key Kane and what they got going on when you know firsthand I I got a whole better situation? Mm. I don't know about that girl. Yeah. So that's why, honestly, like, I honestly have forgiven her, but it's nothing really for me to, because mm -hmm. to me, it's just like, it's just like a, it's like a, yeah. you know, yeah. just let it be, you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, and that's what you ask. That's what a lot of people ask. Yeah. Like, you gotta let things be. And even like with Seven, I've never even touched on Seven. Mm -hmm. My issue with Seven is me and her have never had no one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. issues. But every time one of her friends have an issue with me, she has so much to say. Like, even in that scene when y'all was trying to, I don't know why it had become a thing about what I had said at Tonka's thing about this being just a real positive thing and people was dissecting that. Like I was trying to say this person who wasn't here ain't pop. Baby, I don't mm -hmm. know about all that. I just was trying to recognize what good we were doing in that moment mm -hmm. at Tonka's thing. And I was like, this is like really a great thing. Like I really enjoyed mm -hmm. this. This was freaking amazing. That was before Jatuan tried to come talk to me and I walked out and mm -hmm. got in my car and came home. I'm watching the scene and Seven is over there trying to talk to Dominique. I'm like, bitch. Yeah. As many times you've been on my phone begging to hang out and be and cool the, and, and the, olive and oil and all this other stuff. Why did you even participate in, in a situation about what another bitch got to say with me? All the thing you need to worry about is how you, how I treat you mm -hmm. and how I make you feel. And me and you ain't never had no issues. Mm -hmm. And so once I was, and then I, I heard some stuff and saw some stuff she was saying on like live after shows. And I'm just like, mm -hmm. why are you not just being quiet? Like this has nothing yeah. to me and whatever's going on. With this person, just because mm -hmm. that's your friend, that has nothing to do with you. Yeah. So that's why I'm just like, Ugh, yeah. let me back on up. Yeah. I'm just going to back on up. I don't got time. No, I agree. I agree. And that's why, like, yeah, me, me and her. And you know what? In, even, in even with that being said, a couple of months ago, my social media agency, The Gaberhood, who I've been signed to, thanks to Chasing Atlanta, season four, they signed me from that season, where I be getting a lot of my brand deals and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. They had a drag brunch here in Atlanta, and they said, Oliver, do you know any drag queens in Atlanta who this would be a great opportunity with? T.S. Madison was on the bill. Lala Reed was the headlining drag queen. I tried my best to think of Somebody six here. other drag queens other than to say Seven's name. But the God in me said, don't do that. Mm -hmm. I gave them Seven's name and Seven got the job. And she texted me. She said, thank you. I got the job. Will you come? I did not come. Mm -hmm. But despite me doing yeah. this, I still. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you, 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 you can't let your, you can't let who you are and your morals and your integrity be based off of someone else's. You got to do. You yes, gotta, you, you gotta can't. Do, you got to do what's in your heart. And even though the Florida punk in me wanted to say, fuck that, <laughs> yeah. the man who afraid of God said, don't do that. Yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. Um, We're not stopping bad. No. Season six was a mess. Um, mm -hmm. Even though even though it was a mess, I still feel like I really still kind of came out great. I still feel like I still I came out amazing. I feel like I ended up on the, on the good note. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't really have no... No, whatever. I probably showed people she can fight. She <laughs> you showed the girls you you would get out there in the field, and it was and it was just it was just that. And I think I think that after season six, and I had talked to um, I had talked to Tonka at one point when I was at work, and I had also talked to um, uh, one of my close friends. Well, my best friend. I was telling him I was like, you know. I feel like now that is a chapter of my life that I can like just mm -hmm. close the door on, mm -hmm. and it's just like it felt like a relief. Like I, I looked forward to getting that email every year. Like, girl, mm -hmm. you're coming back. Let's go ahead and start filming. And you, you, you're in that mindset of like, oh, girl, I gotta get my shit together. You calling me mm -hmm. around? Mm -hmm. Like, girl, what we gonna do? Like, how we gonna, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. But it's just like now that that part of me is done, it feel like now I can actually enter like a more calmer life mm -hmm. and actually. Build my life outside of chasing reality. Like mm -hmm. I feel like chasing reality was the pivotal moment in my life. So far, so far, yes. I feel like that's what it was, and I felt like without chasing reality, girl, you mean what? What, what you what you gonna have? Mm -hmm. How people gonna know you outside of chasing reality? But yeah. it's just like so far, so far, right? But you gotta like you gotta take 
what Chase and Reality gave you, the people mm -hmm. that are supporting you, the 300 people that are on your live right here, right now, because they don't even have to be here. Because mm -hmm. if they seen me on here, they could have been like, oh, child, that's true. We ain't going to watch. We'll go watch when somebody else come on. But the fact that it, we have these people out here that still genuinely love us and show us love, and no matter how long we are off of Chase and Reality, people still can go back and click mm -hmm. play. There's going to be a new person that's going to know you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. every day, every month, mm -hmm. every year, whatever. So it's just like, take those opportunities and, and build from them. And I think that's where I'm at. That's what I want to do. Just continue to use what I have to get to where I'm going to be. Have you just fall made up? Never leave. <laughs> <laughs> I saw him. Um, no, I... I, I I, I saw him like a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. um, out there in Piedmont. I turned around. Mm -hmm. uh, I was with I was with Darius. Yeah. I was with Darius, and we was walking. I just heard somebody say, "Such a small world," and I turned around, and it was her. And I said, "Oh, hey!" And I turned to look at Darius. I said, "Darius, look who it is." <laughs> and Darius turned around. He looked. He turned back, and then we walked into the parking deck, and Mama went on about her business. Child, you should have beat her. <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm just playing. But no, I haven't talked. I haven't talked to him. Um, you know. I'm you know what was. You, you know what honestly stopped it for Jatuan. Mm -hmm. It's a couple things that stopped it as it relates to me and Jatuan. One, when the people try to pump this idea that I don't help anybody else, that I don't help people out. Mm -hmm. Well, the fact of the matter is, and Dario wasn't taking any of their phone calls until mm -hmm. they got involved with in, in the, the mix, mix with Twix. Mm -hmm. This is a confirmed thing by Dario. It's yes. not me just making this up. Yeah. So I, you I being back on season too. six, what you what you really wanted? Because we were, and that's the thing too. Like it's 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 been tried to be communicated. Like me and him still had an issue, but we were still cool enough for us mm -hmm. to talk. Right. And you communicate with me that you wanted to be back on the show, right. and I made the offer to you to be on my show. Right. For you to be back on season six. Right. Like, make it make sense, right. which it don't, right. right? Um, And then, amongst amongst the many amongst many things, but the dad did his green screens. I said to Twan, listen, I don't want to fight with you or really nobody. Like, mm -hmm. I really want to I really want to make money. I was mm -hmm. talking about, like, how I've just been exposed to so much in the industry and, mm -hmm. like, you know, how people, people like us who got way less followers than us are out here living the life and stuff like that. And I was like, I really want yes, us to make they, money. They, yes. You know, like, you know, like, I don't want to, I don't want to, like, it's now, this is the last season. This is the mm -hmm. last time all of us going to be together like this in front of the people. If anybody, you, me, Kendra, you, me, I'm talking about him, Berlin, myself, and, well, they, I'm sorry. They, Berlin, myself, mm -hmm. and Kendra, we need to get together and try to make some money off of this, yeah. you know? Yeah. Like, we need to make tangible coin right. as I have right. my entire time on Chasing. I was like, I don't want to fight with you. If you if you got a problem with me, come talk to me. Like right. come hit me up, let yeah, me know because yeah, let's work it out. Cause I that's not the energy. I don't I don't honestly have it in me to fight. Cause right. all of 2023, bitch, I have been working on television and like working on projects, which I'm tired. Mm. All of a tired. I'm ready to go to sleep. Yeah. Um, what really sealed the deal was when he tried to perpetuate this idea that I was basically lying on King Kang about him touching me. Mm -hmm. When I know Andario ain't do it on purpose. Right. I know it was really a mistake. If you if you go to the episode of season six when the fight happened, mm -hmm. hold on. Who did I email it to? Don't say don't say nothing when you see this, okay? Girl, I ain't. Don't don't say nothing when you see the thingy. Hold on, let me go say. Where is it? Hmm. Don't say nothing. Oh, but she spent the time. Mama's trying to think this is. Okay. No, no, you don't got to play no audio. I really don't. Hold on. When people say that she was lying. Hold on. There it go. What's that right there? This is him. Doing what? Touching your butt. Mind you, you wasn't in no vicinity to confirm or deny 
him touching me. Mm -hmm. Kendra standing right there saying, baby, I heard it all. Oliver said, stop multiple times. Yeah. Rico Cassidy standing right there said, I saw it go down. It's on the it's on the episode. I, and I know and Dario didn't do it on purpose. Somebody who was watching the show sitting to me was like, no, bitch, it's in there. I was like, bitch, it's in there. No, bitch, it's in there. Yeah. But you standing on your platform saying, vehemently, all of a liar, he lied on this man, he trying to set them up. Baby, I can't. You yeah. know? Yeah. I can't. Yeah. Because you, you saying this and don't got none of the tangible facts. Same you just saying this because you don't like me. Yeah. God bless. Yeah. But no, I was done with her after the night. When, when we got into it that night, I think I left her there. Mm. And I never looked back. And then I, I think something happened. And they so it was, talented. It was a live. And I went to, I was on a live. They're so talented. And yeah, they are talented. So and talented. And I went to his page and I was blocked. But um, I'm not, Berlin didn't block me. But yeah, he blocked me. Which is fine. It's not hurting or helping my life. Well, we done with season six. You on the group chat? I'm on the group chat. Yes. I am... You know the you know the girls dream of this on Chasing Reality have a producer credit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a co-producer. Yeah. On the group chat. <laughs> or Chasing Reality. <laughs> 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 on up, Troy. Girls up. On yes. Chasing Reality every Thursday at seven o'clock p.m. We do have a new time because Chasing Dallas is on. But yes, me, Darius, Travis, and George are Doing on the team. Every week, we had our first big celebrity interview, which was Candace from Real Housewives of Potomac. I we thought it was when I interviewed last season. I'm, I'm lying. I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. Yeah, girl. I'm playing. Yeah. Girl, I'm really playing. Girl. I'm not bigger than Candace. But girl, we had to pull Miss No, I know. I know. I'm but, really joking. I'm but really yes, joking. no, we had Candace on, and it was really like... It was it's it was really good. Not as mad as but girl drinking. I ain't. I just pulled in there. But I'm just proud that I'm able to be a part of the brand still. Yeah. I'm able to do something that I really like. Yeah. And I'm glad Andario actually brought it back and he found people that actually are invested in it. And I can't wait to see where we go. You know, we are on Sheen Magazine's app as well. So if you can, if you don't, if you don't stream on Chasing Reality, you can go stream on Sheen. And yes, but we are making it do what it do. There's a lot of things in store for the group chat. So stay tuned. Uh, I'm very proud of you. I want to mention one thing, and I want to be done with it. One of my favorite quotes from you from Chasing Atlanta was never captured on on camera. Mm -hmm. Y'all remember when I had that sold-out show uh, during season five and everybody was performing? When I came there, I had on this Karl Lagerfeld um, jumpsuit, right, yeah. with these, with these Balenciagas yeah. on. And I had just got that new, um, I had just got that watch too, yeah, bitch. That yeah. bitch, and it was, it was shining. Yeah. Bitch, I never forget, I was, I don't know what I was standing there doing, but Troy was, ha Troy was standing next to me, and he, and he, I felt him look me up and down. He yeah. said, bitch, she said, bitch, Miss Oliver's car, but let's see y'all go down, <laughs> boots, bitch. When I say that shit, it was just the way he said it. That yeah, shit was horrible if you had a um, boot. Yes, that yeah. shit was that yeah. shit was so funny. All oh, that shit was so funny. No, because I said, oh, I said, oh, Miss Girl would have stepped into her corn. Miss <laughs> Girl had on her bodysuit. Girl, but one thing about it, if a girl got on some Carl and some Valenci, yeah, she's in her bag. Yeah, she's in her bag. And I love that for you. I was good. It was good to see you just in that space because you know we normally just see you be in your your regular get up girl and you be on the go bitch you had you had it on that night i said yes ma'am well when i perform Shake. when when i perform i try yes, to give yes. a whole lot more but i'm just an everyday just like this is me and you know what i'm learning too and it was so it was so funny and i was telling my because y'all don't ever think that i'm paying full price for this shit because i am not but um i was telling my friend my friend the other day was like uh you know yeah um People with money are loud, but wealth is silent. And I was like, and when and they sat there and they thought about it, and when I thought about it, when it hit me, I was like, damn. Y'all know who I, I, Jeff Bezos was in Nina Marcus in Atlanta last year around Christmas, mm -hmm. or like a week before Christmas. I wouldn't have been able to pick him off a branch because all the branches look alike. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't even know he was different. But bitch, if you know, if one of us come in there, we got on all our bling, bling, diamonds down to the neck, you know, whatever case. Now, we like, oh, they got some money and be the brokest one in the room. But Jeff Bezos looked like a regular Caucasian male walking through Neiman Marcus that just had money. And when I looked at him again, I was like, 
with no bodyguard, no nothing, just walking through the couch. I'm like, bitch, is that your face sauce? And my other couple was like, yes, that is him. And he had ended up buying something. And one of the couple was like, y'all know that's Amazon CEO. And I was like, yeah. So it's just like, you just gotta. So this is, this is wealth. <laughs> this is, this is Child, I don't know what that mean. I've just I've never been well my mom my mom always had a really great job mm. and even when like the period of my time in high school when she didn't I had started talking to men by that point mm. so you know you men was giving me money did. yeah I've never I've never I've never been broke. Like, yes. I, I mean, and even when I've been broke, I'm not really broke. I'm just right. not at a place to do what I want to do. do. Right. But I've always just had an innate, like my mom always had a good job. And then once I, once I became able-bodied to do for my own, which I started making money at like age 14, 15, mm. doing my own thing. And I, I love doing it. Right. I just always, I'm, my, the point is, I've never, I've never lacked. Like, I never yeah. feel like I need yeah. to do something. So now that I'm adult and I do have more of my own to do, I'm not gonna go out and buy. I'm not gonna go out and buy no. Yeah. You know, no. I'm not. I'm not gonna spend my money on no bag or shoes and yeah. shit like that. Like, bitch, I got a whole fucking career yeah. that I, I need to keep alive. Yeah. Bitch, why would I go buy a bag when I could go buy a camera yeah. or a light or I can save my money to where? Well, that's the best thing you girl. You got it now. Yeah, Coach Stormy, Coach Stormy told me I need to buy a Birkin because I could put I could put insurance yeah, on it. Best you a Birkin because bitch, if you buy a Birkin this year, the thing about a Birkin is it's two things in luxury that you can buy that can make you a lot of money going down the line. It's a Van Cleef jewelry and a Birkin bag. Well, thank you for telling me that. That that's something that I've learned in luxury, but because you can get a Van Cleef jewelry and later down the line in years, you can have spent four thousand dollars for it. It may be a one that they may not never make again. You can sell it. To somebody rich as hell, twenty five, thirty thousand just for a bracelet mm-hmm. that they're never gonna be able to get, especially if it's good. You can get a Birkin this year for twenty thousand dollars or twenty five thousand, or if you want to get a rare one and it's thirty five, forty, whatever you mm-hmm. want to pay for, and you can pay on that, you know, yeah. whatever. Five years from now, it may be worth five hundred thousand dollars. Okay, can, you can drop that. In Y'all hear this? Get you a bag. Y'all hear this? Yeah. I love that. So, yeah. Um, that's an investment. If it's two things you can invest in in luxury, definitely invest in those. And y'all heard me say in season six, I have done the best. I haven't done the absolute best with my money, but I was also mm. talking to Funky Dineva today, and he mm. was just telling me he was like, you know, don't feel bad about it because we all do it. Like yeah. we all, we all, once we get to a place where we make it more, you mm-hmm. want to do things. Now, while I won't go buy Birkin, I am a person where like, you know, you know, if I go to the, if I'm if let's just say I'm at let's just say I'm at Disney World mm-hmm. and we get regular admission passes, I, I don't want a regular admission pass. Get yeah. me the get me get me the one that's gonna get, get us the fast pass. Get them, who with me? Get them get them some too. And yeah. go ahead and go ahead and give us a little food voucher too. Just yeah. go ahead and give it to us. Yeah. yeah, give me give me that give me yeah. that. Oh me. yeah, like or 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 this sir or this service gonna get us a quick give me yeah. that yeah. give me that. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's just oh, it's just a hundred dollars just to upgrade my seat. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, go ahead and do, go it. Ahead and do it. Yeah. Or yeah. I'm sitting, I went from oh, I'm gonna go eat here. Well, what's this? Well, give me three yeah, of give them. Me, give I just want to taste them. Yes. You know, mm-hmm. now that, that I have that done that, do. yes. I have done that, and yeah. I've given a lot of I won't say given a lot of my money away, but I've looked yeah. out for my people. people. Yeah, yeah I've looked out true. for my people. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've learned, I've, I've made my mistakes. I'm yeah. doing a whole lot better when it comes to my money. But yeah, think about that. Definitely, definitely think on that. And if you. A van keep is four thousand dollars. You can spend four thousand dollars on a bracelet. No, not today. Not today. Oh, not today. But soon. Yeah, soon. Yeah. 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 I gotta come shop with you anyways. Yeah, come shop with me, get you a Yes, I gotta get, get me a little, you, a, 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 a little piece. Mm-hmm. No, I do. Now I do have no, I do reward myself, you know, you know. That's I do reward sure. myself here and there. I get me a little bag or you know, a little something mm-hmm. here here and mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. Here That's and sure. there. Because I don't want bitches thinking I got money. Because bitch, I don't. Yeah. You know, bitch, I still gotta get up. Mood. That'd be me. Bitch, bitch I don't, don't got, got no money. I just want all of it got zero 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 zero. Until until I got until un, until I can That's how you know he got money, cause that's what people with money say. <laughs> My account says zero 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 and he probably sitting on that plus mm-hmm, zero. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He's I, I know, girl. He got some coins. I mean, let me tell you one thing about a Florida girl. One thing, we, even if we down, but you're going to find a way. One thing, bitch. one thing them churches teach you is okay, to find bitch. a way. It was high school, middle school, all. Bitch, bitch think about it. You got a dollar out of somebody back in the day. Bitch, think about it. Troy, Oliver, 
Dr. Heavenly, Funky Dineva, T.S. Madison, Marlo, Saucy Santana, Coach Stormy, all from the same state. They all ghetto as hell. Ghetto as fuck. Ghetto as hell. But you ain't never heard. You you ain't never heard about no lights going. No lights going off. Okay, because the lights ain't on, baby. The That's lights a... ain't never going out in Georgia. I mean, been in a bad place, but girl, the lights and the rent was paid. You know what I'm saying? We gonna figure it out, bitch. And we oh, gotta okay. sell some boiled peanuts, sell some cakes. Shout out to Heaven. Okay. Like my sister. Oh, do like how Lauren used to do, sell a little spaghetti dinners out that little hair salon with a little bread and a little check soda, a little peach oh, check Lauren soda. Used to sell like her, bitch, her, Lauren would sell. Her. Lauren would get the. <laughs> I was saying. Lauren should have been from Opalaka because okay. of the way she be moving, bitch. She be moving. Okay, girl. JT, my day. <laughs> <laughs> bitch, Look. cause that Lauren gonna make some money, bitch. One way or uh, another. Gardens, bitch. Yes, Real yeah. Hollywood tees. <laughs> Troy, I love you. I love you too. I you love are you. my friend. Uh, you are my no, friend. No, you like you are really my friend. Like, you know, I, I get hugged. You are my friend. You are my friend. You are my friend. I and I love you. you. And I'm so proud of you. Thank you. I'm so happy and grateful for how we've been able to stay connected throughout this yeah. turbulent journey we call Four Seasons of Chasing Atlanta. Atlanta yes. Um, it's been ins and outs, ups and downs, but mm. I'm so happy we've still yeah. landed in the place that we are in. Mm. I'm really proud of you. Thank like you. I'm really, really proud and happy for all of this Thank that you. we are witnessing right now. Isn't it freaking amazing? And I'm just so excited to see now that you have this happiness mm. and you have a lot of the things that you have wanted, you have things yeah. that you are proud of, you've achieved, you've worked yeah. hard for. I'm so excited to see how you parlay that energy and that you know and that so momentum into more things yeah. and hopefully yeah. god gives me life where i can see it you yeah. know because i'm i just you know you know i love you i love, you I love troy i love you too i can never be mad at her right for too long for too long for too long now we she done got on my nerves we gonna find a way around it though yeah we gonna find always. a way always no, i really appreciate it and giving you your flowers as always like i'm always proud of you i'm always watching like just seeing what you're doing next and it's always a motivation because like I said, I'm being me, but it's good to see you be you because you being you is what got you where you are. And I feel like now that I'm comfortable with being me, I know that everything else will fall behind it. So just keep doing what you're doing I'm trying, and bitch. keep inspiring people because it's things like this that you're doing like on a platform. You are giving people still that place to come in and be vulnerable, but still talk about everything that we've done in the past yeah. but where we are where we're at now so um yes yeah yeah i love you i love you too listen y'all we finna get out of here we gave y'all four hours on the freaking dot it's literally been four hours four hours tell the people where they can find you listen you guys you can find me on instagram at tag did it as well as twitter um, I don't really like people following me on Facebook, but you can follow me on Facebook as well at Troy Gaskins Jr. Do not follow my daddy. Follow me. <laughs> <laughs> follow me. Um, and also, you can follow my YouTube channel at The Boom Network um, on Instagram. I mean, I'm sorry, Instagram. On YouTube. And make sure you're watching my vlog tomorrow on my wedding so you get to see me and my friends, how we coexist and how we hang out with each other. And yes. Oh, and, and on TikTok at Tag Native as well. Make sure y'all follow him, and I will be linking those things down below in this video. We've been up for four hours, so let me go to sleep. But when I get up in the morning, oh, I will it's update. It's one thirty. I may do it as I'm falling asleep tonight. But I just try. I really do love you. I really do. You know, love I you love, you. love you. I love um, you. Now. And you know what, too? So I don't know if you know this. Some of the some of your conversations you've had with people mm -hmm. about me have mm -hmm. come back to me. Mm -hmm. Um, and everybody was was it was two in particular. Um, one that you know, I don't feel like the other one you would know they would say it. Um, but they were like. Troy really, really respects you, yeah. you know? And I mean, and it's something that I always knew. I know we always had a love for each other, but mm -hmm. it felt good to, in your private conversation, a conversation I would have never known about, yeah. that the how I, what the energy we have, the energy we have in front of each other, that yeah. you're also keeping it. Yeah, and, I, I, I always. Like, yeah. I, I, I know we have been through whatever, but it's one thing I, I have always done that has had respect for you because I know the grind, I see the grind, and if it's one thing you can't take from you, bitch, that's what you do, so... You always have my respect and my love. Yes, and you and you will always have my love and my respect because I just I just remember season three, the guy that was on the couch, yeah. and we just was talking about the things we wanted yeah. and stuff like that. And I just I know who you are yeah. at your core, and you're a very loving person who Thank wants you. to be loved. And so we'll always be we'll always be bitch. Yeah, we'll always be. Yes. And on that moment, and that, you know what? And at and at the end of the day, when it was all said and motherfucking done, bitch. all y'all hoes came and gone. You know what I'm saying, Dominique? 
Who the other? Who the other people you claim? Willa. <laughs> who else? I ain't got time for this bitch. <laughs> they all then came and gone. <laughs> and when the show was done. Yet I remain. Let me stop. I'm really playing. I'm really playing. Y'all, please don't take me serious. We, we, we've been doing this for four hours. I'm really delirious. I'm really joking. Y'all know I can't be serious all the fucking time. But no, I love him and I love y'all. Dominique, you know I'm playing. Willa, you know I'm playing too. But um, in the words of Nicki Minaj, get up on your good foot. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note. Right, y'all. I love you guys so much. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to continue to like, comment, and subscribe. Jump down in the comment section and let me know what you think about this. And make sure you hit the notification bell so you know when I'm posting excerpts of this marvelous exclusive given by none other than Troy Gaskins himself. Tag yeah. did it. Touch by tag. The big dog. And most importantly, boom, boom bitch. Yeah. We up out of here. Yeah, I love y'all. Bye, y'all. Thank y'all. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, 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 u